Alex Miller. Live. Hello, folks. I'm receiving an espresso. We are live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Early morning here. The Waterside Club in Phoenix, New York. This is the New York State Bocce Club Championship. You are watching the BBN. I'm going to go play. I'm going to pass this off to Alex Guerra and Dave Hoffman. See you later. Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Alex Guerra from American Bocce Company, stepping in the BBN head chair. I'm going to be working the broadcast for Michael Sheldon this morning. We are about to get underway of day two of the New York State Bocce Championship. This is a, a marquee matchup. This is Tokolana Club versus Troy ICC. Troy ICC. Some of you might recognize it as uh, parts of Echo Bocce. Uh, and then Tokolana Club is the big club out in Rome. They host the World Series of Bocce. They have some really good rollers on this team. Um, they've done a lot of, they've had a lot of success in New York, Ohio, and elsewhere. Big contributors to the game. With me, Dave Hoffman, Digital Dave. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm. Uh, what we do about five or six hours of broadcasting last night. Back in the booth this morning makes me yeah, wonder how Joe Buck does it every day. <laughs> it was an eight-hour total stream yesterday. We were talking about that maybe breaking up the streams into smaller streams. Yeah, a uh, lot of. Uh, a lot of good content here. I think eventually what what I see uh, we're, us doing with these streams is being able to have some of our affiliate bars, venue partners, um, and any bocce enthusiasts across the country be able to just throw on the BBN, hit the playlist button, yeah. shuffle, and uh, just see different bocce tournaments and championships and even league play from across the country. Really want to spread the, the love of uh, bocce to everybody. So we're getting some warm-up rolls in here. Yeah, so why don't we take a look at the players and uh, um, see what we're working with. It looks like Tokolana Club is going to be red on the scoreboard. Their balls are red and green. And... Um, Troy ICC will be blue. They've got the blue and white stripes. <laughs> this is the last warm-up frame, I believe. And then the game will get started. Both of these teams are 2-0 after uh, group play concluded last night. Uh, and it looks like both teams pretty much dominated their victory. So this is a what we call a heavyweight battle. I did that once. With, uh, one time. It's like I'm approaching this clock. I'm going slow. But it's you know, consistent thirty speed. As long as she decides to turn her lights around. So I put that's Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, we just got official word of who's who on the roster. And... So on the side you're looking at, we've got um, Paul and Russ. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, we've got the rosters all lo loaded up, ready to go. So why don't we take a look? Tokolana Club will be uh, Paul Kalikia, Russ Johnson, Mason Hairston, and Joe Bart. Uh, not Joe Bart. Actually. Not Joe Bart. It'll That's be Paul Lewis, Lewis the third. third. Right. Um, so uh, Russ has the flowing, beautiful hair on the left of your screen. Joe Lewis the third is in the gray hoodie. And then opposite them is going to be Mason and Paul Kalikia. For Troy ICC. <laughs> We have Lou Sheldon, Tony Maiello, Fiore Sheldon, and Michael Sheldon. So a real family affair for Troy ICC. Michael Sheldon, young fella on the right-hand side of your screen. He is responsible for the Bocce Broadcast Network. Uh, he's doing a lot to bring the game forward and, and elevate opportunities for our sport. Um, and that's really cool to see. Very thoughtful. Uh, passionate young man loves the sport so that's why we're here we're soaking up some of what Michael's doing we're gonna try to replicate some of this in the Midwest and we figure the more people that are live streaming the more bocce there's th there's out there for people to see <coughs> he's playing with uh, Tony Maiello who is uh, I believe he's 88 years old 87 or 88 and he's one of the uh, premier pointers and kind of legends of his club. And the game just got underway. Was that the first roll? No, that was the no. second roll. So this is... Uh, okay, so there was a... Sh yeah, they, they shot a ball. Roll. I, I didn't realize that uh, yeah. we were already started. Yeah, I was, I was getting chatty there. The good news is that... There's eight balls yeah, in the frame, yeah, and sometimes you don't have to see all the action. It, it does look like the Troy ICC team missed a Rafa and then pointed one long left, one short. No, the, the Rafa made contact. I think they just didn't end up in. Oh, well, there's a ball on the back wall. So. Oh, there's yeah. okay. And then a uh, big ball there. Big closing ball there. Put something in front. Uh, for those of us, those of you who know the game, this is uh, essentially USBF open rules. This is an open bocce tournament. For those of you who don't know the game, uh, the way that bocce is played competitively is that it does not go red throw, then blue throw, then red throw, then blue throw. Basically, if blue has one end, red throws until they beat it, and vice versa. How you beat it is just to be closer to the Polino than your opponent. So big start by Tokolana. What's amazing here is that they didn't even really have to work that hard for that. So yeah, one, is that is that three? Oh, that's four. Wow. That's all four for Tokolana. It's all four. We call that a casino. Yeah, in Chicago we do. Uh, it does seem like it's catching on in other communities, though. Have you heard that at all? Um... Especially in, in Vegas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we played in the Vegas tournament. Exactly. Speaking of uh, different locations, where are we today, Alex? Uh, this is the Waterside Club in Phoenix, New York. Uh, here we've got Mason Hairston kicking it off with a good lead point, good speed. Uh, the Waterside Club here is was established in 2015. The courts have been laid a couple times. They've got a really nice Colioni synthetic surface on them. And I am a huge fan of these courts, huge fan. I think that they, uh, for, for non-tournament official courts, they roll really nicely. Great shot, good morning, Lou Sheldon. A little stick Rafa, gets something in the conversation. About two and a half feet away from the Polino, clears his opponent, great ball. 
There's Mason. He's going to go ahead and try to quickly put a ball pretty much where he put the last one. That's got a little, little heat on it, but it is good. There has not been an official call yet. It might not be good. They're calling a measurement. Mike Sheldon will call the measurement. Very early. Tokolana, four points in the first frame. While they're doing the measurement, I'm going live on the Sticky Bandits Instagram. Oh, get a peek behind the curtain? Yeah, a little behind the scenes action of Alex here on the broadcast. He's operating all this um, video switching equipment. We've got a video control board here and a video switcher board here. You can zoom in and out with that. A lot of multitasking. Uh, there's a little zoom function for you there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're so live on the Bocce Broadcast Network right now. So they decided that blue was in. So Tokolana's going to roll one. It's moving a little hot, a little spicy. Uh, for those of you who have not been to Waterside, but you like to travel and you like to compare courts, uh, these courts remind me a lot of the St. Louis courts. Um, they've got that kind of sticky, rubbery surface. They roll really true. Let's see if that ball's dialed in a little more. Uh, yeah, it gets a little Polino. That's very helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Is that two in right now? Or is that? Yeah, it must oh, be. Oh, that might be three because it moved it back so Lou's for gonna, the measurement. Lou's going to shoot. He's going to try to open this up. He, uh, he, he could get. Okay. Lou's been shooting a lot this weekend, and I haven't seen him miss a whole lot either. He's a good shooter. He's a good player. He's been playing for a very long time. I think there's a lot of shooters on this court right now. And this is Cousin Fiore, who I don't believe is a shooter. Maybe he was in his day. Um, he said he had some knee issues that took him out of the game for a few years. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. But he is going to shoot. He's lining up to shoot. This could be a big frame if he connects. One more in the chamber. Welcome to... Tina Bach. Bachholt. Bachholt. One more in the chamber. Let's see, Fiori, if you can correct. We are live at Waterside Club in New York. We're actually doing a little behind-the-scenes action of our Bocce Broadcast Network stream here. Uh, so we're actually live over on YouTube on the Bocce Broadcast Network, and I'm doubly live on Instagram on the Sticky Bandits channel. We're on uh, these right. two beautiful Colleoni courts at Waterside Club in Phoenix, New York. And here we got Russ Johnson. He's going to lead it off. Uh, he's got a nice Polino placement about 80% of the way down the court, right in the middle. Love to see that. Tokolana scored one there. These games are at a 14. Tokolana jumps out to a lead. And here's Tony Maiello. Storied pointer out of Troy, ICC. And that is exactly why he has the reputation he does. That's a great point, about 50 feet down the court. He's going to like that. We got Billy D joining us on Instagram. So, Billy, if you want to watch the, uh, the actual live stream, we're over on the Bocce Broadcast Network on YouTube. So join us there. Tell all your friends. Oops. So I actually hit the replay button with something here. A little technical difficulty. We'll get out of this. Alex is working the camera set up here. Um, Sorry about that, folks. A lot of uh, let's lot say of we're sitting one red in right now. So red is Tokolano. Michael Sheldon. It's early, folks. We were out here until about midnight last night. Oh, till midnight exactly, because that's when the alarm goes off. And we were running out the door to make sure that the alarm didn't go off on us. 
Tony's going to try to lay one in here. It's going to be a tough point to beat. He might be thinking of a defensive ball. Ah, he puts a little pace on it. This is what Annie oh, actually. Oh, and he gets two. Steals the point. Really nice ball. You know, the more I see open bocce played on a tournament level, the more I see an aggressive fourth point. And I really like that. You know, give yourself a chance to make your ball mean something. Put it in play. Okay, this is uh, Paul Lewis. Paul Lewis the third was the uh, alternate on the team that got the call up late. He misses wide right. So Troy might get away with one here. Just one more ball in the chamber for Tokelana Club. Tokelana's Rome, New York. Yeah, upstate. Uh, Troy is upstate as well. Troy is more capital region. Uh, the ICC is the Italian Community Center. And they were formed in 1934 and have been in their current location since 1988. For those joining us on Instagram, um, you're watching Troy ICC versus the Tokelana Club. Score is currently uh, five to one. Troy got five one to there. one. And you're seeing a little behind the scenes action of the Bocce Broadcast Network live stream. Fiora's got the Polino. Okay, so Fiora's fun. He's 75 years old. Long time player. Um, and he's got the coolest hat in the world. Yeah. We'll watch him here. So for those just overhand. joining us on Instagram, I'm going to say this for the last time. Uh, join us over on uh, YouTube at Bocce Broadcast Network. So I'm going to sign off There's a link for from it. Instagram here pretty soon. There's a link for it on the American Bocce Stories right now. Alex is saying there's a link on the American Bocce Story. I don't know if you can hear him as well as you can hear me. So go to the American Bocce Stories on Instagram and click over to the YouTube link. Signing off on Instagram. Okay, Mason's going to go for a little wall play here. These walls do push back towards the middle. And it looks like he played that beautifully. Great ball by Mason. Uh, I don't know Mason personally, but I've seen him in the winner circle of pictures on the internet. So he must be good. Okay. Lou the shooter. Little left. It is just after 9 a.m. Eastern. Lovely weekend here, just outside of Syracuse, New York. off the court uh, anything above that gray wall is considered out of bounds so that means we're gonna reset had so much fun we're gonna do it again that frame is reset nice Polino knock I don't know that any team had a serious advantage one way or the other there That's Fior kicking it back off. Polino's in a very similar spot. I think he'll want a better opener than last time. He takes a steeper angle this time. Maybe learn something from Mason using that wall. A little short, a little more meat on the bone than he wanted. Good morning, Guy DeSantis. Good, how are you? Good, how are you? I've got... 
I've got Guy DeSantis nearby. Uh, he is a figurehead in the bocce community. Uh, Guy, you want to step into the booth real quick? All right. While we're letting this frame unfold, let's say hi to Guy. Guy, give him a wave back home. Where's home, Yonkers? Yes, we're from Yonkers. I live in Yonkers. Our club is in Mount Vernon, New York, mm -hmm. which is city, uh, neighboring city, city to Yonkers. Uh, yeah, we established the club in uh, 1995. Uh, the courts have been there for about 60 years. They were built by the city. Uh, nice little facility. Very old. Hasn't really been updated. You know, it's a city property, so we're limited to what we could do to the club, but we appreciate what's happening there and what we've done in all these years. Yeah, you've done a lot for the sport. And I understand you've also inspired some other local clubs too. Yeah, well, we just started uh, another club in uh, Sons of Italy, which I brought one of the teams here. Um, they're mostly beginners, but uh, they really liked the challenge and they wanted to come and experience. Uh, they came to the Vegas tournament. That was their first tournament. And now they're here, one of the teams. And they're into it. And uh, we started uh, uh, a couple years back. We started at the Sons of Italy. They have one court. And uh, it's exploded. This year, starting in a couple of weeks, we have 18 teams. That's incredible. With in a couple of weeks. With, yeah, with six, six players, maybe seven, eight players on each team. Minimum six. Most of the teams have six players, and we're all playing on one court. That's wild. It's uh, yeah. So there'll be games Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and there'll be uh, six teams playing each night. Mm -hmm. uh, two game sets, uh, play up to 12 points. So six teams will be involved every night. Uh, we're looking forward to it. It should be challenging. It's somebody new. We have a lot of women, kids playing, families. It's a sense of really. Uh, Lodge, so you have a lot of family yeah. participation, which is great. And now some of these uh, kids and even some of these uh, other players, uh, we have a, a couple of women that have joined our club. Mm -hmm. uh, they played in our league over the winter. They learned a lot about bocce, and they're passing, you know, the word around, right. which is really helping the bocce community in our area. Um, we have the Babylon Club that's opening up in a, a little farther from where we are, but. You know, we still participate, but uh, Santo Crocco is doing a great, great job with it. Four brand new courts. Full size, right? Full size. International standard. Yep. yep. I think they're 14 feet wide by 92, I think. Those uh, are huge. On the beach. On the, yeah. On the beach. It's Incredible. just a beautiful facility. Um, kudos to Santo. A lot of work uh, maintaining courts, you know, on the East Coast. Very hard, you know, with the rain and the snow and everything but uh so big shot there by lou sheldon just checking in on the frame here um yeah. polino's in the back right corner it's hard to uh not have that wall affect your ball here right yeah because it's going to push it yeah well so let's see what he's trying to try to do here yeah this is uh paul kalikia uh Nice ball, but it's a... Uh, it fades away, though. Yeah, so Paul Kaliki is the president of Tokelana. You've been over there to Tokelana? Yeah, I've been to Tokelana. I missed the last World Series because I, um, I had something going on in the family. Uh, but I've been there plenty and plenty of times. Uh, great event. I'm going to make my uh, my debut there this summer. Oh, you've never been yeah. there? Oh, never it, been, no. Yeah, it's, uh, it's different from what you're used to, but uh, it's a great event. And they've improved it uh, every year. Yeah, and tons of players. Like tons of players. Yeah. yeah so least. I guess I guess would you say the Cleveland Challenge uh, in Wycliffe, World Series of Bocce, and then your tournament, the Las Vegas Open, are the three biggest tournaments yeah, in the country. Three biggest. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of participation from different states. I don't think they have as many states represented as Vegas, but Vegas, it's also. Uh, Destination. Uh, destination, yeah. and that you know that's why we built that tournament on. Uh, so you know, but Cleveland has a tremendous. I never got, be, I've been able to go to the Cleveland one. It actually happens the same weekend that we have a, a traditional family uh, vacation. So okay, it's a tough one to break away. We've been doing it for 30 years, so it's. Uh, yeah, you can't go to all the tournaments. I wish nah, there was more. Nah. I wish. but it's the same weekend, so I can't. You know, 
I love bocce, but, you know, family is, uh, this ball looks like it's a yeah. little short. But one day I'll get out there, too. Oh, what? Well, he might be in. Yeah, I think like he got in. it, yeah. Look, he's in. So we got, uh, yeah, family, bocce, health, career. I think that's the order yeah. it goes, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I got a great wife. She allows me to go to all these tournaments without a hassle, you know. Uh, she knows Gabe here. Uh, she knows the family, you know. We, I was actually even at Gabe's uh, wedding here when he got married. So, oh, great! It's uh, you know a long relationship with uh, Gabe, I've and what he's done with this place is tremendous. We were here for the first year when he first opened up, and he had hard true courts here. Right. And look what he's done now. I mean, it's yeah, beautiful, beautiful synthetic. place. Yeah. These it's courts really are, are you, n you probably never get sick of rolling on these courts. No. And these, this is probably the best surface you're ever going to roll. I don't think you could roll on any better surface than this. This is yeah, yeah. It's unique. You know, it's, uh, okay, so back yeah. to the action. Tony Maiello yeah. is uh, going to try to roll one in here. It looks like Tokelana has a ball about yeah. 18 inches from the point. That's a tough point. It's, uh, it's pretty good Tony's point. got a lot of sauce on that one. It's going to. A little long. A little long. I think he probably. Threw that a little hot on purpose and maybe try to yeah. move something, right? Yeah, probably try to move one of the red balls a little bit, maybe sit for two. And here's Mike, uh, Michael Sheldon uh, holding last ball. Um, and he's going to try to protect. Um, That's the risk you have, though, when you play a little long, that if you, if you miss your target, yeah. your ball is worthless. This might be a good ball if it takes Bolino, but no. Nope. It's going to This is not. Walk by a little bit. They're there. not in good shape here. They still have two balls in hand, and they have the point. Have you played yet this morning? No, not yet. Okay. 2-0 and last night? 2-0 and last night. Good we start. played pretty uh, well yesterday. We had two good games, but as you know, tournaments are marathons. You yeah. can't just count on one day or one game. It's uh, what do we do today? We still have three more games. Our group is pretty tough. No easy games. Uh, but we look forward to the challenge. It and would be cool to um, be the first New York Bocce state champion. When of course, that would be great. Are you kidding me? I know. It's I'm jealous. <laughs> I need to get my New York residency. <laughs> I'll give you my address. You can just register from my house. <laughs> I don't want to pay taxes here. <laughs> uh, no, you don't want to pay taxes here. That's for sure. That's a, that's a no, no. That's not a. This, All right. This might have. A, this might be a good ball. This is going to be a good ball. Is that going to get there? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I do too. Looks like two. Oh, I think the call might have been three. Oh, three. That yeah. one is in, too. Oh, wow. So Tokelana gets three there. That's going to be a misstep for Troy. They had Polino possession. Yeah. They cut it to two. And then nah. yeah, this, one, this frame hurt. you can see it's eight to three. And we'll go back to our players here. This is Mason Hairston. Do you know anything about uh, Mason or any of these Tokelana I've seen players? him play. I don't really know them. Uh, I don't know him either. I, I know that I've seen pictures of him winning. So he yeah. must be a good player. Yeah. yeah. And I think this is one of the guys that's up and coming and um, really into the game. Uh, but I don't yeah. know him uh, personally. I met him here a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but I don't really know much about him. Uh, I think Michael calls those balls a teaser, which is a, yeah. a first ball in front yeah. with uh, plenty of room to point around, but it takes the shot out yeah. of it. it takes the they call it a there. tweener. Tweener? Yeah, it's in between <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shooting a point in here. And, yeah. uh, and here's uh, Fury with his uh, shot here. Yeah, let's see if he sneaks in on the low side. I think it's going to run out of steam. Yeah, it's going to be a little slow, a little short here. Mm -hmm. So. Boo and Fury's been they've been playing together as many years that I remember that you know, a long time they've been playing together they've been teammates and not just teammates I think they're friends off the court too which is uh, nice yeah I guess he uh, missed a little time so it's good to have him back in yeah the, on yeah the, he's back on yeah. on the scene now yeah but you know Lou is lucky he's got two kids that play with him and it's really nice to have your mm -hmm. kids play with you I mean I know not in this tournament but uh, most women, both of his kids are playing with him, and that's that's really, you know. Yeah. Well, we talked about family first, and yeah. it's really nice when you can weave them both together, right? Oh, that's great. I mean, my best feeling is that, uh, you know, when I, my son finally started playing bocce, and, you know, now he looks forward to coming.
to some of the tournaments and he's playing a league with us, it's, yeah. you know, winning and losing at that point doesn't, I mean, it means something, but it's not, you know, the family going with my son somewhere, it's, it's great. And here's I'm Paul sure. Kalikia, he's uh, gonna try to get this point he back. In, yeah. It's tough to tell it might, from our angle. It might be a little short. They're gonna take a look at this one. Um, I bet it might Troy. Be a little short. I bet Troy's hoping it's short so they can get back into this yeah. game. Are they gonna measure? They're gonna measure, I guess. Oh, see, he's in. Okay. Because so they, Michael is pointing to where the point would be. So here's Lou. Okay. Lou's going to try to bring it in, yeah. uh, sling it from one corner to the other. Let the wall bring it back. Yeah. He's going to try to uh, near the wall so it bellies in around yeah. those balls. That's the name of the game. Hits the wall a little well, early. A little early, I think. Unless it splits yeah, everything. Yeah. And it's short, too. Mm hmm that's not good that's yeah you really have to trust the wall to yeah. to do what it what it does what, what, it mean, what so, it's meant to do yeah exactly so you don't want to overcut it or it'll kill the ball speed and end up kind of short middle he has in this shot he has to miss that one ball on the right side just miss it on the right side a little bit and, and i think that would be a real good shot he got to the wall a little too early he's okay. going to shoot this and I, I guess he's shooting this I can't see what the setup is. Maybe just to get one of his balls down. Oh, it's oh and he stuck it too. Yeah, okay. so. so he's got two. Uh, are they great points? Not really, but. But hey. uh, Tokolan only has one ball. Yeah. So now they're putting the pressure back on Tokolan yeah. and saying. Uh, yeah. Tokolan has two balls, no? I think they have, there's only six balls on the, on the court, right? I think they might have two. I think there's a. Uh, there's a huddle of three balls in the middle. Oh, the, that you oh, can't the, oh that might be yeah. three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to see from here. So now, you know, interesting choice there to shoot yeah. on the last ball. But as you can already tell, it's putting the pressure back on Tokolana, and now he's in between shots. Yeah. So sometimes that's all you want to do. I think he's going to point here. I don't yeah. think he's going to shoot here. He is? I think so. The classic bocce track jacket there. Yeah. Love to see it. <laughs> he's walking it down. He he's up, he's up and along. That's I think a nice it's a good line. ball, yeah. Right in. Yeah, yeah, all day. Well, on these courts, if you roll close to the wall from where you start, it will open up to the center of the courts, too, from both ends. Yep. You know, if you roll it right along the wall, you can get it to the middle. Okay, so it took a long. has got a commanding lead here. 9-3. Game to 14, though. Oh, you never you know. You can settle back in. You can oh, settle yeah. back in. One big frame could change everything. One mistake. As you know, this is, uh, there's no clock here, so it's uh, yeah. It's not over it till uh, the last ball is rolled. Here's Russ Johnson. Uh, Russ really Johnson. nice lead ball. Oh, nice. There. What a lead ball. Great shot. Good Great shot. shot. <laughs> this is a must hit here. This spells more trouble for them. Missed a couple left. A couple left. Yeah. I think it's I think it's too early for Michael. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> Michael, yeah. <laughs> Still not awake. <laughs> well, this is a big shot here. Nice. Yeah. Wow, look at all the yeah. spin he gets on well, that Tokolana ball. Hey, in a way though, it worked out for them. At least they got the point. You don't want to use your third ball here, you know? That did work out, yeah, and, and so at that point, you know, Michael was rolling for contact, not necessarily to right. steal, steal and, the ball. And you get Tokolana to throw another ball. All right. You know. If Russ repeats himself, though, it'll be tough for Troy to do much with this frame. So now the great ball. Good ball. That's a Trina right there. Yep, <laughs> about 20 inches away. Although the shooter's out of balls, so they're gonna. Nah, you can't shoot here. This, this is your third ball. You can't shoot here. You have no point. You have to point here. There you go. There's Tony. This might be long. He catches a lot of Polino. Does he it might slow have it down it. enough? I don't know. This is gonna be close. That's gonna be close. That needs a measurement. Yeah. We're calling for the measurement. Why don't we get a close up on this measurement? Show you how. 
I always measure from the ball back towards the Polino. Always ball and the center yeah. of Polino is ball. the most center. accurate. Uh, some people measure at the beginning of the Polino at the belly. I think the center of Polino is a little more accurate. Um, oh, that's a quick, quick roll by Tony. So it was long. Yep. So here's Tony's ball coming in. Great line, but a little short. Well, yeah, this is tough. Troy's going to have to. They're, they're going to have to make something happen. There's, they're out of balls right now, so. Yeah, they're going to have to this, wait another frame. Yeah, this is. They still have two more balls, right? This is Paul Lewis. Paul catches. Well, that's two. That's two points. Yeah, he catches that defensive ball by Tony, but it works out really well for him, and he ends up sneaking in the second point. One more here, and dare I say, this game could be put yep. out of reach. I'll be a little short this time. Mm. I don't think it got there. Two. It looks like two. two. Okay. So brings it to eleven three. As they say, the last couple of points are the hardest ones, so. For sure. Not over till it's over. So anything else exciting going on in the bocce world for you, Guy? Uh, we have, uh, well, we start three leagues in the next two weeks. We start one in uh, Huntington, uh, New York. That's the ABC club. Mm -hmm. Peter's done a great job. He's, uh, he has f uh, five nights, Monday through Friday, all filled up. Uh, he has all different levels, and uh, he has a platinum division, which is the highest uh, division. He has gold and silver and bronze, and uh, so every night it's a different division. Uh, great ball. Great lead there. Yeah, great lead there. That was Mason uh, again. He's a good pointer. Yes, that's a great, great shot. Okay, Lou's going to shoot. Yeah. He's a great shooter. Oh, good hit. We'll get a break here. Uh, looks like Tokolan is still in here. So we started Huntington in a couple of weeks. Uh, we started uh, a league in Stanford, Connecticut. Stanford, Connecticut is a huge league, eight courts outdoor, hard true. Uh, 32 teams in the men's division. How far is Stanford, Connecticut? Stanford, here? Connecticut, uh, from us, it's about 25 minutes to the, the courts. It's not far. We, you know, we're in a great area where we could touch three states in within uh, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty a pretty good location. We could go to a lot of Connecticut uh, events if we really wanted to, but it's just way too many. Like you said before, you can't go to every one of them. Uh, here's a shot here. Nice shot by Paul. Nice shot. Uh, so we start in Connecticut. We're going to start in uh, Huntington, and the White Plains Sons of Italy starts in a couple of weeks also. So we have three leagues starting the, within the next two weeks. So there's a lot of botch to be season. played. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of botch to be played. And then uh, while, while I have you here, let's talk about Vegas next year. Is this, is this the weekend, the same weekend? It's going to be this weekend next year, yep. Yeah, we so signed a contract for next year at this time. Uh, Hopefully we get all the space like we had this year so we could go to 80 teams again. And if we go to 80 teams, it'll make our job a little easier because the format is already set up. Everything's set up, we would just have to fill in the names of the teams participating. So that's our goal. Uh, yeah, a record 80 teams last year. Yeah. How many courts? 16 courts we built last year. It seemed like the pace was really good last year. Yeah, well what we do every year, we tweak that schedule. If it's five minutes, two minutes, whatever, and I make notes every year, and then uh, we tweak it. So, as you know, last year we, oh, he's a shot here. Okay, big shot by Paul. Yeah. So this is a lot of pressure. Uh, this is a good frame, right? We've seen yeah. this six balls be, out. Uh, yeah. This, uh, this is not looking good for Lou right now. Right, so essentially the way the balls have shook, yeah. If Lou puts one out there and Tokolana shoots it, they could win the game. They could win the game, yeah. So Lou's thinking um, about the options to basically try to survive, I think, here. Yeah, this is survival he is gonna, here. He is going to point. You can tell by the hand signal. Yeah, oh, he has to point yeah. it. He's got, I don't think he has a choice, but what is he going to do? 
what else is he going to do? He's got a point and hope for, for a miss or maybe a, a bad bounce if they shoot. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if... Uh, uh, you, know what I, you know what I've seen on um, FIB in situations like this is well, uh, shooting... So I think he tried to point near their closest yeah, right. point. Yeah. Take a ball away. Yeah, That's exactly. the two, yeah, because if they shoot that way, it could... Uh, see, I don't know if he's a shooter. He's shooting. I guess he's shooting. This is going to be for the win. And he does it. He hit it. Wow. Ah, and he came back, and that's the win. Big right shot by Mason wow. there. Hadn't seen him shoot the whole game. He yeah, saved the best for last. Awesome well, ball. Tokolana looks tough. Tokolana's a good team. That's three, uh, they're, they're three games team. and three blowouts for them. So. They're a good team. Yep. I yep. think that's going to be team to beat. I think they're, they're a very good team. Well, yep. I appreciate you hanging out in the booth with me, guy. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime you need some assistance, I'm here to help. And, you exactly. know, I... No, it's might, always nice to hear from you. You got a lot of... I like to promote, you know, and uh, move the sport forward. You've got a lot of team. irons in the in the bocce fire, so... <laughs> Thank uh, you. It looks like... Uh, our friends at American Bocce Club are taking the court next. Yeah. Uh, that's Peter and Rito we're and actually up too. Oh, great. We're up right now too, so. Okay, well, good luck to you guys. They're gonna be on one court, we'll be on the other, so. All right, get focused. Thank you Here, again. Let me get a quick shot of us in the booth together. Wave to the people back home. All right. Thank you, Al. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you can write anything out too. Yeah, yeah. Just because I know. Okay. No, mics are on now. Good morning. Here we go. All right. We're going to get started shortly here with the second or third set of games of this morning. It is Holly Club versus our boys at the American Bocce Club. While we get situated, we'll say hi. I got Dino in the booth with me. 
Let's point that towards you a little, Dino. There we go. Good morning. Uh, how'd you feel about yesterday? Successful first, successful start? I, th I think so. Uh, you know, being a tournament director for the first time, I, last year we ran the Ambassador uh, Cup Series, uh, bringing teams in from around the country. This year we brought teams in from uh, around the state. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you, you learn by your mistakes, and uh, I thought for the, for the most part the, the day went pretty smooth. Started on time, ended on time. Uh, yeah. It looked like everybody had a good time. I agree. I had a great time myself. All right. So we're going to keep a uh, – we're just practicing here. Um, while we do, we'll update the scoreboard. Holly is rolling white balls with red and green lines on them. And the American Bocce Club is rolling blue balls. So I'm going to take a chance and say that Holly is going to be red. Dave, is it Holly with an EY or just HO? Is it is Holly with an EY or just? Holly with an EY. Yes, great. Okay. And then the green team is going to be the American Bocce Club. And while you're updating those scores, you can switch over. Not to be confused with the American Bocce Company which is me. Okay, so Dave's going to give us an update on the scores this morning. It looks like Short Street continued their dominance from last night. Uh, that is definitely a team to contend with. Short Street won another big one. We have Knights of Columbus uh, Knights of Columbus with a win over Babylon. Uh, Tokelana, another strong win. And then the Waterside Club got off the schneid. So good for you, Dino. Well, How'd that feel? You. <laughs> good, good. It felt much better. Yeah, how'd you play? Good. I thought it played well. Uh, you know, no excuses yesterday. Uh, you know, starting the tournament and getting out things up and running, a little bit tired. But uh, today I felt rested. Good, relaxed. good. Yeah, it was a long day for you yesterday, yeah. I'm sure. Okay, so rolling for Holly, this is Randy Bauer. Randy's a buddy of yours, Dino? He is, uh, and also a member here as well, no, okay. an out-of-town member. Out-of-town member. How yeah. far is Holly from here, Dino? Holly is about two hours away, Okay. Uh, towards the West uh, Buffalo District area. Okay. Always, yeah. always brings a, a great bunch of guys around for events here at the club. Yeah, and rolling with him is his son, Jake. And his son, Jake. Got Jake, a, a, a younger player, not the youngest player in this tournament. We do have a 14-year-old. We do. Yeah. A solid hitter, Jake is. He, uh, yeah, he really is. He throws with the best of them. I met him last year at the Ambassadors Cup, and I distinctly remember him because he was the first guy I met in a long time who had no idea who I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. You know. Which I should say, be remiss if I did not say uh, thank you to the American Bocce Company for being here. Uh, you and Dave uh, uh, trucked across the country to uh, uh, join us here at this uh, ambassador's event. And you, know, you, you bring your knowledge, you, you bring your, your enthusiasm. You know, Dave brought the squirrel. Yep. It's exciting technology. Watch how things are developing. You, uh, you know. You, you promote the game across the country. Uh, I'm looking forward to revisiting uh, the plots of the botch for the ABC Open. Yeah, our yeah. club's registered already, so uh, we're looking you know. forward to having you. That that tournament uh, is our third annual American Bocce Open, first week of September, or uh, sorry, second second week of September. Uh, 64 teams from around the country, and the 
one of the things that makes that tournament special is that we run a gold and a silver division. And with the gold and the silver, you choose which one you want to be. And then the gold, you're going to compete with the best of the best. And the silver, you're going to, um, you're going to get to watch the best of the best, but you're going to compete with more bar league players, amateur, you know, um, but a good chance to get tournament experience and not feel overwhelmed by the moment. It's, it's some good players too. You, you watch them uh, uh, compete. Uh, they roll. They roll and hit with the best of them. So I think this game just went got underway. Okay. So let's just finish up on this Holly roster. We talked about Jake and Randy on the other side. On this side, um, sorry, where are we at here? Uh, yeah. So rolling with Jake and Randy are Zach and Sal. That's Zach right. and Sal DeLuca. Is that father and son too? I believe so, yes. Okay. I mean, they, they yeah. look like they could be. <laughs> I, I think they are. Yeah. And uh, it looks like Zach is the shooter for that team. And then they're playing against the American Bocce Club, and that is captained by Peter Rabito. Here, we'll watch Zach take a rip at it. Great shot by Zach right out of the gate. Uh, Peter Rabito playing with Frank Carino, Jeff O'Hare, and Brad Thayer. Uh, Jeff O'Hare is the gentleman in the hat, Peter's partner. He's going to roll one now. We'll watch that down the court. And they're going to take a look at it. They're going to take a look at it. Okay, I just got my morning espresso, so if you hear me slurping into the oh, microphone... Good. Pay no mind. We were playing a, a pickup game at midnight here last night. So, Okay. And while we have a lull in the action, I'll just remind folks to like and subscribe to this channel, the Bocce Broadcast Network. It does help us grow the channel and uh, grow opportunities for it. And I think... If you're a fan of bocce, you agree that we all want to see more bocce. We want to see more opportunities for it. And the Bocce Broadcast Network is giving us a chance to put bocce in front of people in their homes, um, at, on the TVs at some of our uh, associate partners and, and, and venue partners. So I think the BBN has been a real success uh, out of the gate these last four or five months. What do you think, Dino? I, I agree, Alex. I think uh, just the opportunity... Uh to. If you can't watch it live, you can certainly go back and, and watch later in the day. Or if a, uh, an event is uh, being broadcast throughout the day, if you have an opportunity to watch an event in the morning or watch an event in the afternoon, you can, you can kind of pick and choose the, the block of time during the day where you're available to watch some live bocce or watch it uh, you know, a day or a week later. And the game is underway. And it looks like we got three out of the gate for the American Bocce Club. So a quick three, they'll be happy with that. And Brad Thayer. Brad's a member here too, yeah? He is not. Oh, he's not, he's okay. Not. Uh, he's, he's been here before a number of events. Uh, I felt like I just feel like yeah. he's a member everywhere. But right, yeah. exactly. He, he, yeah. likes, he likes to play. He's a gamer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Brad's a, 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 a very passionate bocce player. He loves the game a lot. Uh, there we Go saw a great by shot by Jake. Uh, he's, as you mentioned, a great shooter. And Brad is going to quickly. Go back to his pointing position and roll another one tight and hopefully have Jake exhaust another raffle. Dino, can you explain the knockoff brackets? If you didn't already. Not for me, for the brackets. Um, yeah, I'd have to, I, I know there was a, a, a change in the bracket itself as far as the uh, which group is going to be seated okay, first. Okay, so Brad rolls another. Uh, there's a, a template that we have uh, printed out, and if, if you can grab that, uh, it's, it's a good ball. Leaves it about 15 inches in front of the Polino. Uh, it'll be tough to get a ball to stay in the conversation on the wall side. So 
We'll watch Jake shoot. And I think that Brad was really smart to put that ball where he did. Okay, so Randy's going to try to seal, maybe steal a point. This ball has some pace. Maybe it hits Polino. It does not. If you're just joining us, we are live at the Waterside Club. This is uh, the third set of games in the group play. Big shot there by Randy. Really nice leave. Ball ends up right behind the Paulino. It hit the ball well. Yeah. Um, and here's Frank Carino. First time we've seen Frank today. Looks like he's got his mind made up. He's going to point. Maybe try to move something. I think I'm thinking a slightly aggressive point here from Frank. And that's what we have. Right. That's what we have. A little early on the wall. A little too early on the wall. You got to trust the wall is going to do its thing and get to it as late as possible. Right, it's here, late. Right? It's late. Yeah. See, that, even that foot might be too early that Jeff just yeah. gave him. I, I agree. But it's easier to talk about it than do it. <laughs> that was aggressive. Yeah, and once more, just a little early. It would be a Colony, the courts themselves. You probably spoke to, spoke about them yes, uh, le yesterday. We have, yes. Yeah, yeah. so this Coglione course, the Coglione uh, family out of Italy that has laid and installed premium courts across the country. Um, can you speak a little more to Coglione and, and how you have them at your club here? Right. So, uh, you know, it really came down to maintenance. You know, mm -hmm. Everybody who uh, is a bocce enthusiast, they, they realize that the labor intensive uh, t time it takes to ma uh, maintain and manage courts. And being an indoor facility, uh, you know, you're, you're dealing with uh, water. You know, sometimes it, it can get a little uh, musty at times with the heat temperature wise, but we come indoors, uh, the right thing to do is put down some type of synthetic court. Mm -hmm. And when we did the research, uh, you know, we, we, we pretty much uh, agreed that uh, the Colony was the court to, to have installed. And you know, there's some other uh, uh, clubs around the uh, country. If I'm not mistaken, out in Chicago, Highwood has uh, Colony as, well. as well. So you, you could speak to those courts and, and yeah. maybe compare the two different surfaces. Sure. So um, Highwood's surface um, is good ball there. Really nice shot. Highwood's surface is similar to. Uh, Methuen right. and Massachusetts um, and, and somewhat similar to um, here's Pete loading up again. Uh, actually, I would say Highwood and Methuen are the two closest. Um, Highwoods are really well maintained. They're, they're lightning fast. Um, we do actually have something unique there, which is we do have a layer of sand on top of the synthetic. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. and I think that um, the sand does help slow the courts down because they are so quick. Um, they're really, really beautiful. They do have a little bit of that bow um, off the walls like yours do. Um, the difference, uh, which I would say Waterside and the, the courts I always compare these to are the uh, Italia America Club in St. Louis. I see, okay. Yeah, I don't know if you're- No, I haven't been the there, I'd IAC. like to get there. Yeah, the IAC. Um, those are full size, but they have that sort of tacky surface right. that you do. Right. Um, which makes it easier to um, hit and stick. It makes it easier to bump a ball. Um, so there, I've seen a lot of like ball bumping in this tournament. Right. At Highwood, if, if you bump a ball, that even if you touch it, it could roll out six or seven times. Okay, so what are we looking at here? 3-1 three, three, score. 3-1. Three, you have American and up. And American Bocce Club has one ball in, and they're rolling for extra points. Here's Jeff O'Hare. Does that have enough steam on it? It looks like it does. Looks like it's going to get there. It's a nice shot. 
So that's two, two for in. ABC. Again, this feels weird for me to call someone else ABC. But I know, so it's <laughs> the American Bocce Club, right? So, uh, you know, they're out of Huntington, Long Island. And so we had some teams in from around the state and uh, show a little bit about uh, the American Bocce Club. Um, you know, they have uh, quite a few members that participate in a number of uh, tournaments across the country. Uh, I've seen them at uh, Las Vegas, the World Series of Bocce. You know, they do the, the New York City has a uh, citywide bocce championship. So they play each of the boroughs play bocce in, in the parks, and then they come together for a championship at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So you have Brooklyn going against Bronx, going against Queens, going against Manhattan. You know, they, uh, out in uh, Huntington, they also host a, uh, a local tournament there now with uh, Babylon. Uh, having some beautiful courts installed this year. Yeah, I mean, you haven't been to. I haven't. No, uh, I just seen pictures, but they look fantastic. And that is um, Hartrue, I think, right? That's right. It's so uh, it's right in the sound. Um, they're going to uh, both Huntington and Babylon are going to have a uh, a competitive series between the two. That's Almost fun. A, a yeah. Maybe like a Ryder Cup per se. Very right? cool. Yeah, it looks like so. Santo uh, is in the chat this morning. So Santo is. Uh, one of the founding members of the Babylon Club, um, and I think he was, you know, a big part of Huntington as well. So, um, kind of a key figure in the New York bocce scene. Growing, growing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice, uh, nice role there by Randy Bauer. Um, you know, Holly's going to look to change the momentum of this game. Yeah, they're going to have to do something here yeah. real quick. I imagine Frank's going to shoot. Got a big juicy target. Yeah. Either or situation? I think so. Yeah. Especially this early, first game of the day. Just play for contact. <laughs> okay. So Randy's going to try to do it again. You'll notice the uh, Packer World sign both on the cage and at the top of the banner, the New York State Bocce Championship. Packer World has uh, been really instrumental in the rise of bocce in Special Olympics, and not just here in the states, but uh, you know around the world. Right. Um, you know, they, I was down in the the Latin American Games with. Pete Roberts, the founder of Packer World in 2017, and we brought bocce to Central and South America, and some of the countries were involved, that were there, it was the first time playing, so that was a really cool experience. To, to, That'd be exciting. Yeah, and what's what's great about the portable courts that Packer World makes is that Special Olympics was somewhat limited to growth based on the amount of courts that were available to them. I see. So by having portable, inflatable courts at the ready the programming could grow and they could say hey we can take more than a hundred players this year Scalable. we just have to go get more courts we don't have to build more courts we just have to get more of these pack row courts that fit in a duffel bag so um, I'm really excited and proud to see them involved in this tournament and I'm glad that Dino you were able to hook up with Pete and uh, uh, just, just great people. You know, I, I think it's a testament when they say they bring the game. Yeah. <coughs> they bring the game, right? And uh, I'd be remiss as well. They, they you know, they're representing, uh, they're, they're representing the, uh, in the <laughs> Olympic World Games in Germany. Yes. Their, their, their courts are going to be on full display there. So that's a testament to, of, of any other uh, international provider to, to the Special Olympic uh, uh, international, uh, you know, worldwide uh, federation would uh, consider yeah. Packer World to be the uh, the, uh, the court of choice. Right. Uh, so it's not just a court of convenience, but it, it plays well. And, you know, I've, we use the Packer World courts for our, our recreation leagues, um, a lot of bar leagues. We run up to 15 a week in Chicago, and they're on the recreation courts. Um, and they've truly been the backbone of, of our business and our vision of growing the sport. So can't say enough good things about Packer World. Hopefully I'll say more good things about Holly soon. That's right. 
one frame all it takes, right? Yeah, you need exactly. to break this game of momentum. We've all been there, and uh, one ball, one one break, and uh, one point it starts to put things in different directions. Exactly. Okay, so Dino's gonna be good, right? gonna help with the officiating yeah. concern here. I there was a little bit question. of drama on the other court. Um, so the question was, uh, Pauline uh, come back to the half court line? Okay. It's on the line, didn't cross the line. So it was oh, is it a dead the, frame? So the tournament uh, chair, uh, Gabe, uh, is, is going to make a roll on it. So I'm sitting here in the chair yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a a visible line? It's, it's only visible uh, with a string. If we were to pull a string across the right, right. and on the court itself. Yeah, so that's a that's a subject, almost yeah. subjective judgment call, right? Right. Yeah. But what we would do, because of the opening in the courts, we'd get a string line across if we really needed to. Sure. Or tape measurement. That's a good ball there. Looks like Pete's going to shoot. Keep the pressure on Holly. Excellent. Excellent, Rafa. Um, bad news for Holly. American Bocce Club is still holding two balls. They just got the point back. Brad's going to spot him. So if you don't watch a lot of competitive bocce, Brad's putting his foot down there. He's not necessarily telling his partners to roll the ball there. He's showing them how much space he has, how much space Jeff has to, have to roll a ball that's still considered in. We call that spotting, and we think it's a really important element to communication. Uh, teams can often over communicate, over huddle at center court, and sometimes some nonverbal cues can help keep a team in rhythm. That ball's going to come up a little short, um, and also get the point across. So Brad's an experienced player. The foot down means you've got this much room. It doesn't mean aim at my foot. Okay, Pete's rolling the last ball. He doesn't love it. And he sells the point to Holly. Now, Dino, when we're talking about momentum, that could have just been a momentum swing. Something to give Holly a chance and get him back in the game. What do you think? One point at a time. That's right. That will be six to two. And I would not be surprised if Randy just didn't drop the. Drops a dime? <laughs> drops a dime. Yeah, he. Uh, I've seen him do this time, time after time after time. Okay, the ball's on its way. And on Dino's command, that's a nice little teaser. In the middle of the court as well. Toughest Polino to get to. Middle of the court here. It is, uh, but, but bet Brad being a left handed, so he's got a little bit of an angle coming in from the left side. And he did it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, to perfection. And probably Jake's going to stand up here and. Uh, Great Rafa. Now, did that ball hit above the wall? No, so the uh, the rule here is if uh, the ball hits the sideboards, so the wooden where the uh, signage is, it's in, it's in play. The plexiglass is out of play. Okay. So any ball that hits the plexiglass, then it's a, it's a dead ball. Uh, likewise, the backboard, and you know, we're playing backboard dead. Mm -hmm. The backboard and the pipe above the backboard are in play, but the wooden back mm -hmm. of the court and the fencing right. is you're out of bounds. You're essentially assuming if there were no protective 
fencing what the That's ball, correct. where the ball would right, end up. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's the template we follow. You got a lot of shooters in your league play here? Uh, it's growing. Yeah, we do. We do uh, you know, like, like any other club, you know, you're, you're starting to learn mm -hmm. both, both facets of the game. Mm -hmm. I myself started out uh, as a pointer. Mm -hmm. And although I want to consider myself a pointer, um, I'm forcing myself to learn to be a uh, to hit. Yeah. And by uh, challenging myself to play in certain tournaments with pointers, it, it forces me to sit in a uh, hitter's uh, chair, so to speak, and see the game from a different perspective. Right. So even strategically, uh, you read the game differently now when you're, uh, you're learning both facets of the game. Well, we often say that you, you know, pointing wins games. And a great pointer can win a game on, on their own. Hitting is a luxury. Hitting opens things up for you, moves the ball around. But if you can continuously roll great points, that that is, I think, the foundation of a good bocce ball pointer. And right on cue, uh, Holly, it, you know, took their second point, one point at a time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Holly, that's a, a great Polino shot by Jake. So uh, Frank is holding last ball. That's a tough Polino because it is near the back wall. A lot of open space. Let's see what Frank's got here. He does have the, uh, the right rail though. He's got the leisure of uh, rolling down the channel here. Let's see what he does. Yeah, he took it. It's got a little, yeah. little heat on it. That That's a great ball. Big okay, shot. That. Isn't that something? Okay. Got that one well. So now Randy's holding the last ball. Uh, no reason yeah. to leave this one short, Randy. Right. He's just going to, like he just said to his teammate, just beat him. All he has to do is uh, roll the same ball uh, Frank rolled. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? Of course. Take a different angle. So while they look at that too, uh, you know, I was going to ask you a little bit. Uh, you know, we give you earlier. I gave you a shout out to the American uh, Bocce Company. Yeah. Let's see what. Uh, I'll go back to that in just a second. Let's uh, focus on Randy's shot here. He changed his position on the court, so now he looks like he's going to roll straight down. I think a little heavy. That's heavy. Yeah. So we're going to get one yeah. for. American Bocce but Club, the other ABC. So, so going back to the uh, Amer American Bocce uh, Company, right? Mm -hmm. So we know the we know the face of the organization, but I'm sure there's other people behind the scenes that uh, uh, put in a ton of time to uh, make it work. Oh right. uh, yeah, give, give me a little bit of a a rundown yeah, on that. I'm yeah. going to give you the shout out since I'm sitting alongside you. All right, and travel Dino. all the way to. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. yeah. And Tell I me about the company. What's going on? And I think What's my team would appreciate that yeah, too. Yeah, you know, there's always uh, those people behind the scenes doing what they do every day, right? Yep. So uh, that's a great opportunity to shout out uh, my partner Alicia Harvey, who is a co-founder of American Bocce Company. She helped me find the Wicker Park Bocce Club uh, back in 2014, and the Wicker Park Bocce Club quickly grew into something bigger than we expected. So we transitioned into this idea of having a company that was built to grow the sport uh, on a foundational level. And she's been my uh, partner in crime ever since for nearly a decade. Uh, along the way, we ended up opening up an event space in the West Town, West Loop neighborhood of Chicago. Uh, great ball there, yeah. And uh, so her job kind of transitioned from being in the thick of the bocce world with me. Oh, that hit the plexiglass, yeah? It did. It would have come yeah. off. Um, to running the event. And now it's a full-service wedding venue, uh, often featuring bocce and other games. Uh, it's been uh, not just a really cool staple in Chicago, but it's allowed us to spend so much time focusing on the game of bocce because it's been a little more stable right. financially. Um, along the way, we picked up Andy Zimmerman, who is a uh, a guy that I identified as somebody who deserved to have a 
career in bocce. He cared so much about the game. Energy. So much energy. I always speak about his motor. Um, and he has been playing in tournaments since 2008 um, and has learned a lot <laughs> along the way. And now a big part of what he's doing is passing that knowledge on to new players. Uh, and he's helped build American Bocce Company by putting the sport first and telling new players, you know, it took me 10 years to be good. I can give you the tools to succeed in two hours <laughs> uh, and by talking about the game and being around it uh, he is um, really making noticeable advancements in, in what we're trying to do uh, we also have an awesome team of league managers and referees in the city that's a good ball by Jeff that's a really nice ball by Jeff very nice yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, some of those folks include uh, Peyton Bockholt, who uh, played in a tournament down in here in Illinois with us last weekend, and it was her second ever tournament, and we won it. So, you know, Andy said, it took me 10 years to win a tournament, right. and you win a tournament. And so that <laughs> yeah. Cut the time. Yeah, so so that's, that's a, another um, uh, shout out to Andy, because right. his development has helped her do that. Um, and then Dan Spomer. Patrick Gersmeyer, Jesse Morris, um, both Scott Sandville and Bridget Reedy recently become league managers. So we've got a lot of pe young, enthusiastic people who are growing the game and sort of um, being ambassadors. I think right. first and foremost, they, you know, whatever their job title is, they're ambassadors of the sport. So thank you for giving me the opportunity no, to shout yeah, them out. There's always, uh, you know, there's always a, an army behind that, right? Yeah. Another good ball. Great ball there. Plus, plus two. Yeah, the American Bocce Club is sort of steadily controlling this game. They are now up nine to two, and you know sometimes you watch a game and you feel like one team is just blowing opportunities. Um, sometimes you watch a game and you feel like one team is just in control. Right. And right now American Bocce Club is playing good bocce and that's why they're winning. Case in point, Brad's first point here. Case in point. Spot on. I wouldn't want to be playing them right now. No, no, Brad. Just... I believe they went one and one yesterday. game yesterday against Holly. Yeah. They were the American Bocce Club. They were point after point, you know. Yeah. They were on and uh, had a hard time breaking and we didn't really play our best game, but they just they just played better and uh, you know, hats off to them. You know. What's interesting about um, Holly here is that, you know, Jake Bauer has really been hitting his shots and Randy's been pointing him in too, so it's it's not for lack of effort. American Bocce is just in that groove. Yeah. Frank Carino. Sometimes these taller guys have to get down to one knee. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Bocce is one of the only sports that uh, might be a disadvantage that line? to be standing. Uh, a little heavy. 6'3". Uh, Maybe he catches Polino. He does not. Bye. Let's see if he makes the adjustment. Looks like it might lose steam. Uh, over on the other court, SMS continued to play really well with a big win over Mount Vernon, 14 to one. So I don't know where that puts SMS in the tournament, but I do know, uh, well, now I know that they're 3-0. and I was going to say, I do know that everything I've seen from them has been pretty solid. You know those guys? I do. Yeah, yeah they're, uh, they're over in the Finger Lakes region, uh, which is a winery country here in uh, upstate New York. Anybody enjoy white wines, uh, 
the Finger Licks is the place to be. Okay. And, uh, it's actually my uh, hometown over in the, that part of the country. Really? Yeah. So the. Uh, and Finger Lakes is a couple hours from here. Uh, about an hour. Oh, just an hour. About an hour west. Okay, so it looks like Holly might be holding point and rolling in for a second. It's uh, Billy Barnett, uh, Joan Steve Peterson, uh, over the SMS team. They run a, a tournament as well uh, in the fall around St. Anthony's time. Uh, okay, I'll have to go check them out. That's, uh, you know, one of the only teams that I don't know here. That ball hang around for Randy? I think it did. It's hard to tell from our angle, but that looks like second point. It's going to come back in. That looks like it might yeah, die. Get there. Yeah, we'll yeah. The call is two. The call is two. We have a pair. Of, we have a father-son Deluca pair back in uh, Chicago too. They're really good rollers, so it's kind of fun to see. Frank and Joe. Frank and Joe Deluca. A lot of Delucas out there. A lot of Delucas. Yeah. Hey, well, we have a minute. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, hear a little bit about the American Bocce Club in Huntington. We did talk about them a little bit before. Um, but this is a club that was also found in 2015. Uh, same as you, right? That's correct. Yeah. 15. Good year. Good year. Guess what? Right. American Bocce Company was founded in 2015. Is too. that right? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Big year for the sport. Uh, they are um, regular participants in a lot of the big tournaments, the ABC Open, the World Series of Bocce, Las Vegas, of course. Uh, and they also host their own open tournaments um, in Huntington. Have you rolled there? I have not. I'd like to get there uh, maybe this year. You know, that uh, two-year uh, hiatus from Hibachi and traveling. Yeah, uh, with the, uh, of course. So you started pick and choose and try to get two or three uh, tournaments out there, travel tournaments a year. So uh, it's hard to get, get to them all. You have some local tournaments, and then you have in-state tournaments, and then you have out-of-state tournaments. It's impossible to juggle right. them all. OK. Jeff rolls one with a little heat on it. Um, that one rolls out. That's an uncharacteristic miss on a right. pretty easy Polino. So maybe Holly's turning the tide a little bit. I picked up two points, 9-4 on the scoreboard. Yeah, and uh, Zach DeLuca just hit another really nice Rafa. There's another one that's heavy. Yeah, he might catch Polino. He does. Oh, boy, that tell you, that's uh... Hey. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> Especially in this game. In golf, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention, I, I, I heard Peter said he's a better golfer than you are. Oh, uh, he, brought, <laughs> he brought that up. Yeah, that's, you know what? He probably is. Yeah. That's a really nice roll there by Sal DeLuca. Shout out to you, Pete. <laughs> yeah, Pete Roberts. Uh, we played a few times. I, I had his number um, the few times we played, but last, yeah. last summer he came to Chicago. I took him to Cog Hill. Um, historic facility there. Tiger used to win a lot oh, back really? in the day at Cog. And uh, that's a good ball. Yeah, Pete Roberts definitely cleaned my clock on the golf course that day. Well, the more bocce I play, the less time I have for golf. That's right. Really nice ball by just sitting this to do here. Zach's been Zach's shooting, shooting really shoot. well. Let's see if I didn't give him the announcer yeah. jinx. Picked it clean. Beautiful shot. Okay. Okay, one for Holly there. So again, a little five. Too tight, yeah. Clawing back into it. One frame. Let me I'll take a, a quick minute to shout out one of our sponsors. Uh, Let's, let's go with the Romano Auto Dealerships. Uh, it's an automobile group here in Syracuse. And they specialize in Fords, uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, 
Mazdas, Toyotas, Subarus. We have several dealerships here in, uh, in Syracuse, so I, I want to give them a, a shout and say thank you very much for sponsoring uh, this tournament, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again in, in the future years. So, Romano, that means the winner's getting a new car? <laughs> right, we wish. <laughs> All right, let's see what Randy did with the opening ball there. Oh, tasty, right on it. And Carino. Nice shot by Frank. Let's see how that. About you, God. So. I think they're still rolling. I think ABC is going to have to roll another. Again, we see the spotting. Pete Rubito gives him the foot. Uh, Brad's up to roll. All right. We'll get a good close up of Brad here. Puts a little oomph on it. See what it looks like across the line. Got a bump. Oh, look at that. Bumps it on the Bumps right side. Right up. Good ball. Smart player. I think often a smart player considers the miss. Right. Right. What What happens if the ball doesn't go exactly where I want it to go? Okay. Here we got Jake Bauer. Really clean Rafa there by Jake. Back to back. Doesn't get much better than that. No. Holly's playing well, man. I'm telling you. It's, it's going to force yeah. Brad to roll again. Yeah, they're not. No. They're not losing. For lack of it. And they're composed. They are. Is that ball going to sit? That's going to go by. It was pulled, so it did hit the back wall. You see, you see certain teams and certain players, they've been around the game often. Mm -hmm. Nice and relaxed, composed. They know even though you get down, you're not out yet. You're, we've all been in situations where you know, you're down seven, eight, nine points, and all of a sudden, five frames later, uh, you're right back in the game. Yeah, and never too high, never too low, right? Yeah. That one might burn as yeah, well. Yeah, it might, it might. Look at this, gonna open the frame right up. Oh, wow, so now we really look like we're gonna you're have rolling. a game. Jake might hit this ball, right? Is that an option, you think? Oh, the two for one? Yeah. Bring the other one down. I don't know, uh, Michael and I were talking about this, this yesterday. This one scares, yeah. And uh, we do this a lot. Um, I might take a shot at it, because, but they're they not two, going to. Yeah, they have two balls back, right? Yeah. Maybe it depends what Randy does here. Yeah, it looks like it's a hard roll. I think that's good. Yeah. Oh, it's short. Oh. No. Okay, so they did not opt for the two for one on the, this ball's cruising, this ball's cruising. So two for Holly. You think that two for one ball was an option there, hit that ball? I do, yeah. I really do. That, that blue ball was uh, probably five feet away. Oh, they're gonna look at it. Yeah. Let's get a close up on the, on the measure here. Call is two. Got a game, nine seven, one frame. And court two, it looks like Babylon has uh, just picked up another two points there, up to three nothing against. Uh, the Sons of Italy out of White Plains in the uh, down in Westchester County. So Sons of Italy is uh, kind of new to the traveling bocce scene, right? Right, they are. They are, and uh, you know we appreciate them making the, the Great trip up. Myself. Come out of the uh, you know with the whole matrix of the this tournament. Uh, you know, Special Olympics has nine regions in Special Olympics here in New York. So what we did is we went out and looked for clubs in each of the nine regions in the state of New York. Yeah. And, and the uh, the team out of White Plains fills that Hudson Valley region of Special Olympics. 
So we dropped, brought teams in from Buffalo, the mm -hmm. Western region, the Genesee region over there near Rochester. And you have the Capital District over near Albany. And you move your way down south into the, the Hudson Valley and the Southern Tier, Long Island. Oh, that's, I so, think that's so. a testament to, you know, how much bocce has played in New York to be able to fill it out. I promise you that we couldn't have a tournament representing all the different Special Olympics regions in Illinois. Right. We'd have too many. I mean, we have uh, we have Southern Illinois, we have Rockford, uh, we have Chicago, we have North, North Shore, and we have West Suburbs. But there's a lot of, you know, as far as I understand, there isn't a, a scene in, in Champaign or Springfield or uh, Bloomington. So here's Zach. He's been shooting really well today. But he's going to he's gonna have to roll the last one. They, yeah, yeah. They roll too hard, huh? He's got that kind of setup that looks like he might be. He's going to be short. Taking the same line. Much better ball. Really nice ball there. Let's see if American Bocce Club can get the momentum back. And that might have been Pete Rubito's first miss of the game. Jeff O'Hare is holding two balls, I think. Or just one, maybe. A lot of deliberation. Critical point, critical frame. Looks like he's shooting. It looks like he's shooting. Ooh. Oh, just missed his left. Now he's going to have to settle and roll with the last ball. Now that front white ball, even though it was short, right? It's, it's like a. He's trying to determine how to get around it. Right, so you're, right. You're right. rolling the channel. Is there, do you, is there a play from? There, right, right. He's, he's struggling looking for it. Yeah. Yeah, he's hesitating, right? It's, uh, you know, sometimes that uh, ball that just doesn't quite make it there and it falls two or three feet short, it's out front. I think he's going to shoot yeah. again. I think he, he couldn't find a, a line that he wanted a point on. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he made the adjustment just to the right. Exactly. Split, uh, one point Holly. Let's make it a 9-8 game. Let's uh, see, just a touch inside. Wow, missed it by a hair, by he, a Jeff O'Hare. <laughs> in the first ball, he missed by a hair on the out, right? What's that? In the first ball, he missed to the outside by that right, much, right? exactly. By O'Hare. Mm -hmm. Nice little instant replay with the hardware, right? And this yeah, is a, yeah, what do you think? Good. What's it like driving behind the scene here? You know, Michael uh, Sheldon Sharkey uh, in his hardware here uh, brings the Bocce Broadcast Network to Waterside. It's wild, you he, know. It, you're sitting in the driver's seat, and I'm sitting here uh, making a fool out of myself. <laughs> but uh, to be able to call back the, uh, the instant replay. Uh, There's a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts. I think. Um, Good, good lead there by Randy. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important to just continue to get comfortable, to have more people comfortable with this because Michael Sheldon can't be everywhere at once. Right. Um, so he's taking the right approach, which is to uh, oh, split him. The right approach to me is, is letting the BBN scale by just getting the equipment in front of people and showing them how to do it. Here we'll watch Frank 
uh, probably taken either other approach and hit his target. Uh, unfortunately, he hit his target, which was right in the middle. So Bright has got to figure out uh, he's going to have to point. You know. Yeah. Well, he's got a ball in the vicinity, too, so. This one looks okay, but I think it's <laughs> a little short. I've got Michael the perfectionist on my left. Can't, can't help but get his greasy little grubs, grubby hands in there. <laughs> Didn't like the angle. <laughs> Michael, if you're gonna watch this thing grow, you're not gonna be able to touch everyone's Zoom. <laughs> We'll pause for another picture. A lot of photo ops in the booth this week. That's why I put on Thank the Special sir. Olympics New York hat. That's right. There you go. A oh, great group of people yesterday, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I spoke a little bit about Kayla and Mark that were here. Uh, I coached the two of them during the, the summer and wow, the program. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, Kayla's yeah. a great roller. Yeah, she really is. Really uh, great. And Mark was my partner, and uh, uh, we took her down. <laughs> you know, she's my uh, but she's got unified a, partner. In, that's in awesome. Special Olympics, right? And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, she's carried me, carried me quite a few times. Oh, Jake. Let's see how this yeah. roll ends up for him. Nice shot. Nice shot by Jake. Let's watch it again. Got a little, got some hand shaking the rails, so really clean. Rolling Randy. Outside in. Oh, that should do it. Put a little pressure. And I think Holly's going to take the lead here. What do you think? Here's Jake. He's going to roll in. There's a better ball. Look at that. Read that one well. Is that? It's going to be three. That's a three spot. That is three for Holly. I think back when it was nine to one, right? No, we said to just one yeah. point, right? Break the momentum. It's eleven nine. Games of fourteen. Um, is that a common score around here, or what made you decide to play the fourteen? Well, we were looking for a, a time constraints. Okay. And uh, the number of players we have on the court, going with the two v two v two uh, no walk. Kind of modeled the ABC Open. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed like the games uh, uh, ran on time. So, if, uh, knowing that, uh, you know, it's some, a lesson we learned last year with the uh, Ambassadors Cup, with the number of teams we had, we seemed like the uh, 2BT, the, the games ran longer than we anticipated. Sure. So, there was a combination of how much time you want for per game and how much uh, bots you can we offer each team. You, know, you played a 12, you played a 14, you played a 16. So we settled on the uh, on 14. On 14, uh, two groups of six. Uh, mm -hmm. Give everybody five games coming yeah. out of the group. Made it worthwhile for everyone to show right, up, right? Right. You know, if you have, if you have people to travel and they're going to spend the time overnight, uh, not everybody gets a chance to play on only only courts indoors. Yeah. So if you give them the, the uh, you know, their, their money's worth, so to speak. Uh, it feels like they, they go home with something, right? Yeah. Another near miss there by Zach. Um, you know, he, he, I don't think he should change much. He's missed a few now in a row, but they've all been right there. I like him. I like his form. I've never seen him play before. Um, I think he's a good roller. He's hit a lot of Rafa this weekend. Here's Sal. Be a little heavy. Yeah, I think he was looking to get to the wall a little earlier there. And this is uh, quickly Holly's last ball. So American Bocce Club could 
shake the momentum back into their favor. That's a nice ball. Well, look at the pressure that is. Wow. Isn't that big time? How look about that? Ball. Sits right on the ball, you know. And do they have a they have on ball back covering? Okay, Rubino's gonna shoot. He likes that corner. Or it's just the way the balls have ended up. Um, that was not the ball with covering the point. So he cleared the ball in the way, which, you know, they're gonna take another rip at it. This time he goes to the other corner. This is all gonna be about where the Polino ends up. Did that hit? Did that hit above the wall? We can look at the replay. I didn't I didn't see I didn't see it hit the back wood. I saw it hit the pipe. They're gonna come here. We're gonna take a look at the replay. I think it might have hit the, the the pipe. The pipe, which is clean. I heard I heard a clink. Pipe. Pipe. It hit the pipe, that's good. The pipe, so the it's pipe. clean, it's good. It's good? Yeah. Wow, who knew that this uh, broadcast booth would end up also doubling as the replay, but yeah. And I had an advantage. Yeah, exactly. Well, I actually had an advantage of my angle when I was I was watching the Pauline. I was concerned about where the where it was going to go, and the Paulino came up and hit the pipe. I'm sorry. I don't have a clock. Oh, I guess Rubito was hoping that ball was out of play. He was probably hoping the Paulino was out of play and the frame would be reset. Because now. Holly is sitting with their three points uh, that they need to win the game. And American Bocce Club is down to their last bullet. This is a fun look um, watching the, the on-court conference. We haven't seen a ton of conferencing, but that if there's ever a time for it, I think it's now. shot by here by Jeff. Call this the staying alive ball, the BG. You got two targets in there to roll into, right? It puts a little sauce on it. Oh, you missed it to the right, burned it. Oh. That's game ball over. game. How about that? That is game over. Uh, tough break. So uh, Holly digs themselves out of a hole and come all the way back. You know, we talked about that early in the game. Mm -hmm. You get that one frame. Yep. You know, and I think it was a sell. One, right. It was a sell by the other team. Yeah. And uh, Holly's, Holly, I mean, both teams played really well. That was probably the best game that I've watched in the broadcast booth so far. A little change in momentum, right? 7-1, 7-2, before you know it was 7-4. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good game. Fun, fun game to watch. Yeah, I hope uh, the folk, I hope we had some folks watching that live to right. kind of get an idea of uh, New York Bocce, the way that players approach the game. I think it's, uh, what I've noticed is it's pretty classic USBF influence Bocce, okay. but with a tinge more aggression than some of the California and Midwest teams. They, they, uh, whereas like Ohio is like aggression turned all the way up. Right. Um, you know, it, it, California is a, is a lot more. Finesse. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I, I, I like it. I like what you guys the do here. Combination here. here. Yeah, exactly, and I think that was on full display there. So kudos to both teams, but uh, eventually Holly took it in the end, and uh, 
we'll go on to the next. Let's see who we have up on the schedule next. All right. Thanks for hanging out in the booth with me. Absolutely. Dito. Who's up next? Uh, I'm going to step away here. Uh, so, if you like that, uh, please like it on YouTube. Like and subscribe to the channel. Help us grow the Bocce Broadcast Network. This is uh, something that we think has legs, and a lot more people would like to see Bocce on their televisions at home or at the bars that they play leagues in. So help us grow it. Cost nothing to like and subscribe. And that's all I got for this one. We'll see you in a minute for the next game. I'm gonna take a breather. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Get, uh, we're going to get the group standings up so uh, everybody can take a look at where the teams stand within their groups. Just give us a second to load it up. are uh, what are their records warming up here Dave's pulling up the you got it all right take a look at where these teams stand probably easier to see it on this screen Joe yeah so first of all Joe you want to uh, introduce yourself to the folks at home sure uh, Joe Malachi from uh, Tukulana Club and Galliano I'm playing for Galliano uh, in this tournament but I belong to both clubs in Rome, New York, and uh, you're good. Thanks. So happy to come in and uh, give some commentary. So these uh, we got Tokolana versus Short Street. All teams in Group A. You're not going to be able to. See. No. no. Okay. It's right here. No, it's right here. So Tokolana three and zero. Short Street also three and zero. Tokolana, Tokolana's got what? Plus 4, 18, a lot, uh, 29. Tokolana's plus 29 point differential. Short Street is plus 14, 25, 34. So coming into this, Short Street's in first. Right. All teams are 3 0 in the same group, so Short Street has the tiebreaker. They're plus 
30, what I say, 34? 34, yeah. To uh, Tokolana's 29. 29. Yep. So no, whoever no, wins, game. whoever wins this game, will most likely. Well, whoever, whoever wins this game's certainly in a good spot. Uh, Both veteran teams. They're not so. guaranteed to win the group, but no. Well, certainly would rather win the game than lose it, right? To to put yourself in that by position. Yeah. Uh, and then the other group we got. Galliano's at 0-3. Looks like uh, having a rough time of it. Yeah, having a rough time. <laughs> Joe's playing for Galliano. So. Uh, leading that group, the SMS from Seneca Falls. Mm -hmm. Billy and the crew. 3-0. We got Mount Vernon uh, right behind him, but SMS did just beat Mount Vernon 14-1. And we got the Holly Butch Club also at 2-1. So top three teams from each group will advance. Yeah, still a lot of work to be done. Yep. First, uh, whoever wins the groups will have a bye. And then the two lower seeds, depending on how the seeds work out overall, uh, three and six will play each other unless three and six are in the same group, in which case three will play five and four will play six. In a single elimination. In a single elimination. So let's go back to our... game broadcast here these guys are just throwing warm-up balls uh, looks like short street has red balls so we are going to assume they'll be the red team and tokalana will be green joe you know all these guys pretty well right i do um, and I've had the occasion to see uh, this Lockport team uh, quite a bit as well, uh, especially the year they won it in Cleveland. They won the Cleveland Cup uh, not too long ago. So uh, some veteran players on both teams, and I uh, expect a lot of shot making and um, some good strategic calls as well. It's going to be a good, a fun game to watch. Want to introduce our players for Short Street on this side? Let's start with them. Let's see what we got here. We got... Mike Seraph right here. Yep. I, I can't see it, sir. <laughs> I, I'll do the Tukulana side. Okay. We got Mike Seraph, and I believe that's JJ Balala for Short Street. I will correct myself if I'm wrong in a second. It's Paul Lewis nice hit and on stick the from PL3. Our Tokolana roster is actually not accurate now. We had a, a player subbed out. Right, Joe Bart was playing with them. Joe uh, Bartolotti was playing with them uh, last night uh, due to unavail unavailability of uh, Paul Lewis III, but uh, he's here now, Paul Lewis III. Uh, otherwise, the team is essentially the same. You have Paul Kalikia, uh, Russell Johnson, and uh, Mason Cole. Yes, Paul Lewis III stepping up to shoot again. Russell Johnson on the left there. Thing about Paul is, is uh, sometimes he can translate his hits into points, and he did just it like that. <laughs> so, uh, he's been on some World Series winning teams, and uh, he was also on the team that won the Cleveland Cup last year. So, uh, Paul's a very experienced player with a lot of pedigree. A lot of firepower between these two teams. Absolutely. There's actually Paul's father, Paul Jr., that played on the Lockport team that won the Cleveland Cup. So there's a, a connection there as well. So that is J.J. Valala for Short Street. Coming in kind of hard ball with the bump and four. Oh, looked like he was going for the bump and replace there. Just missed. So two balls back for Tokolana. And do they have two points there? Uh, 
Hard to tough, tell from, tough our, to tell from our, our vantage point. So it looks like Russell's got a good point there. I think that's two. Russell with a deliberate stroke, and it looks like. Well, it looks like he bumped his other point out, so it looks like they had two and they got two. So good start for Tukulana. Joe Peterson of Santa Cruz Falls, our dapper official for this game. Yeah. So as a representative, the Galliano Club, which is right down the street from Tokelana, right? It's a brisk walk. Is there, uh, <laughs> I know there used to be a sort of a rivalry between the two, right? Uh, yeah, well, there, there still friendly, is. Friendly. You know, friendly, yeah, absolutely. And you got a lot of people that are member of, members of both clubs, you know, so uh, we patronize each other quite a bit in our tournaments and, um, you know, have a lot of respect for each other, absolutely. Bill Rosenberg here. I think he might be a little strong. First ball for Short Street. Did look a little strong on oh, the no. screen, but yeah. wow, he was able to stop it. Yeah, slowed down pretty quickly. Yeah. It's a good ball. Paul Kalecchia, president of the Tokelana Club. Yeah. He's another one that can replace balls as well. First shot of the game. First shot of the, oh no, they did uh say it's their second game of the day. They yeah. They uh, beat up on us the first game. I was largely my fault. I had a, a terrible game. I think I missed my first five shots. Well, you know, they make it hurt when you miss. Yeah. So, you know, they're a tough team to play against. Yeah, and, uh, not the right team to have a bad game against. Yeah. And uh, Mason show, showing why right yeah. there. Mason Harrison. Mason uh, is a good two-way player. You know, uh, showing it there on the pointing side, but he also can hit the ball um, as well. He can be a first hitter on a team. So I'm shaking the fence. I think that's what makes this Tukulana Club team so tough. They got a lot of two-way two players that can hit and point. So let's see. We got a two balls to one advantage for Lockport. <coughs> I'm curious to see what they do here. was okay, but it just stayed straight. He needed it to come right just a bit. Outside with the ball advantage there, I think I would have shot that. What do you think? Uh, I didn't see any balls back. It's tough to see from our vantage point to see who has balls back, but I think that Lockport did have the advantage there. I think they had a ball behind it. Um, I guess they're going to do it now. And it looks like it's going to work out for them. I wonder uh, why they wouldn't have done it the first time, but yeah. I agree with you. I, I probably would have given the ball advantage. And the fact that they had a ball behind, uh, that probably would have been the call. But these guys know how to win, so. <laughs> and it looks like last side, he's got the point. Paul makes the point, yep. Just barely missed his own ball, but uh, came in for the point. It was a good shot. Yeah. Not a fantastic start for Paul. We expect him to play a little better than that. So, Blackport's got some options here as well. So they could, they've got that ball that's short that they could maybe hit and uh, come in for two. Uh, they could hit Paul's ball out or they can point. So it'll be interesting to see what they choose to do here. Looked like they were trying to hit that short ball in. Uh, just missed it. So Tukumana comes away with another point. <laughs> Looks 
looks like uh, Russell Johnson's going back to the well, putting the Paulino right back where he had it to start the game. Ball from puts a competitive point. Yeah, a little bit behind Paulino, so Short Street will have a chance to steal it if they want to, but mm -hmm. I'd say it's about uh, just over 18 inches or so. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're lining up to hit it. JJ taps his leg a couple times before he shoots. And yeah, misses wide. Wide right. Wide right. I know Russell loves playing on these courts. But you can see why. Great courts for pointing and for shooting. I think uh, if you're a pointer, you really have to enjoy playing on a faster court and a slower court, honestly. Um, but you're right, and Russell does. Courts are consistent, too. Absolutely. Joe Peterson with the measure. All right, calls Lockport in. Thanks, Joe. So I'd say it's about 13, 14 inches. Well, not anymore. Yeah, all three. <laughs> didn't stick that one. No, he didn't. Good hit. Looks like Lockport's going to retain the point. Yeah. So that's two balls down for each team. Uh, Lock the short street. Is going to have uh, Lockport is Short Street. Correct. For those who are sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've been referring to him as Lockport. That's how I know him. But yeah, yeah. Short Street Botch. Their correct. shirts say Lockport. Um, so they're going to have the hammers going to. Oh, I guess Tokolana had the point. So never mind. Tokolana will retain the hammer. That ball's <laughs> short, I think. Oh, it's very deceiving from our monitors. It looked like it was clearly. Poor point, but um, yeah, last ball for JJ. Uh, looks uh, Tokolana. Looks like it's going to be a good point. Might jump out to uh, a big lead. See if Paul stick this ball. There's a, quite a bit of action on these backboards, so if he hits it solid, it does have a chance to come back. Well, it, it is in line with possibly hitting the Paulino, though, too. Well, he hit it out clean. Looks like Tokolana's going to have two points in there, I think. Yeah, it's two points for Tokolana. Last ball for Russell. It's going to be 6 nothing Tokolana. Right. They've been a force in this tournament so far, and they're continuing their dominance here in the early stages of this game. Excuse me, Joe. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, I know you uh, you got a big Super Doubles tournament coming up at Galliano, right? At the Galliano Club, yeah. That's uh, every year. Uh, New York Sash Windows is a sponsor. Uh, I, um, <laughs> I don't have any information about the dates. I can get that for you. Um, I think it's but there uh, are still it's like May 4th through 7th right. or something, right? I think uh, there's some slots still open for midweek. I know there's a lot of out-of-town teams that are going to be coming in uh, to play the Saturday uh, slots, Friday, Saturday slots. But midweek there is uh, some slots available, I believe. So if you're interested, uh, you can reach out to that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's gonna a very well-attended event. Uh, you got a lot of teams that are coming from out-of-town. Usual suspects from Cleveland and Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. So it was a great event last year, a big event, uh, a big money event as well. So 
if you're interested. That's a big miss for Bell. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, that's not that's unlike him to have a, a, a point like that, certainly. Correction on the distance, still a little bit of room there. <coughs> Mason will point, I imagine. Mason has a real smooth release right on the ground. Yep, gets it nice and low. That's the way you really want to point the ball, get as low as you can. Same way he shoots, too. Shoots yeah. it right along the ground. Mm -hmm. so he's got a good finger roll, that's for sure. <clears throat> John Valella, last ball of the frame for Short Street. Looks long, but he's going to take that Pauline. Too, he yeah. might have he might have brought his team in for two there. Yeah, Russell says they got two. Yeah, that was a, a gutsy call there. Uh, if he goes long, then uh, you're looking at another easy frame for Tupolana. So yeah, I'm not sure he wanted to do that. <laughs> Two balls for Tokolana. Paul's going to shoot something. Oh, Paul's going to roll. Paul getting nice and low as well. It looks like he's got a good speed, but he's a little off to the left. Yeah, the Paul left. hasn't. He's been struggling. Yeah. Hasn't quite gotten the roll yet. As a shooter, sometimes it takes a little longer to get the. Absolutely. The roll down. You know, botch is a game of, of rhythm, as you know anyone who plays it knows, and so it's tough to get into a good rhythm when you're hitting. And then suddenly called on to point. That'll be two points for Short Street. Yeah. Surprised, uh, little surprised Paul didn't shoot something. Again, from our vantage point, I wish I had, I could see a little bit better at the end of the court uh, to see where the other balls are placed. Uh, I didn't know if he had any balls in, in back that would have been able to be good points had he hit the Pauline, but, you know, because I thought maybe the Pauline would be in play there. Might have to stand up and <laughs> start walking around. Yeah, it's a long court if you want to. Yeah, so, uh, all right, so it's a, well, it's a two-foot point there. Yeah, pin high. Good point. A little too, too far out to shoot. Russell's ball looks real good. I got to say, even if it was an eight-inch point, I think Russell has the confidence that he could beat pretty much any point out there. So. Yeah, he tried that a couple <laughs> times against us. Right. So, well, you like to have that confidence in Bravado in your first point. Taps his leg. Nice shot. Hits it clean there. Point's still good. Let's see it again. Good for him, got his release out there, right towards the target. That's a good solid. shot. A little bit of uh, air under that ball yeah. as nice. it came down the court. Yeah. Not quite straight along the ground as some of these other shooters. I can be watching. See Paul pointing for the first time, see how he does. Looks like he might be a little short as well. Yeah. Well, it only takes one ball, Mike, as you know. So <laughs> we'll see how Paul handles this one here. See if he can create some problems for Short Street. Yeah, Short Street's going to have two balls back. And if this ball doesn't come in, which it's not going to, no. they're no. going to have the point. And they got about four, over four feet to come in. Yeah. Well, this will get them right back in the game. They can put some good points on this. Yeah, it could be 6-5. Five five, I think it's five two, right? They've got a ball on the backboard. Is it five two? It's five two. Oh, I got the score wrong. Okay. I got the score wrong. Well, it's gonna be close. I don't know. 
from where I'm sitting, I favor the Tukalana for the second yeah. point, but it's tough to tell. Looks like Tukalana from here. <clears throat> And that one looks a little Ball's strong. cooking. Tokalana might have just dodged yep. a bullet. He dodged a big bullet there. 5-2, or 5-3. Call from Although, the ref you know, is two. Although, you know, he's calling two. I don't know, they might want to measure that. Yeah, if I'm Tokalana, they'll call for a measure there. But they're going to uh, go with Joe's call. Mm -hmm. Give him two, five, four. Good frame from short straight. Get back in it. Paulino toss. Ball should come back in a little bit. Great ball. Great ball. Pin high. It's about eight inches out. Yeah, pin high, a little separation. That's uh, easy. Well, Paul made that one look easy. Oh, it's got a little heat. John doesn't it. like it. Bill's not going to like that either. That's the yeah. second time in two frame that he's done that. Throw him under the backboard. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that from someone as experienced as him. No. I don't expect to see that a third time. He's forcing Short, Short Street to use their third ball. Huh? John doesn't like that one either. Well, it gives him the point. But you're right. It uh, leaves a lot of room for Mason Harris. Mm -hmm. Looks like Mason's ball. got the point, yep, yeah, absolutely. Danger is if that gets too close to Paulino, now there's there's more than enough room there. I think there's about a five to six inch separation there. So yeah, and I, I think being down to their last ball, I don't think they risk a hit here. Yeah, it's a close game. No need to do anything crazy. Although, mm. yeah, that ball doesn't do them much good. Yeah, Short Street struggling from this side to get competitive points in. One interesting thing about the no walk, you know, four on four, no walk. Basically, you have to have two good teams. Two Bas good, two, two, good two double solid teams. doubles teams. <laughs> That's yeah. right, yeah. So it's an interesting format. Not sure how crazy I was about it, but, you know, it is, have you it played is the tournament. No walk before? Uh, yeah, we've had a couple of no walk tournaments at the Tukalana Club, and yeah. uh, they're not really popular. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tukalana yeah. likes the, the kind of traditional rules well we do we have a couple of leagues during the week um, where you know one is uh, you know a uh, backboard dead international rules uh, league and then the other is uh, is you know uh, backboard live so we play it both ways but if you've been to the World Series yeah you know it's 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 a live backboard situation there yeah double elimination a lot of tournaments now are I like this round robin. I like it because it gives the the uh, participants a chance to to feel like even though maybe they didn't perform well in the tournament, at least they've got a chance to come and play some games and uh, you know meet some of the other competitors and you know it's it's a, it's a, a good experience regardless of outcome. You know, so yeah, and it's a little more forgiving. Right. You can have a bad game and right, right. Still, you can have a couple bad games. Yeah. Still, uh, so. get it together. That's a tough break. It was a nice hit. Uh, the ball came right back to where it was in its original position. So Short Street will have to make a decision here. So 
So this ball's got a chance. That is an outstanding ball. Yeah, that is an outstanding ball. I didn't see who rolled that. I think that was Mike. Was it Mike? Paul no. oh, Lewis, so a couple inches separate that ball from the Tokelana ball behind it. Yeah, I, I think he'll go for the hit. Pick it clean and get it to stay in a spot where it's not a point. Great and he, shot. And he did wow, pick. somehow. Yeah. Didn't touch anything. Yeah, he hit that ball uh, right where he wanted to on the right side, and it uh, deflected clean, and it's just a, a great shot. By about as well play. as that could have gone. Absolutely. Yeah. Ball number three for Short Street coming down the court, and I think this one's got a chance That's as well. Another good one. I just needs another. Right, he beat the point again. Sure. A little bit more separation. It's in front of Paulino. It could combo on Paulino if Paul shoots it. Paul doesn't care though, he's gonna shoot it, see what happens. Wide right. The rare miss for PL3. Yeah. You know, and that really shows a lot of confidence in his teammate, you know, knowing that even if he misses here, uh, Russ always has a chance of, of beating this point here. Uh, Russell so. can shoot too, we haven't seen it yet, but. Yeah, Russ uh, was a bowler, and uh, he's got that underhand, underhand uh, Spock if he needs it. But needs Paulino but here touches it over to their ball. Great, great, great shot. So that's nearly missed everything. You know, that's the the team play or the team concept that I was talking about there. You know, Paul felt like even if he if he wasn't able to hit there, there's there's confidence in Russell's ability, and, and that confidence uh, in him paid off there with another really good shot. But frame's not over. Yeah, one ball remaining. It'll be JJ's ball. I'd say the call here is to try to move that front ball in. Looks like he's coming too far to the left and I think if he started that way, it might have come in, but it looks like he started from the middle of the court and just kind of faded towards the wall and uh, stayed there, so. So one more for Tokelana. And I'm being tapped on the shoulder. I think that means I gotta go play, so. Alex Garrett, if you're listening, please report for duty. Well, good luck, Mike. Thanks, Joe. I'll go find you uh, a broadcast partner. Thanks. Well, at least somebody that can run the computer side of things here. <laughs> Mason putting it in the middle of the court and putting a really great ball. Start a little behind. We'll give Short Street a chance to uh, lay on it if they choose. I am. Good hit and a really great bounce for short straight. Action off the wall, ricocheted back to the uh, to their ball, and it's going to be a, a great live for them. Let's see if Paul can convert. Hello. What's up, Joe? Not much, Alex. Welcome to the broadcast. Shift change. That's right. <laughs> well, duty calls yeah. for Mike, so we'll see. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing great. How you doing today? Good, Alex. Good to Oops. see you again. Same here. Uh, what, Tokelana turned uh, Galliano? That's your story? Uh, no, uh, I belong to both clubs, yeah, yeah. So, as most Tukulana members do, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, dual membership going on there. Uh, and obviously friends with a lot of the guys down uh, at the Galliano, so. All right, so I'm jumping into a game that Tukulana uh, looked like they jumped out to a big start. They did. Uh, short streets trying to claw their way back in. Uh, 
The point they just rolled in will help with that effort. Obviously the concern here is putting a little bit too much on your ball and burning it on the backboard. And I'd say that the Pauline right now is maybe about a foot and a half, two feet off the backboard. Here's Mason, he's been pointing well today. I think, he's, it. I think he's got it. He's walking it down and he's got the point. That's, that's, a, that's great a great, ball. great ball. And to keep it live. Uh, very, very good effort by Mason Hurston. Nice point. I think the key on those walls is to uh, trust that the walls are going to eventually push him back. Don't get to them too early. Yeah. I mean, these courts play pretty straight. Uh, but if you do get to the walls, they will turn on you. Um, well, that's that, a nice shot. It's a great know. hit and very unfortunate result there for them. Right. Uh, okay, so short street, we've got Mike, John, JJ, and Bill. It right. uh, looks like over here is Mike. Mike and John, right? John's Correct. got the... Uh, in the, with the glasses. Yep. Oh, no, uh, John. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's, Mike's rolling right now. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Looks like uh, he's got a competitive ball there, too. Uh, slow down a little? Uh, no, it looks like he burned it. Okay. Yeah. And here's uh, Paul Kalikia. Correct. President of the Tukulana Club. Doesn't Try look like that one's going to make it. So. so we'll call that one Tokelana? Correct. Yeah. Okay. They got a fortunate bounce on a, on a good hit by John from short straight. Looks like the placement here is tight to the wall and very deep. On the left side. In front, couple feet short. Couple feet short, and uh, but there is room there. Um, if, if Short Street elects to go to the wall, they can get around the, the ball on that side as long as they're late to the wall. And how are you rolling so far this tournament, Joe? Uh, I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so. so yesterday I was pointing, and I, thought, I felt that I was pointing pretty well. Uh, but we, uh, we tried to make uh, a change to get something started, and I was hitting today, and uh, did pretty well. But uh, teams just not, uh, not having the success that we would have liked. And that's a a really good ball by Short Street. Yeah, way to keep it in there. Uh, over on the other court, uh, we just had a final Holly Bocce Club. Oh, sorry, that was earlier. That was Holly Bocce Club 14-11 over American Bocce Club, the game before this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you... Okay. That was a great game. Yeah, I think those are the uh, two... Uh, I don't know if they're the top teams. I think SMS is at the top of that, but I think that they're they're certainly in the running to make uh, the playoffs here. Hmm. So that ball had some uh, potential, but uh, just didn't break enough to touch the Tukulana ball forward. Uh, as you're able to see, it touched it uh, just on the left side enough to bunch it out and uh, and roll into the short street ball. Uh, Paul's calling for point here. That's going to be a really tough hit. So. A little early on the wall. Yeah. 
little danger there is being early, right? So I think he's trying to come into their front ball there, move it up a little bit, and he was a little early to the wall. And this ball is not, not cut out of the middle. Yeah, yeah, really short. So, so well, short street's got a chance to again to get back into this game. Okay, and then I, I did get the correct score from the, the game on the other court. It was also a 14-11 game. That was uh, Sons of Italy over Babylon Bocce Club. So congrats to Sons of Italy, Sal Capello and those folks. They, uh, they're they new to the traveling competitive bocce scene. Uh, yeah. Good to see them get a win there. Yeah, great to see new faces. You know, want to see the sport grow. And, uh, you know, I think if we can get teams here, we'll keep them here because it's a great game. Uh, it's, it's it's a lot of fun, and um, even if even if you you're not doing well at these tournaments initially, there's enough uh, other things going on here in terms of, of the social aspect. Yeah, that you really want to come back. You know, you big know. part of it is uh, seeing the same, you know, the relationships that are yeah, built absolutely through the sport. You know, no matter what your background is, we all have something in common, which is we love this game. Right. Um, which makes it really easy to form friendships and bonds. Yeah. So it kind of looks like the way this uh, frame is playing out, it's just a really tough Polino to get to. It is. And so oh. we're seeing a lot of sort of maybe overly safe attempts here. Although I'm wondering if that ball uh, just to the right of the Pauline by Short Street is close enough for a measure. I'm not sure. I know that uh, John had given him that spot earlier. Um, Well, we got, they put one on the board already. Just so. one, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, so from our vantage point, it's tough to see. Um, someday, maybe they'll give us an elevated position to watch these games. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a lifeguard station, Yeah, yeah right? absolutely, right. Yeah. So. So we'll see Short Street uh, lead off. And uh, Mike uh, has been long here on previous attempts, but it looks like he's made the correction. And, uh, it's a little bit more competitive than he has been, but I'm sure he's probably not real happy with that. Earlier in the first game, I. Uh, was in the booth for Tokalana. Mason pointed the entire game, and then he shot in his last ball of the game. It was his first hit of the game, and it was uh, uh, for knocked out the, the point that Lou had scored for Troy ICC, gave his team four walk-off win. So right. uh, impressive to see that that switch from, right. from roller to, to hitter that late in the game and have the confidence to do yeah, it. Yeah, I was, I was telling Mike earlier, uh, you know, that's what makes this Tukulana team so tough is, is that you've got guys that can switch and very easily, I mean, if, if uh, you know, Mason and Paul decided they wanted to switch and Paul was pointing and Mason was hitting, I don't think they'd really skip a beat, honestly. And uh, Hey, Joe, while I have you here, um, sure. I've never been to the Galliano Club. Tell me a little bit about it and some of our uh, folks back in Chicago who are seeing more of the bocce world. Okay. Galliano is like one of those classic men's Italian clubs that you'd probably see out of a movie, you know, like Goodfellas or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, both in in the structure of the building and, and the, the, the people that you'd find inside. Um, there's uh, two courts there, stone, uh, stone dust courts. Um, and uh, uh, in the back and you can be sure that if, if you're going to a tournament at the Galliano Club uh, Jimmy Guy who's the president there uh, also is a fantastic cook so you're always going to get a good meal even though uh, you know uh, uh, if you're not doing well in the tournament you know you're at least going to be eating well <laughs> so um, that's an added bonus you know uh, I, was, I was asking some uh, some other members uh, 
before I came here because I was playing in the tournament last week, and they said uh, that we have a sign that says, you know, Galeano Club established 1932. But I saw another member saying established 1926 or something. I was like, well, which is it? <laughs> I said, well, you know, there might be some members that or uh, they believe that it was established in 1920. But either way, it's been around for, for you know, uh, a very long time. And um, Yeah, it depends. Maybe the original establishment was a couple Italian guys sitting around. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hanging out. But, uh, yeah, no. Drinking it's, some it, wine. It's a, a very uh, a collegial club, you know, uh, a lot of. Uh, you do any. Uh, work in the community there work with anyone else around there yeah well, well just like uh most of the clubs in 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 rome rome's a, a small city but uh you know whenever there's a, a need for uh, a contribution whether it be a sponsoring a baseball team or uh, some other youth or organization or uh, scholarships and that sort of thing um, all the clubs step up uh, the galliano and, and tucumana are no different in that in that regard Anything else Rome is known for, other than good bocce? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we have uh, a Revolutionary War uh, fort that was r built right in town that was played a, a pretty important role in the uh, Revolutionary War. So if you come, uh, there's a, a federal uh, uh, federal park uh, that is the, the fort that you can visit. Um, Rome's a quiet little town. Um, we have a sister city, uh, Utica, you might have heard of. Um, yep. And uh, they've uh, had a revitalization there, and uh, they built um, a hockey complex that is um, attracting some worldwide events. That's a great ball. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's in. Um, so, you know, you, if you look at the Utica Rome area, uh, the, the hockey center, they just announced they're, they're gonna actually going to be sponsoring the Women's uh, World Championships next year. Um, awesome. And so there's, there's a lot of exciting things going on there. In, in, in the wow, look at that shot. That's. F maybe oh, Dave can help wow. Us. Well, that's. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Looks like three, maybe? We'll take a look at the replay here. Yeah, absolutely. How about that? The hit and stick, hit and then the, stick. the red ball rolled out just enough um, to hang on to three. Yeah. So, well, when you got big hitters like Paul, I mean, you know, there's a lot of action on, on uh, the balls that are hit. So um, the one thing I've noticed about these courts is uh, you know the, the the backboards, sideboards, very active, um, and so um, just because you hit a ball doesn't mean that it's necessarily out of play. Right, right. <laughs> you can do a lot, uh, and you, and that's when you know you start thinking about your speed on your on your shooting and, mm -hmm. and different angles, and um, it really adds another layer other than just see ball hit ball. Right. Okay, that's a good ball by Shore Street. Stop the bleeding a little bit. Right. Gabe had mentioned that they're testing out uh, a, a, a new backboard. Um, I think it's on the other court. Um, hey, but look at the, let's watch that one again. Yeah, another uh, hidden stick. That's a great ball. And that looks like that's JJ. And that's Paul Lewis again with a hit. I mean, he's, that's probably his third or fourth of the game where he's done that. Great ball. Yeah. Well, that one came in yeah. too quick for me to keep up with. It was a miss. It was a miss, yeah. yeah. So, so now Short Street is on tilt. Yeah, they're hanging on. Good recovery here. Um, not a great leaf, but good shot. Yeah, we're going to need this ball to be competitive in order to stay in the match. And 
Yeah, it looks like he's about eight inches away on that in front. And we'll see. Probably Paul Lewis again. And he comes through again, stuck another ball. And I think. Uh, it's game. That's that is game. game. Wow. Yeah, we'll watch that game winner one more time. Another hit and stick to win the game. Got into a nice little groove there at the end, huh? Yeah. Great ball. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Tokelana looks like the team to beat. Yeah, they wow. uh, they are hot for sure. Uh, and like I said, they've got a lot of really good two-way players, and um, yeah, they're they're going to be a tough out for sure. So that final score is 14 to five, Tokelana over Short Street. Uh, well, it was a pleasure stepping in for the final few frames with you, Joe. All right, thanks, Good to chat with yeah. you. No, it was, it was great. It was great. Um, and if uh, if anybody you know out there is listening, I, I, I had did have some discussions with Gabe about this. Um, we've been experiencing uh, experimenting a lot with different backboard strategies to try to deaden the backboard. Um, you know, we've got. Uh, He's telling me that we've got a global global audience here today. So if there's any engineers out, out there that can work on um, you know walls that, that can deaden that 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 ball, uh, we'd welcome some input because you know I tried pretty much everything. You know at, at the Tukalana Club we've got uh, boards with with uh, with carpeting on it. Um, here I know that they've got some smart pads on it. Um, there were. Uh, some boards that we tried to use, um, the material that you see at a supermarket for, um, uh, you know, where, the, where you, you put your groceries on there. And, and so uh, in, in any event, uh, you know, we've, we've tried that material. Just can't seem to find something to dead it. So deaden, deaden these walls. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, I wish I could help you there. I don't have an answer for it. <laughs> no, uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe but, nobody has an answer, you know. Right, maybe right. it's just the, 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 the physics of the game are, are such that you're just never going to get a, a substance that's going to stop these balls. But I, I do like the idea of crowdsourcing a solution, Yeah, right? so, yeah. yeah, so if you're out there and you're interested <laughs> in, uh, you know, trying to figure out a way to do it, uh, you know, reach out to, to Gabe or I, and uh, we'd love to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. Well, thanks, Alex. I don't know if uh, we up. I might be playing. All right. Well, that like, once again, Tokelana wins uh, to I think improve the record of four and zero in group play. Um, means that you know they will most likely be in a you know the top half of the bracket moving into bracket play later. Mm -hmm. Joe, I wish you success in your next game. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see who we got next. All right. Sounds great. to about the Palazzo tournament? Yes, yeah, that's my tournament. Uh, so when is that tournament? Uh, September 8th and 9th. Um, it's a gold and a silver division. So the 7th is Thursday night. Um, so the silver side of it will start on Thursday night. And for the gold members, there's going to be courts open for practice and like a welcome thing uh, at the at Palazzo. There's 10 courts, right? I'm sorry, it's 10, 10 courts. courts, yeah. Uh, International standard, 86 by 13, and uh, and then group play um, in the bracket play uh, over two days. So I think it's a minimum of six or seven games per team. Um, we got a lot of sponsors, a lot of cash prizes. It's a really great tournament. A lot of action. So uh, is it still open? It is. Okay. So yeah, we're about. Um, do I have to go on the website to do it? Yeah, 35 out. Of, well, or, or you can register. I, I should have brought some. Sheets, sheets with me, but um, you know, if, if you're interested, I'll, I'll get you Yeah, no, I'd love to.
Isn't that funny? Okay, we're going to jump right back into it with another game. This time, uh, you know, bear with me while I get everything set up. We have Oh, they just told me who's who. Uh, Dave, they just told me who's who's who on the color, and I already forgot. So Holly is white. Holly's going to be green. Okay. Just getting started, Holly and Galliano. Yeah, if you were if you're hanging around and still listening, um, Joe from Galliano was just in the booth with me, and then he just now he's playing. We're about eighty percent of the way through bracket or through uh, the round robin. This is the New York State Bocce Championship. 12 teams from 12 regions. I'm gonna reset the score. Get our cameras in place. And we're gonna keep bringing you live bocce actions. Oh, and look at this. Dave has uh, brought back in the uh, overhead cam, so that's a flying camera. Dave, I've got Dave Hoffman in the booth with me, Digital Dave, experimenting with the overhead. Um, you're gonna see a lot of bald spots in that. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Get that Polino down there and switch back. So okay. was that the first frame or was that a warm up frame? I, I lost track. So did I. We'll find out soon. <laughs> okay, so on Holly, we'll get the rosters in there for you. You'll see that's, uh, uh, we got Randy Bauer, uh, Jake Bauer, his son. Now we have Sal and Zach DeLuca. Uh, Sal and Zach DeLuca are the two tall gentlemen. Zach, the younger one with the glasses. And Sal, uh, the older gentleman with the glasses. And rolling with them is Randy and his son Jake. Randy's in the wheelchair. And Jake is somewhere. Uh, we just watched Holly win a really good game against Mount Vernon. We'll see how they do against Galliano. For Galliano. What's his name that just shot? For Galliano, that's uh, John Rodriguez uh, rolling with Nico Fox. Nico is 14 years old, the youngest competitor here, uh, rising star. Uh, it'd be fun to watch him. And then on the other side, uh, we have Joe and Fred Fox. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's actually Fred Fox rolling with Nico. So Fred and Nico, father and son. And... On the other side will be uh, John Rodriguez, goes by Johnny Rod around here, uh, playing with Joe, Joe Maleche, who was just in the booth with me. So that's Galliano and Holly. And. Al, you want to hand me that keyboard so I can do the instant replay for you? I'm trained up on instant replay. Alex is not. It's not too hard. But Alex is trained up on switching all these cameras, and I'm not. So we're, we're tag teaming it here. Piecing it together. I think everyone got their practice in. I'm guessing that this is the first roll of the game. Sure looks like it. Randy Bauer. And 
at Bocce Labs? Is that the? You can go to it, yeah. Uh, or is that where the world is? Yeah. Okay. I'll wait for the next. It's going to be another point, and yeah. so you can click it now. All right, we'll take a look over the top uh, using the added the ball technology coming in. Whirl. So that's kind of fun. You'll get to see nice little overhead there. It, it shakes a little bit because it's on a, a cable over the court. Yeah, but it is an interesting um, perspective to get the overhead, especially on a tight measurement, uh, which this one is. They're actually calling for a measurement. Um, and we're working on some technology to identify the Polino and the ball and take some automated measurements. But as you can see, looking at this picture here, the Polino is not super visible even on the screen. It's easy for the human eye to see it. But since the, the court surface is gray and the Polino is silverish gray, there's not a lot of contrast there. So ideally, we'd have yellow Polinos, but uh, I'm told that those would fly pretty far. Yeah, yeah, the, the ceramics do fly, unfortunately. Oh, we'll get a little broader look of this setup. Watch the balls roll in. Here's Joe. Joe did a nice job uh, in the booth just recently. little chip might help oh it doesn't chip so it stays outside I means Galliano's gonna be rolling again these games are played at 14 this is day two of the New York State bocce championship We're sitting at uh, Waterside Club in Phoenix New York Dave's first time at Waterside um, I think it's safe to say you've been impressed with your visit yeah as soon as I can find a computer that doesn't have all these cameras hooked up maybe I'll join and then fly mm -hmm. over here uh, for my weekends. Don't tell Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we got some friends watching at home. Um, this live stream has been ongoing, so anytime it's, what is it, set up? Oh, you know what? We have a tournament um, back in Chicago today, so people are probably preparing for that. That's at the Wright B Cider. Let's get an overhead here, huh? I will watch Randy's ball. Oh, that's a beaut. Hey, not only is it a beaut, but it was a beautiful transition to uh, see the, the benefit of the overhead camera. And they're pointing another one in. Let's this see. Is, that looks pretty good, too. That might roll oh. the Polino back. Oh, oh no. it doesn't. OK, so that's going to be two. And they've got one more ball. And we'll stay on the overhead for this one, too. It'll be coming in on the left-hand side of your screen. This is Jake Bauer rolling. It's running out of gas. I think that's in. I did, too. Oh, yeah. That's a good ball. What do I know? You know more than me, that's for sure. <laughs> that's all four for Holly. And uh, I'll go ahead and update that. I think we had the colors wrong, but you know what? The balls are close in color, and the team name is all that matters. So we'll keep that, keep that updated for you. This is Sal, Sal DeLuca. Uh, okay. It's a little short. I'd say. I think uh, these players got cold. They were hanging around waiting to play, and they've got to dial in. They're pointing. Might take a frame or two. Now it's much better. That one's much better. This might be a shot here, so we'll see. We're gonna watch. See if there's any lag. We experienced some lag with this camera yesterday. Oh, didn't see it there. I saw it. It, it just happened really fast. <laughs> okay. All right, so that was a shot, and now we're pointing in. That's looking pretty good. Might hit the Polino. Ooh. That's it on the wrong side. It's a good opportunity for Zach. Put one in front, be defensive with it, try to mitigate the frame. It does leak out a little. Um, so Galliano is going to have a chance to 
right back in this game. Yeah, they might rack up some points here. That ball's looking pretty good. We'll watch it cross the halfway line, and Dave, you saw it off his fingertips. He just knew, huh? I think he did. And another one rolling in. That's three. This is Nico Fox. Ooh. Uh, that's a miss, but I don't think it's going to affect much. I think that's three. Looks like three for Galliano. Oh, we got a chicken foot on the court. Always good to see. All right, Polino's going long and left. Uh, this is a really nice point by John Rodriguez. And we're going to get a chance to watch shooter Jake in action. Did somebody say how old Jake is? He's one of the younger players here, isn't he? He is, um, I think he's college age. College age. 22 maybe, something around there. We'll fact check that later. <laughs> we'll just say it with confidence and then it becomes true, right? <laughs> This is Randy Bauer after Jake's miss. The balls are uh, difficult to tell the difference on the screen here. They both have a lot of white in them. Um, just keep an eye out. Galliano's balls have more of the pattern with the green and red, and Holly's balls have the stripes. Okay, Randy opened it up, made this point more achievable. It looks like it might run out of a little steam. Uh, maybe we'll look at an overhead to give you an idea of how. Uh, don't don't switch to the overhead. So, um, well, I guess you can. Um, the iPhone has two cameras on it, and um, unfortunately, with the setup we have, we can't use the wide angle camera, which would be more ideal. We're using the standard camera. We do have uh, Michael doing a score update for us. We can switch to that. So uh, Troy ICC just finished up a quick one on the other court. Uh, they got back to their winning ways, so they're now 3-1 and one for the tournament with a big win over Knights of Columbus, 14-1. to one. Here's Joe. Joe's gonna step up, it looks like. Tocolano, 14 to four. All right, that one was a little short. So, it's one for Galliano. Is that a chicken foot? It is a chicken foot. Fred Fox. Oh, we got some friends in the chat. Uh, oh, Jake is almost 30. I got the up. I got the age update. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, We've also got uh, Peyton, or was that an earlier chat message? Yeah, that was just a moment ago. So Peyton's checking in. Peyton, I think if you sift through 12 hours of bocce coverage, you'll hear that we gave you some shout outs at some point. I don't remember when. Um, 
thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, Jake and Zach are in their late 20s. Zach DeLuca. Here's Sal. I don't know how old Sal is, but he's over 30. He's going to want that one back. Really long. There's our setup here. So we know on the top of the screen. That one's in. Galliano's taking a look at it. Great shot by Nico. I didn't see him getting ready to shoot. I thought they were debating, so. Well, I, um, yeah, I thought they were having a team meeting discussion. and then the ball just rolled out. Exactly, so. <laughs> All right, so Zach will blow it up here. Really nice roll there. They might take a shot, so get ready for a uh, Yeah, here's Nico. This is the young shooter. And he hits it. How about a replay of that, Dave? A lot of torque in Nico's form. Um, sends it back like a pitcher. Three steps. On these shorter courts, when when folks are shooting, they they kind of compress the number of steps they might usually take for for a Rafa. Yeah, Dino, who is you know one of the guys who runs this club, he actually has the rare one step Rafa. The which, one stepper. The one stepper is what I do on our ABC courts I, in Chicago. I was just gonna say the exact same thing. If you've seen me shoot. Uh, on an ABC court, that's how Dino shoots here. Okay, so we're gonna send this one. Uh, two there for Galliano. Two points for Galliano. Score is six to four. Looks like lunch just arrived. I think Jake's shooting again. He sure is. Nice ball by Jake. Really good shooter. Okay, Randy rolls in, a little heavy. Saying we got about two and a half feet of space. Nico, great player, not great at camera awareness. Just kidding, he's playing bocce. <laughs> bocce first, camera Yeah, you second. can't worry about that kind of stuff when you're playing. Okay, we're gonna watch Jake shoot again. All right. And he does hit his target, but also sends his point out of the way. You'll see sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Randy's stepping up here to, uh, to roll one in. It's got a lot of space. A lot of balls out there for uh, nothing near the plano. That means someone's hitting their shots. Nice ball by Randy. Good point. 
Looks like Joe's taking a crack at it now. Missed it on the inside. Let's see if we notice anything in the Did he? set up here. Uh, I uh, think short he kind of short armed it. Let go of it in a yeah. weird way. That's uh, that'll happen on a on a shorter Rafa. Sometimes you don't extend all the way. All right, score that is six five. You want to do that for us, Alex? Oh yeah. I you thought. know which is which. Um, Galliano. They're reversed. Okay, this is Sal DeLuca. Polino near the wall. Decent opener. Here comes Fred Fox. Going to the wall a little early. Let's see if it hangs in that funnel or it pulls out he lined up be behind both balls I thought he was going to shoot it uh, everybody has a different style That was Michael ensuring that we've got the score correct. The score is, in fact, correct. We've just got the different colors than what's on the wall. Um, the balls are basically both Italian colors, so I um, figured it didn't matter who's red and who's green. Uh, we got our friend Mike Panino in the chat. Mike is uh, all the way down in California watching. Um, and Mike helps run the uh, the Vegas tournament, right? He sure does. Yeah. And Mike is uh, uh, giving us a lot of praise, so we appreciate that. Okay, you're going to watch Sal's ball roll in here on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. He's going to get a little love. Oh, oh look yeah. at that. Is that two in? Really nice ball. And here's Nico. Try to do the same thing. Try to do the same thing. I think it. Oh. Oh, it. Oh. Very close. Was that reaction from him? Yeah, that's a. I've seen that reaction a few times. Um, this kid has got a ton of talent. That was the line for sure. Maybe just a little bit too much pace. And then right behind him, you'll see Zach emerge. So. It was a little short. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be two for Holly. Oh, sorry, we got one more. This one's got a better pace on it. That's going to Might be short come too. up a little short. Yeah. So we'll call two. Call two for Holly. That'll make it seven to six. guys back you'll notice the pack world flag hanging behind them there we've got lots of great sponsors for this tournament yeah pack world sponsors this tournament they also sponsor the special olympics and we had some special olympics players in here yesterday um, alex and i did an exhibition match um, with two Unified Sports Athletes, Kayla and Mark. It was a great time. It was really I, fun, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, that was really fun. Great way to kick off the tournament. You know, using the platform. So right now, the overhead camera is coming in handy because we get to see if the ball is, in fact, past the center. It's good. The center line. Center line shifts. By, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got the overhead. 
That's it. We had the overhead on it. Okay. So here's Randy. And it looks. And we'll watch the ball roll in. And that's a great ball. All right, let's get a. We got a shooter coming in. This is Joe. There we go. Makes contact, does his job. I guess it's a little more open. A little bit, yeah. He's happy with the contact, maybe not happy with the result there. The ball coming in hot. Too hot. A little too hot. So here at Waterside, we've got these great Colioni courts. Do you know when they were built, Alex? Uh, well, the, the facility was built in 2015. The courts were laid down originally with hard true, which is that clay that you used for Oh, I didn't courts. know that. I didn't and know then, they had hard true yeah, first. Yeah, and then resurfaced a few years ago. So. Okay. Here's Joe for Galliano. Puts a really nice ball on oh, it. Oh, that's a beautiful really nice ball. ball. That's a big target for shooting, though. Which I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll catch next. Let's set, line ourselves up for a nice Jake Rafa cam. This kid can shoot, man. Does his job. You know, he's not. He probably didn't make the exact contact that he wanted, but his result was fantastic. The result was fantastic, because now Holly's just going to lay balls in. There's Randy. This should be pretty easy. Perfect ball. Perfect ball. Jake's got to get a little more giddy up in this one. Oh. A little more giddy up. That's a little short. It's a two. Two for Holly. The score will be nine to six, Holly. While we have a moment, let's shout out Benjamin Moore. Benjamin Moore has uh, provided some great materials for the raffle, as well as um, some sponsorship to this tournament this week. Um, you know Benjamin Moore. Inspire and transform homes and communities and lives one brush stroke at a time. Benjamin Moore. Uh, Make those getting involved in the community. premium paints. Getting involved in the community. Good for them. We're doing a raffle at this tournament, and one of the raffle prizes is um, a room that's painted. Yep. I didn't put any tickets in that raffle box because I don't, don't live know. here. Right, and, I, I yeah. wasn't sure if they would come all the way out to Chicago to paint my room. <laughs> it's a great prize, though. Okay, Zach DeLuca, take a crack at it. Polino. Get a little replay on that. See him lining up here. All right, lots of space to roll in too. Seeing this ball being a little shorter than he wanted it to be, though. Is it too even going to be in? No, it's too short. Okay. Should we get the overhead? Um, I think our our camera isn't wide over. enough. Okay. Our lens isn't wide enough for this one, unfortunately. Oh, okay. I think what I'm going to do is buy an Android phone. 
Oh. Uh, maybe I'll get a little more control. I, I don't know if it'll work as well as the, the Apple guy. Great uh, roll there by Nico. Great shot. I say that because the, the overhead cam is just an iPhone on a cable cam rig called the Whirl. If you want to buy one for your bocce club, um, you can pick up a Whirl Another Polino shot by for about 300 bucks and string it across your court. And then you've got an overhead camera that moves. So you won't see where this Polino ended up, uh, but it actually shot more to towards the, the middle of the court. So right now, I'm get an overhead uh, Galliano view on it now. has the ball, or has the point, I should say. And we'll watch Sal's ball roll in, try to take that back. And that's Galliano's ball, and that's a great ball by Sal. Uh, Nico's going to shoot, most likely. Polino's moving all over the place. 14 years old, shoots with quite the confidence, doesn't he? And he gets the point. So that'll be one for Galliano. Do a score update here? Sure. One for Galliano, so it's seven to nine? Yes, sir. Uh, another comment from Joe Pellegrino says the broadcast is great. I really appreciate the feedback, Joe. We are certainly flying by the seat of our pants here. Uh, getting a little more comfortable every time, uh, particularly with the, the command center. Talking is the easy part. Uh, let's watch that one again. Let's see if uh, let's see if he took a weird step or watch his hand closely. I think he just aimed in the middle and hit his target. Yeah, yeah. that's probably exactly where he was aiming. Yeah, this is an amateur broadcast, and I, I think it kind of makes it more fun. You know, have this uh, broadcast on YouTube. We get some different personalities in here to talk. Um, Yesterday, we even had the mayor of Phoenix here yeah. talking. So if, uh, if you didn't get a chance to, to catch the action yesterday, be sure to dial in that video. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, he hung out. Apparently, he's a big homemade wine guy, so that's great. Um, I also think, you know, in respect to the amateur broadcast, one way that we've uh, elevated that experience this week is, um, you know, Dino Franceschi, uh, did his homework and gave us information on our sponsors. Uh, a lot of prep work. A lot of, I think, a good broadcast, even if you are an amateur, can be defined by the prep work. Oh, here we are. Hi, everyone. I'm an hey amateur. There. Yeah, we're, an amateur. we're both amateurs here. Yep. Um, but yeah, we've got a bunch of paperwork here. We've got paper paperwork on every team. Every team had to submit Fill a little bit about them. Yeah. And we got to learn about the players and give us some talking points. Also got a roster uh, for all the teams. So if you hear any shuffling through the papers, that's me trying to figure out who I'm talking about. It might sound like we know these guys intimately, but most of them we just met yesterday. <laughs> so That's the, the hardest part for me is um, putting a name to a face. Yeah. And I, I think one thing we can do to improve the roster is to have a face on the roster. I don't know where we're going to get all those uh, headshots or if people are going to be willing to give them, but right. for right. me, it's easier to, to put a face to a name. I'm a more visual yeah. learner. I, I've, I think it's, it's hard for me to remember who's who. I think it's one of the things I'm good at. <laughs> like, yeah. Through, so I've been able to kind of quickly absorb who's who and yeah. take it. Well, that's why you're stand. successful with abc too you've got i think it's a thousand kind of, people that you know <laughs> well i think abc um, uh trained me right you know, yeah night after night league after league shout out to american bocce company back home we're Chile. doing a measurement over here so let's see if we can switch back to the game cam sure and uh maybe and, we'll uh, michael scaldoni is 
Um, You're saying two or one? The brains no. behind the BBN. That's Michael in with the tape there. And we do need to hit you with a score update. I uh, apologize for that. Uh, it is 10 to 7 uh, at, before this frame plays out. There's a lot going on with all these buttons and things that you click, things that you tap, things that you spin. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to keep track of all this stuff to make the stream perfect, and, um, but it's fun. One of the things uh, Alex and I and Michael have talked about doing is hosting some training for learning how to operate this equipment uh, for, the live, for the live streams and uh, get some more people involved. Um, we'd like to grow the Bocce Broadcast Network uh, beyond uh, New York and beyond some of the national tournaments and beyond Chicago and um, really make it a, a household name for, for people to watch bocce, experience bocce, whether they played it or not, and, and share bocce with your friends, share it with your family. Um, I shared it with my family last month, and my brother somehow managed to dial into the live stream from the middle of the ocean. No way. Uh, because of uh, Elon Musk's Starlink. So as much as we hate Elon Musk, uh, that Starlink works pretty well. He was able to dial in from the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That's awesome. Um, and he watched uh, Elizabeth, my wife, and I um, host the live stream over in Chicago. Uh, I'll give you a little peek behind the curtain here. One of the interesting things about this game is that we've created all these presets for you know, where we think the camera should usually end up. Oh, look at that shot by Zach. We need to go ahead and watch that one again. Uh, the hit and stick. This kid, I call him a kid, but, you know, he's, he's an adult, just younger than me, uh, is really shooting confidently this whole tournament. Uh, he's having a really nice tournament. 10-10. Um, so while we were chatting about other stuff, uh, it was a big frame for uh, Galliano, and they're right back in it, right back in it, 10-10. to 10. Uh, And Holly is going to want that ball back. That is unchar that's, uncharacteristic. That's unfortunate. It looks to be about maybe ten 12 feet. feet of space. Maybe 10. Okay. I well, estimate in horse stalls, um, a horse stall is typically 12 by 12. Sometimes you give your horse a little more space. <laughs> I do it in uh, golf. I look at like how long a putt is or a chip or something like that. That's where my head goes. Dave grew up with horses. I grew up with horses. I also used to be a target shooter, and my target nice was always nice 30 feet uh, from where I was shooting. So it's about the length of an American bocce, bocce court, so a uh, 30-foot target. You'd think you would be a better shooter, then. Yeah. Just kidding. I just need a gun. <laughs> Trying to keep it family friendly and not to talk hit, about the things to hit like the that. <laughs> I, could, I could probably hit the Polino with a bullet. Okay, Zach DeLuca, the shooting whiz. He's had some good seal points today. Let's see if he keeps it hot. This ball's coming in a little short, but, but. Hey, it gets there. Is that really there? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big frame for Holly. Uh, we had just given up three the frame before. They retake the lead, 12-10. It's been a good one. Get a little uh, action of some bald heads from above. You know, I think Randy has a great head of hair. He's <laughs> We're trying to follow it. Couldn't quite. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. quite keep up. So good to know the Polino moves a little bit faster than the than the camera. Okay, we're adding this. Adding this uh, third camera has actually made my transitions a little shaky. I apologize for that, but 
I'm, I'm doing things without telling you that I'm doing them. So, uh, I'm flying with them. Stuff. I'm, I'm trying to uh, grant you your autonomy because we're neither of us are lining experts. up to shoot here. Oh. Okay, Joe. Great good ball. hit. Should we watch it again? Here's a little replay. Yep. Almost hit the Polino. Good ball. All right, Randy. Let's see what we can do. Nice ball. You want to bring in the overhead to see how close that sure, actually is? Sure, I think is? we're maybe two feet or so. All right, let's test your... Uh, let's see how fast it is for this Rafa. Let's say 20 inches. All right, Rafa's right, we're gonna about watch to the zoom Rafa through. The overhead. Let's see if there's any lag. No. Nope. That's pretty good. Yeah. But now we don't know what happened. <laughs> You know, sometimes I think that you need like a, an entire camera crew and operator uh, separate from the commentators, but we were talking about it yesterday. Um, if you're the one talking, you, you kind of want to do have a little bit of control over what's on the screen. Yeah, I also think that... It's, it's a balance. You know, there's you know, there's no money in this sport. Uh, everything that we're doing, we're creating ourselves. Um, and... I think there's something kind of endearing to like the amateur. I mean, it's, it, it's so much better. This version, this BBN version of the sport is better than any live stream that we've tried to put together. And you can see the progress in real time. You can see the sports maturation in real time. And uh, I think it's cool and special to be a part of that as a bocce player and fan is to watch the development. Is that ball going to get there? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no. It's no, out. It's not. I think it's out. That ball on the top of the screen is in. They might do a minute. Oh, no. They know it's out. Yeah. And we knew it was out, too, because of that handy-dandy overhead cam. Handy-dandy overhead cam. A picture of this Waterside logo right there. OK. These are beautiful courts. This is a real barn burner, folks. Keep an eye on Fred here. Big shout out to uh, Dino Frances Franceschi. Did I say that right? For his hospitality Franceschi. this Franceschi. I think so. Okay, for his hospitality this weekend, um, he's made us feel like we're at home. So much so that Dave wants to make his home here. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll leave Chicago. Okay. I had a little button malfunction there. Thankfully, I recovered a lot quicker than I did in Las Vegas. I pressed something <laughs> wrong at the wrong time. Escaped out of it. The call is... I guess they called in uh, Galliano, huh? Or no? I can't tell from my angle. You know, I can't tell either, and the, the squirrel cam doesn't have a wide enough camera lens right now, so. We'll catch Fred. I keep angling in on Fred from this way because there are a lot of people on the rail. Nice little cross-court roll here. It's got a little heat on it. Oh, I think it's going to be good. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe not. Oh, you were right. Yeah. I've seen a ball or two roll in my day. Okay. Nico, push, a lot of push. Sometimes I play at a, a facility in Chicago called Highwood Bocce Club. Those are also Colioni courts, uh, but they're much smoother than the Colionis here at Waterside. Um, 
the surface here, I know you can't tell by looking at it, it's uh, kind of a rough surface, so you do have to put a little bit of oomph on it. That's a good ball by Nico. Look That's at a that. Great that is ball. a not just a frame saver, but a game saver by Nico. Um, it's a little replay on that point. Awesome point. Walked it off like a boss. All right. Very quickly here, we'll move into a big shot by Zach DeLuca. Oh. oh. Did it hit? Uh, go to the tape on this, please. Go to the tape. Let's go to the tape. Michael this is, is the replay. certain it hit the wall. That was the same thing with Michael. I think it hit we the can pipe. We can watch it again. I don't know how to make it slow down. Uh, Michael knows how to do that. Yeah, that, ooh. That was the same thing with Let's me. Let's see. It? I think it hits right there, the pipe. We'll watch one more time. Ooh, I think it, it really uh, got some air. Yeah. Well, Michael didn't have the the camera in front of him. <laughs> the vantage point. I know you wanted that reset. Oh man, of course I wanted. Yeah, yeah, that's Pete Rubito behind us. No, you're fine. Yeah. So we're starting over. Um, I think that was a bad break for Holly because they they had a couple uh, uh, bolts in the chamber still. They were two away from the victory. And then here, uh, Galliano puts a great ball on it. So bad break for Holly, just like American Bocce Club had a. Oh, you do. Do you want to hop in here on the hot seat? No? Oh, you're playing shortly. Um, we're on the broadcast right now, but we can talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the question? Yeah, that's what, that's what people are watching at home. This is what we're watching here. Okay, this is Fred Fox. I'm guessing Zach shot. Yeah, so Zach, I, I didn't catch it. So I think Zach uh, made a Rafa. Um, wow, look at that. Another. It's a big, juicy target. Baller shot, though. Galliano really taking advantage of that frame reset. We're not here to question the referee's authority, but we do have. Oh, and then of course Zach with Let's perhaps see the replay first on that. miss of the game. I don't think the replay worked that time. That's all right. We don't need him to. Yeah, we don't. We don't want to. We don't want to watch that. the misses. Just the makes. Sometimes I like to watch the misses just because then I'm a little more cognizant of how people hold the ball, mm -hmm. how many steps they take. Um, whereas when they make it, I'm, I'm just excited that they made it. Uh, Sal DeLuca hits, comes into the wall a little early. Uh, now they're in a preventative mode. I think you might learn more from a miss than you do from when you hit your shot. All right, we're pointing here, playing defense. And I don't think this is the defensive ball that we want. Uh, that's pretty good, actually. That is good. That is great. Yeah, honestly... Hard to beat that without potentially sailing it past. You say about 14 inches from the plane. That's pretty good. Well, you know, interesting call here. Um, if Galliano wanted to, they could shoot. They could shoot because they do have the deep ball. Um, they could shoot their own ball and Polino, but they could pick their own ball clean. That'd be a risky move. You know, they're talking about it though. They're talking. What's the less, the least risky shot? There's a lot of different opinion, differing opinions here. Joe, Captain Joe is asking for a point. They've got two balls, Joe's asking for the point. So that's what they'll do. It's, this one looks it's all looking, right. It's looking great. Stop right there. No, field goal. Oh, now he can shoot. Oh, he's, Mike's, Mike held the thumbs up and now he's. I think he's hitchhiking. I think he's actually looking for a ride. <laughs> okay, Nico fires again. Alex with the jokes. That one might not have an. Oh, it's close. That's good. That's a great ball. Okay. Good fix. Good fix. Nice adjustment. Is it two or three? I think that's two. But they're they're looking a little closer than we can. Well, that's two, so it's going to be 13-12. Well, wow, we picked a good one here, Dave. This is a great game. Okay. 
Going to get the overhead on this one? Yeah, because it's actually within the frame, so. Not if the ball's too short. Yeah, we can go back a little bit. Uh, where's the ball? I, I assume the next one will come in just fine. Okay, so that uh, we got Randy Bauer rolling. And it's like the overhead isn't especially useful here. We'll I think it might be left of. I think the balls might be left of. Frame. We'll take a look. Sorry about that, folks. Staring it down. I think he likes it. It's gonna be a little long. It is long. Uh, this would be a tough way for Holly to go out. I know because they've really, it's, and they've really sort of. Both teams are fighting really here. Both teams are fighting. Oh, this is gonna be an interesting call. Let's, let's see. Is it an easy call to make? Can you get a little uh, zoom on that? Are we? Oh, Galliano's in. Okay, Galliano's in. I think we're stepping up to shoot, maybe. A lot of movement. Too open. Let's see if that replay works this time for us. Too open. That's ball. That's ball game. That is ball game. Okay. Tough break there for Holly, who played a really clean game, just a couple bad breaks at the end. Galliano perseveres, 14 to 12. Um, another that was that was the tightest game we've. we've that was a seen. great game. Yeah, absolutely. Very close one. So uh, that once again is the Galliano Club out of Rome. Uh, Galliano is a old-fashioned Italian club uh, founded almost a hundred years ago and here their players are still making them proud we love to see it let's get a quick little booth shot we've got Michael Alex and I in the same frame team BBN is that, here is meant to be a handshake but I didn't know you had a phone there oh you that's, a, there that's a side handshake uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> alright uh, All right, so who's up next? Can we, uh, Michael, you want to switch the computer so we can see the, um, the schedule? And then we'll switch over there. 14-12, Galliano over Holly. And Waterside's playing opposite, so the next game will be the American Bocce Club in Mount Vernon. Very familiar foes there. Should be a fun one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and it's a rivalry game. Yeah. I'm gonna take uh, take if a you beat. Scroll scroll down a little bit. The BBN logos covering it up. This one is the battle for Long Island. I'm gonna hand it off to Mike if that's okay. Okay. We got a big long break until your next one, Mike. Thanks for hanging out with me, folks. I'm going to find some lunch and uh, make my way back here in a little bit. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Al. I'm going to do a quick bio break and some lunch, too, but I'll, I'll be right back as well. I noticed that, yeah. Even when you were dropping it, though, you made a couple of hits. I noticed you shot a ball and it kind of dropped it and you still hit it. And I was like, well, 
that's probably more of the consequence of luck than of skill. Well, it means you're going, putting your arm out straight, right? Now, my brother who plays, he drops the ball every night. Brian? Hello, folks. Couple Long Island teams warming up on court one. Over on court two, we got Waterside versus the SMS. Two teams from the 315. Seneca Falls and Phoenix, New York, about mm, 45, 50 minutes from each other. These guys are uh, very well acquainted. Um, score is six to four, I'm not sure. Eight to four. And who has the Paulino there? Dino's holding Paulino. So it looks like Waterside is ahead of the SMS right now, 8-4. to four. SMS, their first three games. Let's go back over here. So first, I know their first three games were like blowouts. Uh, yeah, 14-1 to one over American Bocce Club. Uh, 14 to 5 over Holly. That was yesterday, and then this morning, 14 to 1 over Mount Vernon. And this is their fourth game. So, three games total so far. The other teams have scored a combined seven points again against them. But right now, they're losing to Waterside, uh, 8 to 4. And in that bracket, let's see, that's group B. The SMS is well in first, especially when you consider point differential. Waterside one and two. They still have a chance to make it. That bracket is still very much open. Group A is set at this point, I believe. Um, unless I'm mistaken, I believe the three teams moving on from there will be Tokelana, Detroit, ICC. Uh, th these brackets haven't been updated. A little while. Let me see actually if we can uh, we can get Dave to update these graphics. So that's where we're at. And then after this round, we'll have one, two, three more rounds of group play. And we will advance to the knockoff. Six teams will make the knockoff, three from each group. Uh, the first two teams will have a bye, and then the two or the three through six seeds will uh, play in. They'll play against each other to whoever wins will play against the one seeds. Back on court one, we're warming up. Uh, 
Uh, Mount Vernon's got blue balls. Both teams have blue balls. That'll be fun to try and figure out. been handed the information sheet for Mount Vernon. Dino had a great idea to have all these clubs fill out background information sheets uh, so we can have a little, a little something for the broadcast. We have five different handwritings here. A little hard to uh, a little hard to hear. With me in the booth now, Joe Malache. What's that? I said joining me in the booth now, Joe Malache. Yes, yes. Back in after tough tough game against Kali Bachi. Came out on top though. Yeah, please I'll take that. Thank you. Uh, can you could you update the graphic, the group graphic, the brackets? Just take another picture. Thank you. I can't. Uh, my camera's up there. Oh, sure. It's up there. What about, can you do it from my phone? Yeah, and text it to And airdrop it, yeah. I think they're still warming up, correct? Or this might be the first frame. I think this is the first frame. Yeah. Yeah, I'll update the scoreboard as soon as we know which team is which. A terrific shot. Good ball for Jeff O'Hare. Andrew Santarciero, first shot of the game. He lines up at the pointing line, takes a couple steps back. Look at those calves. <laughs> That's where all his power comes from. Yeah, a little side to side action on that shot. It's guy with a Nice bump and replace there. Got the iPad. Actually, not quite a replace, but nice soft bump. Can you do it though? To bring his other ball back in. Looks like they actually have two points there. Didn't miss by too much there. Just missed on the right side. That was your best shot. I know, I know. I think that was your best ever. Yeah, I would think, right? I would think so. I mean, I was amazed. I was happy about it. I believe this is a pretty important game as far as the uh, standings go, Mike. I didn't get a chance to look at the board, but I know that yeah, uh, Dave's Dave's pulling up the graphic for us. Peter Rubito came over and thanked me for helping him out in the standings by beating Ali Botch. So I think it, I think it is a, a pretty important game for them. Yeah, the names on the scoreboard right now are not not the teams that are playing. I don't know which team. Both teams have blue balls, so I don't know which team's going to be which color. Well, I, I we'll guy DeSantis' team, team is is are the balls that look like that earth earth. We got the the Italian colors on them as well, from red, white, and green. So. Okay. 
So it looks like Mount Vernon's going to be red. They start the game off uh, with three point frame. ball right up front of the Paulino where you want it. Be nice if we could uh, have these guys <coughs> stop leaning on the fence because they're shaking the cameras. Shaking the camera. No, no. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Very well. Oh, I'm shaking the camera. Yeah. Uh, somebody's asking me to give a shout out to the New York Rangers, but he's asking the wrong guy because I'm an Islanders fan. Oh, <laughs> I don't think the Rangers need our help. No, no, at least not in this series. Give a shout out to the uh, NL East leading Atlanta Braves. Chris Giordano. Last ball of the frame for Mount Vernon. It's going to be a good ball, so. Yeah, only, Somebody's going to have to shoot this. That's right. It only takes one ball to, to change everyone's plans for the frame, right? So. Am I blocking? A little bit. So on this side of the court, we got Frank Carino and Brad Thayer. Yes. Frank's going to shoot this ball. Just enough to slice it out. That'll do. Shows up as a. That's a hit. Hit on, on the score card. The score sheet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just enough. And Brad follows it up with uh, a great point, taking advantage. So American Butch. After two frames, you might have. Uh, Two, two three-point frames, one for each team. And a tie game. Good response from ABC. Yeah, looks like three. Although uh, I think... Oh, no. Pete's signaling two. Yeah, Pete's signaling two. So I that mean, last ball didn't uh, make it. I think there was a ball in the back that was... Uh, Closer because I, I don't know that it was any of the balls that, uh, to the right or the left of the falling. Nevertheless, a good frame for ABC. So, let's see. Look at these guys' standings in the group. ABC is one and two. Mount Vernon is two and one. Uh, we've got a team there. Galliano's Joe's team here with three losses. One win. One and three, and then Holly is also two and two. So tight bracket. This is a, this is going to be an important game. Guy DeSantis. Oh, first ball. Quite a bit of room there. From ABC. Good response from Guy. It's about uh, 19 inches short of the Paulino, in front. It's a bit of a teaser. Tough. To, uh, tough to get around that ball. Pete's going to shoot it. Good hit. I wonder if he would have preferred hitting the Paulino there um, since they have a, 
a pretty that, non competitive ball. Yeah, in that situation, I would imagine. Favorite Paulino, he did hit the ball on the oh, right this, uh, side. This looks like it might have come up a little short. Yeah, it's going to be the point, I think, right? I can't see the other ball. It's very close. I, I, I almost favor the ABC ball here. Yeah, from where we are, the ball looks in to me. But hard to tell. <laughs> They're calling for the laser. Calling for the laser. I don't trust the laser. Have, have we had an opportunity to test the new uh, technology? Has, has that... Uh, the uh, the Obachi Labs, the, the squirrel yeah. measurement. I yeah, so don't know if we have. For those of you that um, have not heard or just tuning in, we have an overhead camera that actually slides along the length of the court back and forth. And we've been told that it has technology where it can take a photograph of the balls and um, call a measurement. But we haven't, I don't know if there's been an opportunity to use it as yet. Andrew's yeah. boss, good ball. So I yeah, I know Dave was having some difficulty with, uh, because the Paulino is the same color. The Paulino is gray and the quartz are gray, so. Hmm. Another big hit by Pete Rubito. He's really been um, putting on a show with his hitting this uh, weekend. Um, very impressed with, uh, with how far he's come along. Last ball of the frame from Mount Vernon. Another good point from Andrew. So, well, there's room. I mean, they could either point or hit here. Um, it's about a, a little over a two-foot point. I you know there is there's some risk that the, if the Pauline goes in the corner, it might give Mount Vernon a big frame here. But you know, the way that the action is playing off the backboards, you, you can never tell if you hit that Paulino. It could be that it, that it comes all the way back to those three ABC balls. <laughs> I've seen that happen today. So you know, it looks like they're electing the point. Yeah. On court two, Waterside is now up 10-7 on the SMS. That's another big uh, game for. Yeah, two consequential games. I think it's more important for Waterside well, than it is SMS. But uh, yeah, he came up short. How about that? They didn't quite make it. So. It's a little deceiving on the screen which way the balls on that screen, I guess because of the way that the phone is oriented, the uh, Orientation of the balls is different from the squirrel cam to the to camera one and two, but still a good visual. Yeah, you know, and it's it's you know perfect technology, obviously, uh, to have a camera that's going to run up and down the court. Yeah, at some point, I imagine it'll be able to follow the balls down the court. Mm -hmm. It's a great ball by Jack. Jack Balancha. Let's run our squirrel down to that part of the court. Frank lining up for a hit. I missed it on the wall side. Brad's going to try and cover up. Well, he has the ability to pick up his teammate here. He certainly is. A Ball capable. is a little behind Paulino, so yeah, it would be possible to rest on it. That's correct. Yeah. Steal the point. That would be the perfect shot here. Uh, let me up the score. Sorry about that. I'm surprised by the line he's taking here. Um, Either, if you're either early to the wall, you're going to go around it on the left side, and if you're late, you go, you're just going to stay on the wall. So I wonder if it would have made more sense to kind of go straight at it, but they're going to, they're going to stick with this line. And that's got a little 
a little heat on it. So yeah. Yeah, it could be a big frame here for uh, Mount Vernon. Triple hammers. Jack Balancho. I mean, ABC does have that ball in front, but there's a lot of room to point uh, to the left of it and come in. Uh, Jack's going to test fate and go on the wall side. <laughs> and he's a little quick. Didn't beat any of the balls. So that takes shooting out of the equation. Right. Well, you just got to roll the last two. Frank looks like he's got good speed. Is he going to avoid that ball, though? No. That's Chris Giordano there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's right. Chris Giordano. Sorry about that. Now I imagine either rolling for his own ball, not just going for his own point. Not trying to do anything fancy. He'll take the two points. Right. Mount Vernon, six to two. I think by bumping it up, it actually opened it up a little bit for him. And he was able to come in on the left side without too much of a worry. And he made a good point. Brad, to answer your question, the surface of these courts, it's, uh, these are synthetic courts. These are Coleoni courts. Famous Coleoni courts. Yeah, uh, been coming here for years. Gabe had a, a pretty nice surface uh, when he first opened the club, but uh, the, this Coleoni court is you know, world class. It really is. He's starting off with the ball in front. A lot of room, though. Oh, actually, I guess I didn't see the ball. It was so close to the wall. Uh, Mount Vernon started off with a shot that, yeah, it looks like guy's going to make it two in a row in the same spot. If Andrew tries an outside line or if he tries to work on his balls here on the wall side. Looked like he didn't like it very much from his body language. Well, a little quick. You know, I think, he, I think his intention obviously was to try to Work on one of the balls. Locking the balls on every shot, blocking the camera. But that being said, I mean, you know, it, it does help sometimes to have a ball in back just in case. So. Block the camera again. He bumps his front ball. Just enough. To get the point there. May have bumped his front ball in. That's took took him three balls though. Four. They're, they're, they're out of balls at this point. Yeah, right, so after yeah. the right. Yeah. So oh, you're right, your math is definitely better than mine. <laughs> well, it did take him four <laughs> balls, but yeah, yeah, we're both right. <laughs> three balls back. For ABC, Peter Rabito lining up a shot yeah. on the point ball. I've seen him stick a few uh, this weekend, so no. Um. Just to the right. Not going to shoot again. Interesting. Oh, that is interesting. I'd shoot that again all day. What do you think? I would think so as well. Even if you collect your own ball, there's a lot of room to come in uh, on your final. And their ball, that point ball is in front of the ABC ball, so tough to. Oh, they made the shot. Tough to combo on your own ball. Yeah. They made the shot. So. That's in. So just showing that the sports jinx works with every sport, whether it's basketball, football, or baseball. And when I was complimenting Peter on his 
good hitting this weekend. He promptly missed one to the right. <laughs> I still don't hate shooting that ball. Well, I don't know at this point. But, you know, you're right. I mean, that last ABC ball came in was pretty close to that uh, Mount Vernon ball. But oh, they made two good shots. Mikey, they're making, uh, making us look bad. Two points for ABC. Yeah. Good pointing. Not to be confused with ABC Chicago. These guys sometimes play in tournaments together. American Bocce Club and American Bocce Company. And uh, it gets, gets uh, confusing. All right, very good point to start off this frame. Down the middle, say about three, four inches away from the Paulino, from my vantage point. Yeah, here we're, uh, we have a big contingent from Chicago listening in, and we'd uh, like to invite them to come out to Rome this summer and participate in the World Series of Botch. We'd love to see some teams from Chicago. Oh, know. they would love it too. I don't know if we've had any teams from Chicago. We've had them from all over the country. Even had an inquiry once from Australia, but um, and we, we they were very interested in coming, but that was just before COVID, and uh, unfortunately we had to cancel a couple of years in a row, so they never made it out. But Have you been in contact with them since then? Yeah, we reached out to them, but uh, had no contact since then. So. Well, hopefully they survived the pandemic. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> so, ABC with another good ball and. Uh, Mount Vernon up to the task. Good hit by uh, Chris Giordano. Again, tough to find that rhythm as a hitter sometimes. You know, switch from hitting to pointing. Yeah. Three balls down for each team. Jack puts a. Yeah, Jack beats the point, so. Well, three to three, I think you got a point here. Mount Vernon's going to have the hammer. comes Frank's ball. It's going to come in from the right of your screen. It's a little strong. It's got to lay on that ball to be the point, and it did. Wow. Yep. All right, we'll take it. Now, do you shoot that or do you point again? Well, That's what Jack's thinking. You know what? I, know. There is a ball Pauline option here, but I don't know if, if Jack is really a hitter. I haven't seen him hit all weekend. Oh, Jack. So. Is he a hitter? Jack's, yeah. Jack has an interesting, interesting uh, hitting stroke too. He raises his arm all the way up in the air, and then he brings it down like a you know, is it fully a, extended. Is it an overhand or an underhand? How does he? What's the end result? Overhand. Overhand. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, I don't think I've seen him hit all weekend. So difficult to. Again, you know, we talked about how difficult it is to switch from hitting to pointing. It's just the same uh, hitting and going from pointing to hitting. Yeah. Both involve rhythm. And, uh, tough to start I, in the fourth game of the tournament, especially with, I mean, that, that was a pretty tight space there. People are like, geez, you know, these, these points are you know, three, two, three feet. You know, 
that's, those are good points sometimes on these courts that are just so fast and slick. Uh, doesn't take much to have it roll past. And you know, you're mindful of that as a pointer and sometimes you just you short arm it a little bit. And guy, wish, guy shows us how it's done right there with a, with a really good point by Mount Vernon. Jeff O'Hare. Well, looks like he's going to point. I'm surprised uh, Peter didn't go after that ball. The ball's got some speed to it. He's got to touch something. That's gone. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Peter didn't get after that ball. Yeah, perhaps. You know, their their point, the ABC point there isn't great. So sometimes. That's going to affect whether or not you're going to shoot, right? If you. If you point's not great, then what's the point of shooting? They're just going to beat it again. True, but on these courts, like I said, it's just it's it's pretty easy to to get past that Paulino. You know, it doesn't take much. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you force them you force them into a situation where they got to make another good point. And like I said, I know I jinxed them earlier, but Peter Peter's hit and replaced the three balls today too. So, Ooh. well, how about this, right? Peter would be it always seems like the point. That, that last ball. <laughs> Just Always seems to do something to make the frame in interesting, doesn't yeah, it? Just out of frame on our overhead camera. There's Andrew trying to make a big hit here. Yeah, they'll have three balls to do something. Yeah, be interesting to see if there's any action on the Paulino here. Maybe they'll change the frame as well. Yeah, or on their own ball. Oh, he hit it clean. What a wow. great shot. And uh, he didn't leave them a good point either. So, big chance to come in for three points here. Big hit by Andy. And I'm not going to try to say his last name. <laughs> San Tarciero. San Tarciero. Okay. Guy Almost beat the point there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the way Guy rolls is very conducive to these courts. He like puts it on the ground and just kind of flicks it with his fingers. Yeah, it's almost when he, when he releases, it's almost like putting a little spin on the ball too. It's, yeah. uh, it's an interesting style. Yeah, he does sure. spin it, yeah. Over on court two, it looks like the home team, Waterside, took down SMS, the undefeated team wow. in Group B. That's a big, big win for Waterside. I, I think that uh, that puts him into, content, into contention possibly to advance. Depending on how some of these other games shake out. So Mount Vernon, three more points. So that that is the first uh, tiebreaker. Uh, for wondering is, is uh, the point differential. So I think it's even more important than than head to head. So, you know, every makes every point count. You know, even if you're in a situation where you're losing a game, you want to make sure that you score as many points as possible to gain an advantage if it came down to a tie. Here's Jack again. A two footer behind the plane. Right there. Well, it's creeping. Uh, I don't know. Just angle. made it. Tough from the overhead. Okay. Well, guy confirms it. I imagine. Well, it's in front, but it's a tough call. What do you do there, Joe? Well, it's, it is a teaser for sure. Um, I think I they think got a decent point in the back there. I don't know. I think that's probably a, a point that is you don't want to waste times out of ten are, is, is going to get beaten. I, I I don't know. I think I like pointing here. Jack agrees with you.
And he's got great touch on that ball. So there it is. Problem with that, though. Big time. Frank, Frank hits it. He's going to have to beat it again. Yeah. Assuming there's no action on the Paulino. Let's see. Let's see if he hits it clean. He did. So let's see if Brad's up to the task. Or is actually Brad's on the ball, so it's Chris yeah, that's going to have to throw. Last, last two balls be Chris's. And Chris is no slouch in the pointing department either, although I think this one might be a little light. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, not going to make it. Light. Yeah, there's the risk of leaving that ball there. If you don't beat it a couple times, you could end up wasting the ball. It only takes one. Yeah. Luckily, they got a little room for error. I think this one's Four point got it. lead. I think that's a good ball there. All right. Good ball. Frank will shoot it again. So, uh, ABC's got to make a shot. Got two cracks at it. And honestly, if, if, if I think it, if you can do a ball Pauline shot here, I think I'd favor the Pauline a little bit. And he did. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. I think it's only one, but. I think uh, ABC's got one. Or Mount Vernon's got one, rather. Is there a ball down there? I'm not seeing it. Yeah, back in the corner. Oh, I do see it. Okay. And I think they're calling for a measurement. So a good hit on Paulino. I don't think that he wanted Paulino. Well, you know what? I didn't realize there was a ball back there, and uh, you're right. I wouldn't have wanted it either. But yeah. they end up with one, though. Yeah, they, yep. I think Peter conceded that. Big difference, 9-7 and 10-5. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. No, 9-6. Nine, 9-8. Six. Nine, right. Were they 6 or 5? I think they had 6 before. Okay. I think I missed, I missed something. That's my mistake. No one's complaining from uh, Mount Vernon, so I'm assuming the score is grown. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Right, ABC, a little strong on their opening point. It's been a struggle for ABC on this side, I think, with the pointing, especially to open the frame. And guys made it hurt. Let's see if he makes it hurt here. Yeah, the guy's been solid. Yeah, that's a good ball. Come on, boys. Jeff's second ball. Looks like it's going to be a good ball. Uh, made the correction. And, uh, put in a tough point there. Looks like Andy's lining it up. That's it, baby. I forgot the umbrella. I forgot the umbrella. I'm sorry. I collected both balls. That's a big hit by Andy. Uh, well, uh, yeah, this replay makes glitch. Makes this uh, interesting. I don't know if Guy's a hitter. You've seen Guy hit? <laughs> this might be a, a chance for four. I haven't possibly. seen Guy hit in a while. Yeah, I mean, this might be a, an opportunity for them to, to have a really big frame. We'll, we'll see if Andy's going to hit here. Yes, he is. wasn't crazy about his angle. I think he's switching it up now. Um, he was on the right side lining up, but I think he's now going to go on the wall side and try to collect it straight on. Oh, big miss. Yeah, that, that could have been uh, a lot of trouble for ABC. Uh, Fortunate that that ball was not hit. Let me see if Guy can. Yeah. So Peter's going to have the last ball now. That's correct. He's got the hammer. Big, 
A little oh, flick from Guy. Flicked it, and now he's using a little bank shot. And boy, I tell Gotta you. Gotta have Paulino. Yep, he's a little long. Ball's gonna be a little long. It's an interesting line. Um, you know, takes a lot of skill and familiarity to, to use the, bo the boards and the walls. I'm not sure what ABC is looking at here. Paulino possibly down. They got two balls down at the end of the. They do have two. Let me see if they. And, and yeah, so yeah, the other Mount, ball was dead. The other Mount Vernon ball missed everything, so it was a dead ball. could be thinking about a big frame. Pete is a shooter. The only problem with that is I, I, I like that call. They got a point. If you miss a shot, you no, still got a point. No, I, I I don't I don't mind the call. The only thing is you've seen the, the pol, you've seen the Polino uh, fly off the court here. So oh, it is gonna roll. Okay. Yeah, but you already got a point. Why not risk? Sure. You know. Yeah. All right. Well, for three, three but score. they'll take the two. Sure. Yeah. And control of the Polino. Yep. So that was two points for ABC. It's a tie game now, 99. Yep, they didn't put the points up. No, they didn't. But it is a tie score, 99. And Brad down the middle again. It's basically where he's been playing the ball pretty much the whole game. And here comes Peter. He's going he's gonna to go put it up now himself. <laughs> oh, good ball by Brad. Good lead off. Yeah, about a 14-inch point there. Chris is going to start uh, on the right, wall side, take an angle, try to collect either or. And he got the either. Solid. And a nice stick. Brad stepped right up confidently. And he put it right back. Probably even a better ball than the uh, than his first one there. Yeah, in front of Paulino again. Chance for a combo. Bring that. Bring both the ball and Paulino down to their back ball. It's worst case scenario here for Chris if as he sticks this and that happens. Oh. I think he was trying to take an Actually, angle. Actually, you know what? Maybe that's worst case. Scenario. Yeah. <laughs> and he was trying to take an angle to, to pick it clean. Just missed it on the left side. So now they're in a little bit of a dilemma. Yeah, still even balls, but the hammer swings in favor of ABC. This right. be ball number three for Mount Vernon. Yeah, I'm not crazy about a hit here either. Uh, that could bring the Paulino down and uh, create a tough situation for Mount Vernon. I think that's what they're discussing here at center court. Yeah, tie game here. I think you just play defense. I think you got to cover up, definitely. You don't want to give up any big frames here. Swing momentum to the other team. Right. There's a big ball by Jack. Looks like he's got good speed. If he stops it there, he's got a good ball. Yeah, I think it's tough to tell. I don't know if it's in. What do you got on the overhead? Real close. Tough to tell with the shadows. So I think we need a, an official here. Somebody called it. Oh, somebody called it. Uh, oh, okay. I guess, I don't know what uh, the call was. They called it for Mount Vernon. Frank's going to shoot. Uh-oh. Wow, what a what a change in the frame. Hits his own ball. You know, it's it's remarkable how just one ball can just change the, the nature of the frame. You know, ABC looked like they were in a, in a, in a really great position there, and Jack made a fantastic shot to, to just change the frame. Oh, Frank made an even great a greater shot there. Uh, but I think he might have rolled just oh, out. Yeah, rolled out. Yep. <laughs> ABC 
ABC is out of balls. Mount Vernon's got one left. A couple momentum swings. Yeah. This frame. Absolutely. Every Just ball counts. Every point's big at this. That's right. You can never. That's why you can never consider yourself out of the frame until. You no, know, like you said before, swing. one one ball can make all the difference. Mm -hmm. Got about five people hanging on that camera two fence. <laughs> I don't know if uh, people realize if they're shaking no, it. They don't. I suggested we electrify the fences. A <laughs> uh, little strong, geez, if he touches the Pauline here. Yeah. Well, he kept the point, but. Uh, Drag no. Pauline a little bit. Yep. That's yep. his ball there. Yeah. So in the back, so it'll be one point from Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. Which, no. If I'm them, you got to consider that a big victory because uh, they were in a tough spot with that ABC ball in front, almost right on the Pauline, and you know, Jack made a, a really, really great shot to turn the frame around. This is a very deep Polino placement. Guy, it's over the second line. Flicks the ball, real deep, yeah. I'll tell you what. That is a fantastic ball in terms of where it is. And you know, these being international rules, if you go long, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar, if you touch the backboard, the ball is dead and taken off the court. So to put a ball like that there, that's, that's a great shot. Hey, Weasel. 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 Try not to hang on the fence because it shakes the camera. No, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> right. Looks like that's going to be a little short. <clears throat> that backboard looms in your mind as a pointer. Yeah. These long points. Definitely. So, uh, you know, sometimes. Uh, the short arm the ball a little bit. A little Didn't quite check. block his own path, but Jeff has been struggling struggling a little bit this game with right. his first ball. He's been able to correct himself on the second ball. Looks like he may have done it again if he gets there. Got to sneak by. Not going to get there. Sneak by. Oh. Well, look, at first it was going to sneak by on the wall side, and then it curled and almost looked like it was going to squirt by on the outside. Yeah. But. Uh, but it just didn't have enough. Maybe another ball turn or two. It's a big ball here. Now there's a lot of coverage there. If Pete can somehow sneak this ball around, that's going to be too high up on the wall. Might bump oh, that one bump. in though. Yeah, that's going to make it. Oh, up. rolled out a little bit, so yeah. it's out in the open. Yeah, I think I think I think he's going to be able to see it. Chance for hit. Andrew to shoot this. If he hits it right though, it could come back in for the point. Could could be even in, in an even worse position for them if it's hidden behind those balls. Yeah, it depends on where he hits it. He's probably going to want to hit it on the left side if he can. If he, yeah, if you can see that. Most important thing though is just hit it. Worry about what happens after that. Side. So now, just like there was a swing in the last frame where it seemed like ABC had the advantage, it seemed like Mount Vernon had the advantage here, and now they're going to face a difficult situation of having to point around those balls. Brad DeSantis. These momentum sing swings come quickly. Not going to make it, I don't think. No, I think there's just enough there. I'll tell you what. Oh, that's it's about a, even. That's, that's a really great shot by Guy. One ball left for each team, correct? Yeah, one ball that's left correct. for each side. Yeah. So I think Peter's probably going to point here. Well, this ball's got the speed. It's going to see if it hits something. It does, and who's going to win that race to the Paulino? Looks like. Yeah, we can't get there with the overhead cam. Jack's waving it off. Yeah. He says Mount Vernon has a point. Oh, he's waving off. Mount Vernon has a point. Jack wants to drop the ball. 
Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think there's any good that can be done here by pointing, trying to get another point. It's, it's not going to take much for Jack ABC wants to drop to the ball. A guy doesn't want to drop it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a philosophy, you know. It's it's something oh, that yeah, is often it. it's often debated, right? I mean, there's there's guys that never want to drop their balls. Always feel like uh, they can they can squeeze a point out, and there's others that uh, you know. really want to be play conservative. I think that that absolutely was the right call there. Absolutely. Because of the phone. Flip the phone around. Okay. Now I wonder if that philosophy. Oh, I, I went over there. Before the match, I went over and rotated over the back. Same having a discussion and about cameras. <laughs> Jack with a great ball. Frank Carino has been shooting well this game. Great wow. shot. Great shot there by Frank Carino. Good time for that one. But, thank you. Wow, all right. Well, I've won something. I've won something here, if not the tournament. Uh, I did win a, a prize here, and hopefully I won the lottery tree. You win, like lottery ticket tree. I'll take oh, it. I'll take it. You right. might be a millionaire. We can only hope, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Dollar in a dream, right? Dollar. Fury, <laughs> Fury wants us to feature his 45-year uh, veteran coin, the used buffalo that. and the Indian. Use that uh, the lucky coin. Did it show up? I didn't see it on the screen. Yeah, it's we're in the corner there. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, they uh, th that we've used it a few times in the course of the weekend. You can hear that coin flip from across the room. Absolutely. And more importantly, you can see it without, uh, you know, uh, reading glasses. <laughs> Good ball for Chris. All right. It's two balls down for each team, correct? No, there's a third ball down. Oh, is that a remember? Yeah, third Frank, Frank, ball? Frank uh, hit and stuck, if you remember. Oh, yep, yep. So. Well, three balls down for Mount Vernon. If Frank can hit this, force Mount Vernon to use their last ball. ABC can have two balls back. If he hits it right, he could collect both balls. Let's see if he can stick another one. He just missed that up. Boy, my lucky day. I guess I won the bocce balls too. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, the, those are really nice. So, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Fury. Chris with a great ball there. Uh, see, Brad shoots. Brad is a, a good hitter in his own right. Yeah, he is. He loves to hit. And he bounced it. Oh, and got his just own a, ball. A, a bad piece of luck there. But I think that there's enough room for them to come in and point on this one. But uh, yeah, now. <laughs> so. Thanks, Ed. All right, so it looks like ABC was able to take advantage. Yes, they are. So look, they'll get one point here. Tight game, really, really but intriguing game here. Both teams playing really well at a high level. It's been fun to watch. Let's see if Jeff, Jeff can shake off his first ball troubles here. Yeah. Settle in. Paulino center of the court. We appreciate the, we appreciate these center court Paulinos for our yes, overhead cam. 
well, and for us. And so for us, too. See. They're right in front of us, yes. So, all right. Well, I think that that's probably one of the more competitive balls he's thrown, and it's in front, so. I imagine Guy will try and come off the right wall. Oh, he's going straight at it. Yeah. Is he going to bring that ball into play? He is not. And he's on the Pauline. I tell you, Guy has really made Jeff pay for his struggles. Yeah. So, but I think on a good hit here, we're going to see the Pauline on a completely different location here shortly. <laughs> There's a little bit of room there. It could go clean. It could. Well, I guess we won't find out. Yeah. I think you'd rather have the Paulino if you're ABC. You'd rather have the Paulino move. Yeah, and you know if uh, it'd be interesting to know if he had if he was able to see it from that side, and that's yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he sticks it. He does. Yeah, because on his initial Spock attempt, he he missed it to the left, and even if he hit it, he wasn't going to move the Pauline. I, I don't think from that side. They're going to need a, a big point here from Jeff, who, as we mentioned, is, has been struggling. But His second balls have been good, though. That is a different location. So let's see if he can make a correction here and make it tough on Mount Vernon. Who, with a missed shot by ABC here, could, could go out. I was going to move that to his head. Well, you know what, though? It ended up he <laughs> – I know he uh, is probably not happy with that roll, but the results are all that matter. And uh, That's four balls down, though, for ABC. Three balls back for Mount Vernon. you got to hope that – They only this, need three points, yeah. yeah. got to hope on this hit that that ball stays competitive somehow for ABC. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a great opportunity for Mount Vernon to close it out. Paulino. Yep. The Armando shuffle. Well, let's see. I don't know if that ABC ball is the second ball in or not, but it's it's about six feet away from the Paulino, so. Let's see if Guy can close this out or help to close it out. Yeah, it looks like Mount Vernon doesn't have the second point right now. No. On our overhead camera. Mount Vernon? No, I think they've got two in right now. Yeah. That's yeah. two. And so and they got a ball back, so let's see if Andy can close it out for Mount Vernon. It'll be a big win for them. Keep pace with Waterside in their attempt to get into the finals. That'll do it. And that'll do it. Yeah. Congratulations to Mount Vernon. They played a great game. 14-10. Congratulations to Guy DeSantis and his crew. Great game. I'm going to uh, update the schedule and so we can see where we're at. I think I'm up, Mike. It's been uh, fun calling the game with you. That was Mount Vernon, 14 to 10. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Thanks for joining me again. Good luck. Uh, yeah, you get your lottery basket there. Look at that. No, that's Tokelana and uh, Babylon. SMS lost. Uh, eight, I think. Eight? Eight, right? 14-8. So we'll update. Yeah, you don't need to look at me. SMS finally lost the game over there. Is it? Oh, oops. I'm typing on my computer.
Babylon versus Tokelana. Score is 9 to 2 in favor of Tokelana. That game is fairly inconsequential, I believe. Hey, Brad. Um, so, up here now we got White Plains and the Knights of Columbus, which means that we, the Troy ICC and Short Street, are the next game up, uh, which most likely puts us on court two, unfortunately. Not on the broadcast. Well, we got a moment here, folks. A word from our sponsors. Benjamin Moore, to inspire and transform our homes, our communities, and our lives, one brush stroke at a time. When it comes to premium paints and stains for your home, Benjamin Moore has set the standard for excellence. And from Romano Auto Dealerships in Syracuse, New York, specializing in new Ford, Mercedes-Benz, Mazda, Toyota, Subaru, Sprinter, Volkswagen, and Chrysler Jeep. Romano Auto Dealerships. Also from Ripley, Garlock, and Associates, to become the most trusted financial planning firm during every significant moment in our clients' lives. Our mission is to build financial security one generation at a time. And our gold sponsor, Packerworld. Bring in the game. Packerworld's high quality sports equipment is helping organizations around the world to provide outstanding sporting experiences in places that wouldn't be practical otherwise. Our portable equipment allows people to play wherever and whenever they want. Obsessed with making the joy of sport real to more people, Packerworld, passionate about play. Thank you to our sponsors. Also to M&T Bank, Wegmans, Prime Lending, Bill and Terry Risley, Risley, Onondaga County Deputy Sheriff's Police Association, Liverpool Elks, Phoenix Rising, Angry Smokehouse, Southern Glazers, Wine and Spirits, Four Sons, Hometown Spirits, Rocky Cigars, Veneto Sports Awards, and our raffle uh, prize donators. Thank you to everyone and thank you everybody for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the Bocce Broadcast Network. Uh, and continue with the uh, with the comments in the chat. We appreciate everything. So throwing some warm up balls on court one. We have the White Plains, Sons of Italy, Antonio Melucci Bocce Club. Come on, Sacramento. Come on, Stevie. And the Syracuse Knights of Columbus. White Plains versus Syracuse. We will get our scoreboard reset. Um, maybe eventually I can get someone to update the... Uh, Want to join me again, Joe? Huh? Yeah. Joe Malache, back in the booth. So who we got here now? We got the Syracuse Knights of Columbus and White Plains Sons of Italy. Oh, okay. I think we gave the Syracuse Knights of Columbus a little bit of grief earlier, wondering why they don't come to the to Rome for some tournaments. <laughs> Maybe we can convince him to come. Love to see new faces. We drank it all too quick.
the this down the, after this game. The other, uh, this picture. Okay. Could you update that now that we have like just a couple games left? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Joe Peterson, how you doing, Joe? What happened over there? Hmm. It's not on. Hmm. Let's, hold on, let's get you on there. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta turn those off to turn this on, otherwise it echoes. In the booth, Joe Peterson, the one and only, playing for uh, SMS of Seneca Falls, New York. Dave is uh, updating the group brackets for us so we can see where everybody stands with these last couple rounds of games. Joe, you guys have been playing pretty well yesterday and today yeah. but uh we handled 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 it pretty well uh third game or fourth game uh we didn't roll like we did the first two games and uh we missed some shots some shots crucially late which really hurt us we climbed climbed back a little bit it was uh eight to eleven at one point and then uh the wheels fell off so you know that'll happen and we'll pick it up and get back on the snide for the next game it's never good when you go all the way undefeated in the uh, in the group play. Good to lose a game, get it out of the way. No, then later on uh, in the bracket stage for sure. Yeah. Heart. It's a good atmosphere. A lot of good food. A lot of good people. Yeah, Dino and Gabe did a great job putting this event together and finding some of these clubs who I've you know I'm not familiar with. We haven't seen these guys before and. Uh, Dino managed to bring everybody together. Yeah, I probably know uh, about 75% of the clubs that are here. There's a few that I definitely have never seen before, but it's good. It's, it's, it's good for the sport, you know. It's growing, more people are hearing about it and getting around and traveling and, and, and having fun. I mean, that's what it's about, having fun, being competitive. But. I know it's a, about a little more than having fun for you. Yeah, we get pretty competitive. We get pretty competitive, but I've been playing since I was about 10, so I had a batch court. Oh, yeah, uh, about 12 tournaments. My dad, St. Anthony's. So. I was going to say you started at St. Anthony's? Yep, St. Anthony's, and then uh, I didn't really start doing any major tournaments until I was closer to uh, almost, uh, you know, graduated from high school and stuff and after all that. but. That was my first tournament too when I was 12 years old, St. Anthony's. St. Anthony's, yep. It was a great tournament. It was, uh, it was. I, I remember it when back in the day when it was actually at the SMS club itself. Uh, they had six courts, four under a pavilion, and two outside courts. Uh, they got rid of those and they moved over to the fireman field and uh, built some bocce courts over there in the field. I was actually part of that for many years with another well-known gentleman from Seneca Falls, Mike Rossetti. And uh, yeah, hey, Mike. How's it going, Mikey? And uh, yeah, so th things are good, and uh, you know the league's picking up more and more down there in that area, Seneca Falls area, and uh, and they're bringing back the St. Anthony's Festival a little bit, I guess, at least in some capacity, right, in the parking lot of the SMS there at uh, Labor Day. Yep, they do. Uh, they do still run the food booths. Uh, they they do the fried doughs and, and the calzones and all that. They, the the traditional stuff. The spin the wheel thing, the yep. gambling, yeah. all the cake, the cake wheel and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and, and they would normally play a bocce tournament. It, it's a good time. Yeah, we look forward to that event. We'll be broadcasting from there uh, Labor Day weekend this year. It's from Seneca Falls, New York. I'm sure of it. I'll be there. I hope Armando can get in that one. Yes, yes. We'd definitely like to see Armando get in. Uh, he's a great player, world-class player. He's been uh, playing for many, many, many years. I've seen a lot of great play out of that gentleman. Maybe he's sitting right behind us. Maybe we... Hey, Fiore. Fiore. You and Armando got something to say? You always got something to say. 
Nofiore, introduce yourself to the folks at home. What are we looking at here? All right, so Nofiore van de Chaldone. And I have a picture in my hand of some old timers. My brother Tony is in the front row kneeling down with a ball. Michael is very familiar with this, aren't you? I'd love to show that to the people. Yeah, hold it up. Sure. That's uh, our family in Vitalazio, right? Sunday Butch. Right. Sunday Butch in Vitalazio. What, what year is this from, Fiore? 1949, I'm thinking. Tony, my brother Tony was 19 years old. It's a classic. It's in the club. Yeah, hanging up in the Troy ICC. You got any message for the uh, for the folks at home, Fury? Si, si. Well, you see, Mr. Dashkuta, especially the guys in uh, Connecticut. Como esta, Angelo? Tashpeto. Ciao, Angelo. One of these days we're going to meet again, well, yo. You know what I love about this? It's a friendship. That's what it is. Absolutely. You can't, there's nothing better than that. Yeah, I've been away from it for a long time. But it's... Yeah. We miss seeing you. <laughs> we miss seeing you. It's, it's like, been a while. It's like brothership. <laughs> That's right. That's right, buddy. That's absolutely right. So cool. And share some I mean, memories forever, I got I got know? friends that play cards. I forgot friends that play soccer. But the budgie guys. That's right. There's nothing like it. Yep. It's a little different. We all love to compete. Yep. That's you know, we sure. get a little pissed when we play bad, but after <laughs> all, who gives? That's right. You know. That's right. That's you know, right. we're all we're all here to friend. Uh, they're such lovely guys. I love y'all. Absolutely. Same here, buddy. Good luck to everyone. And good job, Michael. Great job, Michael. Great job, Michael. And tutti quanti frate di mio, saluta tutti e ci vediamo subito. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Fiori. I think we'll get back to our uh, action on the court here. Th thank you, Joe. Take care. Well, that's what Butch is all about. Yeah. Family, old friends. Absolutely. The relationships that you build in this game are incredible. They're strong and they're long lasting and it, it's really what makes this game more attractive than anything else. Yeah. And, and it crosses generational lines and uh, you know, it doesn't matter the age. If you're in the sport competing, you're gonna make amazing friends. Uh, no matter your age, your background, it's just a special community, it really is. I'm proud to be a, a part of it. Yeah. A lot of these families have been competing against each other, playing together for generations. Yeah. But that's just that, you know, Mike, it doesn't take many games uh, to get played together for you to, to develop a bond uh, with these people because, you know, nine times out of ten you're going to see them again somewhere else in another tournament and it's just like uh you know seeing old friends right it's like like coming home every time you see him again and it's uh it's it's really great it really is it's uh, you really can't get anything up uh, like it anywhere else i don't think you don't see it in any other sport one of the great things about bocce too is that it's it's uh such a social sport yeah. every, most of the time you're standing there watching the balls roll watching someone else throw right and, and, you know, and, and just like we're doing here, I mean, you know, I, I don't, none of us, I, I don't think either one of us is uh, especially trained in broadcasting, but, you know, just sitting here and discussing the different strategies, uh, it's, it, it, that's a, a really fun thing to do as well. You know, and as a spectator, you know, what would you do in this situation? How would you attack it? You know, it's, it's, it's just a fun exercise, a fun part of the game. Speaking of which, let's see what we got here. We've got... Oh, that ball's burned. So the Paulino is tight to the wall here on the left side. And it looks like... It 
Looks like the White Plains team is in. I don't think that that ball made it. Although I could be wrong. It's tough to tell from where I'm sitting. Here comes the last ball of the frame. The White Plains. If he stays off that ball, no. He ran into his own ball there. Ten to five over on court two. Babylon mounting a bit of a comeback. Against the strong Tukalana team. No, it looks like they just pulled ahead 12 to five, Tukalana. Let's take a look at our standings. So this game is group A. We got A4, the Order of the Sons of Italy, White Plains versus A6, Knights of Columbus. Both teams are one and three. Uh, we already have three teams that have won three games, so neither of these teams will be advancing. This, this game is for uh, bragging rights. Yeah, and you couldn't tell uh, that by uh, looking at the participants. They're having a great time here. Um, oh, yeah. These guys are here to play. Absolutely. And learn. Yeah, probably uh, maybe the first time some of these guys have had the opportunity to play against this uh, caliber of competition. Right. It's going to reach the backboard. I don't often see players competing in flip-flops, but uh, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I'm not going to argue with, with the... The results here, it looks like he's got that point in. Uh, short. 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 Okay. And that's another thing about this game, too. I mean, you know, there's a lot of characters in this game. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean that there's, there's a lot of colorful people that make uh, the sport even more exciting, and they have their own styles, their own idiosyncrasies, and... Uh, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. When he first rolled that ball, he was pretty unhappy, thought that maybe he had dropped it and was short, but <laughs> it turned out to be a really good point. I'm guessing he wouldn't want it back. So. Close. It'll definitely be a measure. That one's probably going to be a little short. So we'll see if uh, they've got two out of this. That guy's going to put a tape on that. Santa serving as our official in this game. Alex. Alex. Yeah, just one. So the Paulino uh, hit the back, the backboard on the first goal. So that means that the other team will have an opportunity to decide where to put the Pauline. They won't get to roll first, but they, they get to determine where it'll be played to open the frame. 
now White Plains. Initial roll. Looks like they got a good roll. on it, but if it touches the other ball, it might be able to make the point. Or if it lays on that ball. I think that might have been enough. I don't know. I think it might have rolled out at the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, oh, guys, it, it, yeah. Yeah, it touched the other ball and moved it just enough to bring them in. This one's got a little pace on it as well, but it's heading towards a Pauline. And I think he might have rolled out. Guy with his inside measuring tool. Some players prefer this measuring method to a tape. Oops. Yeah. Oh, looks like our squirrel cam is offline. Mm. Phone must have died. Need to charge it? Is that what it is? Nah, it's squirrel cam is uh, done for the weekend. <laughs> oh, Chicago guys got to get on a plane soon. I thought they were going to come over here and take over. Well, they might have to because I think I got a game coming up here shortly. Yeah, I got a game too. Ball's got some pace on it. Another opportunity here for the White Plains team. Either tie the score or take the lead. He doesn't want to touch that Pauline. Yeah. There wasn't much margin for error there because uh, those back balls were in. But looks like they're going to squeeze two out of it. That'll even the score, I believe. Yeah. Three to three. And it looks like the game on court two is wrapped up, Mike. Uh, yeah, so I gotta go play. Took Alana taking. Uh, we'll go find Alex. Come on these cameras. Okay. I can go get him. Oh, I got to
Well, I'm going to go get ready to play. Uh, oh, here's Dave. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Dave coming at you from Waterside. Uh, Michael just stepped out. He's about to go play on the other court. Looks like we have maybe one, maybe two red ones in right now. Well, that green ball just moved, so we'll see what the call is. Looks like it's another measure. Alex is joining me in a moment, I believe. He just ran down to the local distillery. All right, the score is currently three to four. Oh, it's just one point there. Got a pretty deep Polino back there. All right, looks like that's about two feet from the Polino. See if we can beat it. Knights of Columbus. It's a little long. That might even be a dead ball. See our referee's going to take a look. Yeah, we're calling dead. On, oh, another ball's on the court already. They just assumed it was dead. That one's in. See if I can figure out who the players are here. That's White Plains. Oh, that's a good ball, I think. All right, red is in. Let me shoot. It's a bit outside. That one's short. No good, no good. 
All right, we get a chance for two here. Yeah, it's looking like a beautiful ball. Alex's mic is not on. We got Alex joining us here. Welcome, Alex. What up, what up? Alex just made a quick trip over to the distillery. What's it called? Uh, Lock One Distilling. Mach One Distilling. Did you find anything good? I did. I picked up, uh, I've got all kinds of good stuff there, but uh, I remember last year I tasted out this Four Sons Toasted Coconut Whiskey and thought. All right, that's two for White Plains. Did I do that wrong? I did do that wrong. All right, Dave's in the Dave's in the hot seat this time, huh? Yeah, and I don't know what I'm doing because you guys have been clicking all the buttons all weekend. Do you want a deep Paulino? Do you want to give it a shot? Uh, no, that's not a deep Paulino. That's a classic mid court Polino. Polino, classic Polino, as we say. All right, it's going to be about three feet long. Of course, you can't see it since I forgot to click the button. That's where we're sitting. Probably about seven feet short. So, Dave, this is our uh, final broadcast of the New York State Championship. Yeah, but we are going to go all the way through to the finals. Michael's going to do it. Uh, Alex and I are going to head over back to Chicago via the airport. Hopefully see uh, the tail end of the tournament we have going on there at Wright B. Cider. Yeah, pop into right B and uh, celebrate with whoever just won. Unfortunately, we won't be able to watch the stream for the, from the airplane, I don't think. Our plane is too small to have Wi-Fi on it, I think. Plus, I don't think you're allowed to stream YouTube in a plane. I don't know. Oh, really? I don't know. All right. A little, good result there. A little bit of luck. So these are two newer teams. Uh, yeah, who's this stepping up here? This is Pasquale. Way to test my knowledge without my sheets in front of me. Yeah, I, I brought the sheets over here. I don't have descriptions of all of these folks. But that is uh, Pasquale Maneri. He's going to take another shot at it, I think. Another lefty. Uh, it's two misses. So this is the Antonio Meucci Bocce Club, uh, Sons of Italy. Syracuse Outpost. This is Steve Sacamano. Steve. Oh, that's a good ball. He steals the point. That's a great ball. He steals the point. Okay. Ooh. Too red in. Sorry, I switched too quickly there. Eight to three. Quick pace to this game. Uh, you can tell they're new players because it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like new players play with more pace. Maybe, yeah. Uh, get a little impatient. A little impatient. I think a little bit of like fighting through nerves. Usually when nerves uh, s creep in, you sometimes try to roll through them. But I think it's great. I mean, we were new tournament players, or I was just a couple years ago. The only way to learn is to get out here. Well, we had a ball that dropped, uh, making jokes about maybe that counting as a throw. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of uh, temperaments flaring or drama or conflict or anything like that. No, uh, everybody's been the sportsmanship. very cordial. Sportsmanship has been top notch. Who knows, if this game keeps at this pace, maybe we'll get another one in before we have to take off. That's oh, a good that's, shot. That's a great ball. That's a big, juicy target, though. 
This gentleman is Carlo Riccobono. I recognize Carlo from Vegas, I think. Is he there? I recognize him from somewhere. I'm not sure. A little early on the wall, a little hot. Uh oh, that might hit the back wall. That's going to be dead. Taking a different line here. That's not going to Creeping make along it. the wall. I don't think that's a line he really wanted. Oh, maybe. Well, that's going to be. Sh oh, no, it is. That's going to be in. Yeah, okay. So what can you tell me about the team White Plains, Alex? Uh, White Plains is a club that was, I think uh, our guy, Guy DeSantis, was also instrumental in their growth. Um, if you haven't noticed, if there's a bocce club in New York, Guy has probably had something to do with it. Uh, White Plains is is the Antonio Meucci Bocce Club. And they're relatively new to the traveling circuit. Let's see if I have any background on them. I don't. I We're can't. looking for a, a broadcaster sheet on, on White Plains. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have one. There might be a few more on the left there. No, I looked through these ones, okay. but we can check them again. No dice. Oh, if we can't tell you the background, we'll tell you what's in front of us. Yeah, these gentlemen uh, played the first game of the day yesterday against Troy ICC. It was the first broadcast that we did. All right, Alex, I'm going to need your help. I, I just ruined the, the cameras. Okay. So I'm on camera one, and I'm going to bring this down. There you go. And then camera two, I put it on the... You're going to go call? Call one, enter. That's to get the focus on the players. Now go. All right, I do yep. want the focus on the players. There you go, good job. All right. I think <laughs> I did call three, enter before. Yeah, one is the focus on the players, two is on the... Uh, a traditional Polino set. I might put a little label on this uh, board here yeah. so I can remember that, a little sticky label. Well, I think, you know. It's not muscle memory yet for me. This has all been trial by error for us, and uh, we've discovered that uh, everyone has their own rhythm and cadence. Um, oh, that ball's way too long none of this stuff is super easy but you get better the more you do it and that's really what you got to do you know the bocce broadcast network is not streaming to hundreds of thousands right now though we might have hit a thousand that's that's great but for us it's a chance to I, i'm glad you're taking over the board because i'm sure you're going to do a lot of this where well, that's not the best angle <laughs> and one of these days i'm going to have to figure out how to hook it all up but like we mentioned earlier in the day, um, BBN is going to host some training sessions so that we can um, train others on how to run this equipment and commentate. That's got a chance. I'm not the best commentator, but uh, this ball is looking real good. I can tell green from red. So, all right, we got a clear line of sight here. No, we don't. It's still a live ball, but that was a miss. It's going to come in off the wall. Might it's be looking a, pretty good. Yeah, that's Get a, a little bump. Is there going to be one red or two red, we think? 
it looks like two red to me. That looks like two. And I was, uh, I was thinking one. I'd like to see a little enthusiasm from uh, from the teams here too. Everyone is very respectful and gentlemanlike on and off the courts. But sometimes we like to see a little bit of uh, celebration out there, don't we, Dave? Yeah, it's a different atmosphere than ABC Bar Leagues. Um, well, if you're not used to it, right? So if if if, you, if the if the immediate subculture is a little quieter and and um, gentlemanly, and then you were to come in and start yelling and celebrating and doing all kinds of whatever celebration dances and all that, then it might be off-putting. But with ABC, we built a culture that from day one, the celebrations were encouraged. Encouraged, right? <laughs> and so it's not off-putting. So it really just comes down to the context of where you're at, being able to read it. You know, we act one way. When I go to nationals, I'm not necessarily gloating after big shots. And I like it. I like all the different versions of the sport. I don't yeah, different cultures, different places, different tournament cultures. Yep. So, there's oh, no, that one's in. There's no uh, objectively correct way to do this. That's the beauty of this game. There's a million different ways to roll a ball in, to shoot a ball out, to approach. Yeah, you know, for us, we feel like that might be two celebratory. Think? I think it's one. He's saying, saying one. Uh, we like, we like to foster that celebratory environment because we feel like uh, it creates a more contagious environment. Games coming down to the wire for Knights of Columbus. Oh, the dodging bullets right now. Oh, oh, that one seems like a wrong tra trajectory. Okay. Okay, Knights of Columbus is going to try to get back in the game. All right. That ball's ball. very spicy. Field goal. It's going to hit the back wall. It's a dead ball. Ref's going to go move it. That one might work. No, I don't think so. Waiting for the call from Jack. He says one. One. One three. So it did work. Oh, no, it was the other one. Sorry. Uh, let's see if I can get this up here. There you go. That's, that's looking like trouble. Trouble. Not what Knights of Columbus needed there. Interesting. Um, I think it's it's kind of a good perspective to see the newer teams play here. It puts in perspective how good those teams that we were just watching are, right? Oh, no. Alex. Okay. It's two dead balls to get the frame started. It is tough when the Polino's back there. You gotta really control your speed. And if this one's dead too, this is it's basically gonna be a ball game, yeah. One Hail Mary ball. Now you gotta go for it too, you. That's got that's pretty good. That's the adjustment they wanted on the second ball. That's hey, you know what? It gives them a fighting chance, huh? Ball ends up in a perfect spot. That is a perfect spot. And they're going to take some target practice here. Four balls. To Let's see. Let's see if we can capture this. This will be fun. 
always rooting for the ball in front of me. So let's watch Pasquale hit this. What do you think? It takes him one ball to hit it or, or two or three balls to hit it? They're going to hit it before four. <laughs> I don't know. Are they, they're going to point one out there, and then they're going to shoot. Uh, I like that strategy. No, I don't know. That's coming in really hot. That is hot. coming in really hot. Okay. Oh, okay. It's contagious out there. <laughs> <laughs> this frame is that back wall is as contagious as COVID brought to you by practice oh do it again mm. you hate to see it got one ball out of six on the, on this the court this one's coming fast too I think yeah a little is earlier it, on is the is it wall. coming fast yes it is Oh my gosh. What did I just say? Did I just jinx it by saying it's contagious like COVID? Dave, we got one out of seven on the board right now. <laughs> one out of seven on the board. If he misses the shot, it will be one ball on the board, which is certainly the first time I've ever seen that. Holy cow. This is insane. It's over. That's the frame. Oh my goodness. What are the chances? Okay. Let's see. Uh, you got the score up. Thank you. All right. This time we're going for a Polino in the middle of the court. We'll have to bring this down for us. It's a little long, but better than the others on the previous frame. Knights of Columbus hanging on by a thread. This is Sal, the captain. It's a good ball. Straight line. Get a little backboard. Finds the backboard he needed. It's looking like good pace, but it might. Oh, it might it's be too much. Hot. Yeah, yeah. That's Ted. Uh, yeah, it rolls up. And they roll quickly. They don't waste any time to to adjust or talk about it. They just roll. This one's good. What do you, Ooh, really? I don't know. I don't know. I, my depth perception uh, over no. the table is, he says no. Wow, I thought so. You know, it's it's a little more difficult to read their balls because they do drop. And so when you're, a ball's dropping, it tends to slow down quicker, whereas a ball with top spin will roll out a little more. Sure, yeah. yeah. Hit that, Polino. Slow down. That's wow. a no. Guy is saying no for that one. Okay. Right. Oh, there's the fist pump. Did you see that? Yeah, here's Here's El Capo. All right. He's ready. Yeah. He, he's yeah. gonna hit his He wants to he wants us to document the game winner. Boop. He wants us to document the game winner. And that's and he's it. got it. He's got and it. And he's got it. Watch the celebration. Hey, how about it? There we go. I, I, I <laughs> got it almost. All right, we get some handshakes, and that's a ball game. That's a ball game. I'm going to hop off and uh, take this camera down because Alex and I have to hit the airport. All right. While you do that, uh, I'll probably kind of uh, reflect on the last 30 hours or so, give you a little post-mortem. Um, this was an interesting experiment to head out to New York and jump into the booth with uh, Michael Sheldon and the Bocce Broadcast Network. Um, I think we learned that this is on the right path. Um, I think a lot of people in the bocce community are excited about not just the ability to live stream, but the ability to capture the experience of our competitive bocce world. Uh, you'll see there's a lot more strategy involved. 
uh, more athleticism when it comes to shooting, uh, decision making, teamwork, communication, and that's something that we really want to show off. Uh, after being in this booth for you know roughly six out of 12 hours in the last two days, um, you know one thing that I would love to see is being able to take these five or six hour live streams and to create polished, complete games, particularly meaningful games later in tournaments. Um, I think I love the preparation. I think that's a huge step forward to have notes on teams, to have notes on sponsors. Uh, while I have the moment, uh, I'll kind of give you a run through all the people that have been involved in this great tournament. The tournament's far from over, but I do have to hit the road soon. So this is a sheet that Dino prepared for us and basically told us, you know, we've got gold level sponsors, silver level and bronze level. These are all the companies in the community, the organizations in the community that want to support Waterside, want to support Bocce, want to support what we're trying to do. Um, even the personal, even the personalities involved. So Michael, Dino, Gabe, myself. Um, starts with Packer World, uh, what they've done for American bocce, for Special Olympics bocce, and for the sport of bocce has been absolutely revolutionary. I can't stress that enough. You know, eight, nine years ago when we started this thing, we had a lot of noses turned up at us. That's not bocce. You know, you can't shoot on the portable walls. You can't play on courts that are too small. Um, and I think we've clearly proven that any bocce is better than no bocce. And what happens if you are someone who is more inclined to support the purest version of the game, the most competitive version, synthetic courts, international rules, whatever, uh, is that if you focus on the foundation of your sport and you bring people in and you eliminate barriers, you have more opportunity to um, to feed into that ultimate product. And that's all it is. No one said, hey, we're, we're going out, we're putting inflatable courts and rolls of turf up and bars, and this is what Bocce is going to look like for the future. This is going to be where all the best players play. This is going to be where all the highest caliber tournaments are. That was never the goal. The goal was to play more Bocce. The goal was to get more players involved. And you know, Special Olympics has over half a million athletes competing in the sport of bocce. In the U.S., we have roughly 10 to 15,000 players who play in tournaments and leagues across the country. That's great. That's growing every day. But, um, you know, it pales in comparison to the players in Special Olympics. So we took a little bit of a, uh, took a cue from them, and Packer World's been a big part of that. Uh, the Colioni Courts, uh, you know, Colioni is the standard. When you walk into a club or facility across the country and they have Colioni courts, you know that you're playing with, you're playing at a club that takes the game seriously, that wants the best for its players. Um, that's, that little horse, is, uh, which is their logo, is sort of a seal to let you know that this is the real deal. And these courts are fantastic. And I love to see a modified size, so I don't know, these might be about 60 by 10 feet. Um, but with premium materials. Uh, Colioni are the courts of um, Molisani, Highwood, um, Methuen, Sons of Italy in Massachusetts, St. Louis, the Italian-American club there. Best courts we've seen hands down. Uh, other sponsors include Ripley, Garlock, and Associates. Uh, those are financial planners local to the Phoenix Syracuse area, the Romano Auto Dealership, Syracuse as well, and Benjamin Moore. Um, we all know Benjamin Moore as the paint company, uh, but it's cool to see that they get involved with some community projects like this. Um, yeah, so the preparation on the sponsorship stuff is great. The preparation on the teams and the players is fantastic. Um, you know, we're not in a position to create an authority on broadcasting or live streaming, we just want to see more of it. And these are tools to allow clubs to do more of it. I'm here because I wanted to 
get to know the Bocce Broadcast Network more. I wanted to get to know Michael's Michael Sheldon's vision a little more. Uh, and I want, and you know, he offered up basically replicating this in other markets. And naturally, Chicago would be the next market to do it. I know our friend Will Kessler out in Northern California is on his way to doing a West Coast version of this as well. That's fantastic to hear. Uh, I look forward to potentially in the very near future, near future seeing a East Coast, Midwest, and West Coast Bocce Broadcast Network all working in harmony, as well as anyone else who live streams and archives their videos. Um, you know, our friends, the Bocce Bros, have done an amazing job in Youngstown and Cleveland with, in Columbus, um, with their live streaming um, presentation. Uh, the version of Bocce Ball in Ohio is fantastic. It's lively, it's spirited, it's, you know, young and old. Um, and um, it's, it, for my money, uh, the most complete bocce package that we have in the country. And I mean that, um, you know, I think obviously I'm very proud of what we've done in Chicago. And I think that we're doing the most work on the ground level. But I think as a complete package, uh, you know, even though I'm here in New York and certainly um, really excited about what New York is doing too, I think Ohio still takes the cake. Probably tick off some New Yorkers by saying that, but the product here is fantastic too. You know, and, and, and in addition to New York, Ohio, Chicago, and the West Coast, we got to start filling those gaps. Uh, I've had a conversation with some of the more social leagues lately, Good Time Bocce down in Austin. Um, my guys, ABC Detroit, out of Corktown in Detroit. Uh, Premier Bocce on the Eastern Seaboard, so they're over in North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte. Uh, they extend up to Knoxville and Asheville. Uh, what they're doing is, is really, really cool, and that's going to just feed into the ultimate um, goal here too. Another shout out to our friends, uh, Maestros, Maestros uh, in, in Illinois. Maestros is, um, has taken backyard bocce and made it something really cool, um, something infectious, a um, lot of energy. Uh, I would love to see more backyard bocce communities lean into it and then maybe eventually we can piece those together as well so yeah those are some of my thoughts um I, I think that we have to let this be very organic we have to let the broadcasters do their own thing um you know if if you want to use certain equipment and we use different equipment as long as it creates a platform for our sport it's headed in the right direction let's continue to collaborate let's be super open-minded uh, and let's give this sport the opportunities it deserves that's what i got Thanks for listening to my little spiel here. Um, we're going to do a few more minutes of this game and then head out. Thanks for listening. And please do me – oh, no. Yeah, please do me a favor and uh, uh, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, as well as make sure you're following American Bocce. Last acknowledgement I want to give is to our own tournament, the American Bocce Open at Palazzo di Pot. Debachi in Lake Orion, Michigan, September 7th, 8th, and 9th this year. 64 teams. Um, you know, we're trying to create a prototype for the new, the modern bocce tournament. And I think we have. You look at what uh, Big E has done down in Dallas with the Lone Star Open. You look at the progress that the Las Vegas National Open has made. You look at what these guys are doing here in Waterside. And uh, you can feel the tides turning. Um, we're going to continue to push the envelope and continue to hopefully inspire other great tournaments across the country. Uh, if you have any thoughts, if you want to collaborate, if you want to talk, my um, door is open. Email me, text me, call me. Um, follow us on social media, see what we're up to. And let's keep it going. Let's keep it hot.
Okay, next up is uh, Galliano Club versus SMS. This is a game to 14, New York State Bocce Championship. We're finishing up group play as we move into bracket play. This has been a fantastic weekend, Special Olympics involved. Uh, Mayor Brian from Phoenix is here. He's been hanging out all weekend, taking in what Dino is doing with bocce and the community. Dino and Gabe, I should say. We've got Waterside member Keith refereeing. He's on the right-hand side of the screen. Let's see what we got going on here. Game's just underway. First, let's take a look at Galliano. Galliano, Joe Maleche, Johnny Rodriguez, Nico Fox, and Fred Fox. Uh, Johnny Rod and Joe are on the right hand side of your screen. Joe's the taller gentleman. On the other side, you'll see father and son, Fred and Nico Fox. Nico, 14 years old. He'll very obviously be the youngest player on the court. And they are playing SMS. SMS, we've got Bill Burnett, Joe Peterson, Steve Peterson, and Morris Tuttle. Uh, we'll give you a better look at those individuals as the game goes on. SMS is three and one. I believe Galliano is two and two. So this is an important game. Looks like I have a friend. What's up, Dino? Yes, sir. I'm just uh, jumping on here to play uh, transition. Uh, my understanding is that uh, somebody needs to catch a flight in a few minutes. and. Uh, oh, no, we were actually just looking at real estate in the area. I think we're just going to stick around for a couple of years. If that's uh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. You're always welcome back, sir. Always welcome back. Thank you very much. We've got a tight one here. Keith's taking a look. Game's just underway. This has been fun. Breakneck, just jumping in, in and out of the broadcast booth for the last two days. Um, I just got done kind of front facing the camera and chatting a little bit about my experience. So oh, wonderful, good. If you get a chance, take a look at that. Thank you. Uh, Dino's always looking for feedback and um, perspective, I think. Absolutely. Uh-oh, special guest. <laughs> All right, we got a special guest in the booth. This is Village Administrator Jim Lynch. Jim is part of the team over at Lock One Distilling. Is that right, Jim? That is correct. Okay, and uh, just uh, through the power of suggestion, put some of his spirits out on the table and I ran across the street and picked up two bottles of the toasted coconut whiskey to bring home to my wife and her friends because I remember last year trying it out and saying, oh God, she's gonna love this. So congratulations on making good juice. Well, well we appreciate <laughs> your patronage and uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. So tell me what uh, what do you what do you make of all this? This all this bocce at Waterside Club, people traveling from around the state, around the country to be here? Yeah, well for me I love it. I'm you know the village administrator, we've got a unique vision for the village of Phoenix and this kind of fits right in as like a uh, a little hidden gem. And I think if uh, if what Gabe and the, the team here wants to do, we uh, and, and we as a village want to allow them to do comes together, it's gonna be a nice attraction and a, a destination spot for for everybody, I mean, I was here. I think at the what do you call it, the ambassadors or the uh, the ambassadors cup last year. Ambassadors yeah. cup, and there's you know, I personally met 
and became friends with the Malasani group out of uh, Ohio. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, I, great. I went, I went down there during the Kentucky Derby and brought some bourbon and whiskey. And Fantastic. They treated me like a family member, and we've we've communicated ever since. That's uh, Lou. Was it Lou? Lou. Yeah, yeah. Lou's a great Lou host. Lou and Ed. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were down there recently. Um, myself and Andy Zimmerman, who played with me at the Ambassadors Cup last year, did uh, development classes for some of their newer less experienced players okay um three days three classes we had 25 players in each class nice it was a really great outcome um and probably about 65 percent women too yeah we found out that a lot of the women members were wanting to get more involved but maybe a little intimidated and you know for some reason the guys weren't showing them the ropes <laughs> so they had to bring in outside help <laughs> Yeah, we, I, I brought my wife. We went down there for the Kentucky Derby, and they gave her a derby hat and, and uh, treated us like kings and queens. You know, learned about the sport, um, tasted some bourbons and whiskeys to people in the area, mm -hmm. and uh, I loved it. We had a blast. They yeah. treated us with, with uh, the utmost respect. So were you kind of inspired by how, you know, Molisani is part of that community in Euclid? Yeah, that was definitely an eye-opener, you know. It, it, the, 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 I guess the elephant in the room for this place is people think it's a gentleman's club. Uh -huh. People in the community think it's a gentleman's club. Yeah. No signage. Not a lot of windows. <laughs> yeah, no signage, blacked out windows, and a club. Uh, therefore, it's kind of a heavy lift to explain to people what it is. Right. And when somebody finally gets through the door, they're like, wow, I had no idea that it was to this caliber and this quality and, and the respect that people give you and the you know the sportsmanship and the professionalism mm -hmm. it's uh, but and I, and I learned that threefold down there because it was just much bigger there was i don't know there had to be a thousand people in there it's yeah it's a big scene there yeah yeah um well i think you guys are on the right track i mean opened in uh 2015 i think the club uh, waterside was does that sound right yeah i was here when they first opened they had um like you could book birthday parties and stuff for mm -hmm. kids and it was you know a much different type of court and they had you know it was open a little bit to the public so it's it's been yeah probably seven eight years so i, I don't know for sure but probably around 15. time flies time flies, time flies and they, they 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 transformed this place since then quite a bit it's mm -hmm. definitely evolved into uh, uh i don't know if i'd call it state of the art because I'm, I'm a newbie but state of the art courts that's for sure yeah the coleone courts are some of the best in the country um and I think in addition to the, you know, the, the materials, I think the, the hospitality is state of the art too. So whatever you experienced in Molisani, rest assured that that's exactly what we feel when we come here. Uh, well, thank you. We appreciate yeah. that. And everybody in the little village feels the, uh, you know, the, the impact that you guys bring, you know, whether you're buying stuff or just walking down the streets. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that as a village. Yeah. So bocce ball, you know, that's crazy to think because, I've been committed to the sport professionally for the last eight or nine years. And when I start hearing about villages and, and cities saying, you know, this can be a legit form of uh, you know, tourism yeah. um, or a staple or, or you know, something to put my town on the map in a different way, that just makes me ecstatic because that's, that's, we've, we love our sport. And I think you know why we do. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it hasn't necessarily got its you know, day in the sun yet in many respects. So to see, I was just in Southern Illinois, um, Heron and Murfreesboro, Illinois, which is in the southernmost tip. We're actually much closer to Arkansas than we were Chicago at the time, you know, to wow. give you an idea of yeah. how far south it is. And, uh, you know, afterwards the, the organizers were saying, you know, this was great. This tournament, the, the Southern Illinois Invitational brought in some serious dollars to our bars and our businesses and um so there's another side to it that i think we're just scratching the surface on yeah well i i will say that i think that you know you say you're committed to it and you love the sport anytime you you believe in what you're doing um with me with my whiskey i have the four sons toasted coconut whiskey and i believe in the product i believe in the distillery mm -hmm. and it's become so popular in you know bars and restaurants and liquor stores because i have a story to tell mm -hmm. and gabe lives and breathes this place here and tells a story about what he wants it to be and it's just it's just such a different uh outcome when somebody really truly believes in what they're doing yeah and, and, and he's he's a steward of the community 
when it comes to community involvement and giving back. So I, I love the place. Well, while we have the opportunity, why don't you tell us that story that you do have to tell about your four sons? <laughs> whiskey where did it come from what's the inspiration of the name i know i've heard this before but i don't know that all of our fans listening at home have well i don't know if they want to either <laughs> but so you know it's, it's i'm 57 years old so i've been drinking whiskey for probably what 38 years or so uh, and i know whiskey very well i know what i like and 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 i'm i'm not passionate about it but i i, I love it mm -hmm. and we have a local distillery, which has become the New York State's most awarded vodka uh, distiller. It's called Lock One Distilling Company. And a, and a couple of years ago, I had a kind of an, a, an epiphany. I said, I want to make my own whiskey. And I went to the master distiller at the, at the local distillery. And I said, I want to make a toasted coconut whiskey. And he's like, why in the hell would you want to make that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I, I love coconut. I love whiskey, and I think it's a good segue for newbie whiskey wannabe drinkers and women mm -hmm. to, to, to want to taste it. Mm -hmm. And I want to make it with such a proof and such a you know, quality of a wheat-based whiskey where bourbon drinkers will enjoy it as well. Yes. So we, you know, we collaborated, and it didn't take very long for us to come up with a recipe of now success. And then I had to come up with a name. And I was going to put my name on it. But, you know, I'm, I'm the village administrator. And village administrator promoting whiskey probably wasn't the greatest. Sure, uh, yeah. So, you, you know. Have I have to put your non-whiskey wearing hat on. Sometimes. That's right. Switch, yeah, yeah. switch hats. And, yeah. and, and I do have, I have four sons. I'm very proud of my four sons. Uh, I think on my bottle it says my, my four sons, Derek, Jesse, Remington, and James, are the biggest accomplishments of my life raising four perfect gentlemen. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. So I called it Four Sons, and it's called Four Sons Hometown Whiskey because I give back to my hometown with proceeds of the, the sales. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of, you know, it, it, it accelerated. I thought when I first started, maybe my friends and family would buy a bottle just to support me. Sure. And I'd go through a couple barrels and be done, and that's not the case. It became the number one or number two seller at the distillery. Can't keep it in liquor stores or on-premise in the central New York area. Mm -hmm. And in all, all walks of life, enjoy it. Scotch drinkers, bourbon drinkers, yeah. men, women. So it's, it's um, maybe a little legacy I'll leave back for my kids. We'll see. That's fantastic. Fun stuff. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate uh, I You know, I, it definitely made an uh, impact on me coming out here last year and tasting out those same whiskeys. Um, it's, so lock one, then, are you involved in the distillery additionally, or are they just the the vehicle for your spirit so um i do happen to you know know a fair amount of people and i bring a lot of people into the distillery and when my bottle became number one or number two seller in the distillery in the tasting room we have a, you know, a little liquor store yep i was just there <laughs> uh, there you go and uh they they approached me and said hey uh, jim do you have an interest in managing the place and of course my knee-jerk reaction was nope absolutely not <laughs> um, and then I thought about it, you know, it's, it's in my hometown, it doesn't conflict with my, my other businesses. And, and like I said earlier, I, I believe in my product, I believe in the distillery, I believe in the owners. And um, here I am a year later, I've been managing for a year. How about that? Yeah, so it's, um, I'm blessed to, to be able to do what I love in my hometown. And uh, our village was just awarded a four, $4.5 million New York Forward grant to uh, catapult us into uh, making our vision come to fruition. And so the, the distillery and, and the, and the, uh, the bonding club, is, uh, along with other private investors, um, are gonna get a, a portion of this grant and uh, you know, create more amenities and, and, and better things for our, our community members and residents to enjoy. So I love where cool. I live, love what I do. That's great. Is there anything beyond bocce and whiskey that you wanna uh, <laughs> celebrate from from phoenix here while we're at it um well again the recipient of the new york state new york forward grant is is, is pretty is a pretty big um feather in our cap of course uh, you know we've we hold the largest festival along the the erie erie canal called l'octoberfest mm -hmm. 
um, that's pretty big. That's always held in uh, either the last weekend of September or the first week in October. Um, just, just a great place to, you know, raise a family. Great school district. Uh, bedroom community with a little bit more amenities than the normal bedroom community. Up and coming uh, uh, establishments like this. You mm -hmm. know, these, are, the, the, this place here is a, is a, a perfect uh, example of you know, loving what you do and working hard at it and giving back to the community and growing and, and I just love it so nothing more to talk about for the village in sure. general just I, I love where I live that's great to hear well I'll tell you what Jim I I actually uh, was talking to the folks here about bringing that development class that we were speaking about earlier to Waterside this fall and it feels oh, wow. now like I better pick that Oktoberfest weekend while I'm at it huh well, you want to, we have about 8,000 people in the streets. Mm -hmm. We have over 100 vendors, 30, 40 food trucks, fireworks, helicopter rides, uh, bands throughout the uh, day from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And it's uh, this, this year it's on September 30th. Okay. Yeah. Great to know. Yes, sir. We look forward to you. We'll, 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 uh, we'll show you a good time. How's that? I'm, I'm in. Uh, yeah, if, if we can find enough people to take them away from the streets and have them in here to learn bocce then we'll do it oh we will yeah. we'll make it happen yeah all right my friend fantastic thanks for stopping by the booth you got it thank you all right take care all right thanks for having me of course nice job appreciate you we just go right here yeah it's fine you should get my contact from dave okay okay so back to the action galliano club um Foot on the gas the whole time. They're making really good decisions. SMS, who uh, came out the gate looking really good, has been a little cold. It's a great shot there by John. But this gives you an idea of kind of the pace of the game. Um, perfect point by Galliano. SMS, great shot, uh, but did not take the point back. So now they have to roll one in, and they have the ball disadvantage. Left a lot of meat on the bone there. I'll take it to the tape. Well, that was cool, talking with Jim from uh, Four Sons Distilling, village administrator here in Phoenix, New York. Having a lot of fun with this broadcast. Didn't know that I'd be interviewing the mayor and the village, village administrator and players from around the country, but... That's uh, the name of the game, going with the flow. Okay, gonna sneak by, took that point. Still a lot of room. There's a good one. That's the route. Maybe SMS can uh, get a little momentum in their favor here. Let's see. Ah, Nico. Nico takes a rip at it. I haven't seen much of Nico this game, mostly because we've been distracted by other happenings. Here's Nico rolling, 14 years old, youngest competitor in this tournament. One of the youngest competitors in the bocce scene. He's got a really nice Rafa. Um, a lot of forward momentum on his roll. Kind of walks into it. Probably tighten up those variables a little bit and he will be a dangerous player in no time. Here's Joe Peterson. He's looking for two. Came in a little hot. Only one. But they did stop the bleeding. That is one for SMS.
This is Steve Peterson, I believe. Steve with the deep Polino. Great first ball. Okay, no quit in SMS. Let's see if they can get a little rally going here. He's heard a lot from uh, Joe Maleche, Galliano Club, in the booth with us today. Look at that hit, huh? Hit and stick. Over on the other court, we've got an absolute barn burner between Troy, ICC, and Shore Street, 11 to 10. Probably could have saw that coming. Both teams are playing very similarly this week. Uh, meaning that they cruise to their to two victories, three victories in their group, and then both lost to Tokelana Club. So they've had the exact same um, three and one path thus far. Very similar differential in all those games too. Uh, so certainly an even match, evenly matched game. This one we thought would be a little more evenly matched. Let's see what SMS has to say here. Comes in off the wall, takes a great steep angle. Does it slow down? It does. Fantastic shot. There's Joe again, hiding behind the scoreboard. There we go. There's our guy. Just a bit outside. Take a look at that again. While we were watching the replay, Joe missed the second one in the same spot. So pretend like the replay was in real time and that's all you missed. Joe's partner, John, missed the spot too. Having a conversation. Ball coming in on the right-hand side. Looking to chip the back ball. Looking to chip. Looking for four. Wow, the medium speed chip shot with absolute confidence. Now we got a game. Now we got a game. Fantastic ball there, just what the doctor ordered. Here's Steve. Good roll. We're gonna get a chance to see Nico roll here. Skips it. No sweat. That's a good ball. Got to fight a little closer to the Polino. Really stays in that little gully there, which typically that ball would push off the wall, but it didn't quite get to the spot on the wall where it would push left. So he's going to do the same thing. He's maybe going to bring it in a little steeper. Actually, this one's going to come up a little short. Better line. Not quite. Momentum of the game is changing. Oh. Nico mid-roll gets called off. Maybe uh, just a settle down situation. Comes on the wall awfully early. It might chip. Ah, uh, it doesn't. Okay. A lot of room for SMS. And if they roll some good balls here, this game will be very tight. A little early on the wall. Might get around the lead ball. 
Might get around the lead ball. <laughs> Looks good to me. Looks good from back here, but truth be told, I do not have the best angle. They like this line better. They like this line better. Does it have enough juice? It does not. This one's got a little more pep in the step. And the chip off of his own ball leaves it just short. So that'll be two for SMS. That'll be two for SMS. It is 12 to nine. We'll update the score for you. This is in fact my last moments in the broadcast booth. Just when I was getting the hang of it. John Rodriguez, affectionately known as Johnny Rod around here. He's got a little room to point in. Let's see if Galliano can take that momentum back. Ah, rolls out a little. Looks like I have a friend. Hi, Dave. Hey, Al. I'm all packed up. I'm back. Oh, looks like I got a cable behind your back. We got a uh, tight tight game here. Big ball there by Johnny Rod. Um, so what you missed, we had a great conversation with Jim, the village administrator. We oh, excellent. Yeah, we also uh, watched Galliano jump out to a big lead. And then uh, in the last two frames, SMS has scored six to get right back in it. So it's now 12-9 from 12-3. 12-9, okay. Um, there's a good close-up. It's a fun shot, yeah? I like all, all the close-ups of the, the Pack of World logo. I like, uh, I like when only <laughs> one guy's in the shot. It's very, uh, very cinematic. Yeah, take a screenshot now, folks. That ball's a little spicy. Does it stop? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think That's it's good. in, though. That's good. No, it's still rolling. It's in. It's a hard maybe. So you were saying, uh, who would you have next to you uh, for the past uh, 20 minutes or so? Uh, Jim from uh, the village administrator from Phoenix, New York. Oh, that's great. responsible for the uh, Four Sons uh, toasted coconut whiskey, which is what I ran across the street to purchase. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So. Sure you had something to talk about. Yeah, I'll have absolutely. to listen in later. This week is making this live stream with Michael and Alex, and then next weekend, I guess I'll be watching it. <laughs> <laughs> See what I miss, because I haven't been here all the time. This is uh, Galliano for the win. This is Joe, who's been in the booth with us quite a bit. Uh, he catches a little of his own ball. Uh, so he's got to do one more. A lot of room. I expect him to make this. He's, he's looking at it. Looks like a good line. Yeah, I think that's good. He's got to slow down a little. That's a ball game. Oh, that's a ball game. So Galliano. Um, Let's get the camera aimed up so we can see the people's faces, see some smiles. Yes, sir. Maybe some, maybe some frowns. I don't know. A little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, good. I like it when you say yes, sir, to me, Alex. <laughs> uh, more well, of that, please. <laughs> Michael's been whipping me into shape this week. Uh, it's rubbing off on you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to serve. 
That's good. So Galliano Club wins it. Um, great timing for me because I do have to pack up. That was my last broadcast of the day. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, it's I guess, been an absolute blast. Yeah, it's been uh, a lot of fun being yeah. out here with you. Give me yeah. a little. Yeah. Left you hanging there for a second. It's all good. A um, lot of chatting. You know, it's been kind of whirlwind. Like, we're jumping from one thing to the other. When we walk away from the booth, we're usually walking into a conversation with a fellow bocce enthusiast. Sure, yeah. Uh, never finished a cigar. <laughs> and we get about halfway through and jump back in. So, all good. I managed to finish one last night, but nice. it was a, a short little one. It's been a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be talking to you folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I promise we'll keep getting a little better and better, a little more comfortable with the controls, a little more comfortable with the flow of the broadcast. Uh, anything else to add? I already did my parting words. Well, yeah, right um, I'd just like to add that uh, you guys need to keep those comments coming in the chat and smash that like button and subscribe button if you'd like to uh, see more of these in the future. Um, if you turn the little bell icon on and on YouTube, then... Uh, uh, I think it'll give you a notification when BBN goes live. Uh, BBN's got plans for helping to grow the sport of bocce um, through um, just awareness uh, and sharing the love of bocce with your friends, your family, um, maybe even your coworkers, your foes. Share bocce with anybody and they can watch an uh, amateur quality stream that we do here on uh, the BBN. Um, and I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's pretty good quality. I think it's been pretty enjoyable. Uh, I'll have to read some of the comments back later. It's um, awesome. I've had a great time with you, Alex, and we are going to hand these microphones off to Michael. Yeah, we'll probably, um, go, uh, probably hit you on the, with the waiting screen for a little bit. Sure. Um, yeah. But and Alex and I are headed to a tournament in Chicago. We'll catch the tail end of it. It's the Right Beast Cider Tournament at uh, Cidery. And uh, that's our Always next stop. Bocce. Yeah, bocce on bocce on bocce. So, Can't get away from it. Yeah, thanks for listening, folks. We'll thanks, catch everyone. you next time.
vocês.
And we're back. Yeah, let me figure out what's going on here. So. This is Waterside versus American Butch. Um, um, can you figure out the team colors? And why don't you... Sent my father on a scouting mission. He's going to figure out the team colors for us. Somebody's winning and somebody's losing. Waterside is red. Yeah, over here. So if you want, you can stand up and look if you have to. What do you want me doing? Joe figured that one out. The right. Same as usual. I'll do the basics. The stuff that requires less insight, and then you analyze. If you want, you can go through our. Go through our packets. Figure out what's going on with the brackets. If you want the consequences of this game. All that good stuff. Any information you can figure out. I'd rather look at the uh, bracket over there, I think. Okay, go ahead. Take it's off, right? Yeah, it's off. Take a picture of it if you want. Good hit for Peter Rubito. Yeah, you want to win, right? If you win, want to win, we got to win three more. Okay, so ABC is out of balls. Looks like uh, two balls left, I think, for Waterside. <laughs> Keith Visno. Good hit. And his partner, Ryan Baruso, should be able to tie the game with this ball. Five, five. We will get a little background info on this game, the consequences of this game, all that good stuff very shortly. <coughs> Dino Franceschi, Waterside Club president. Good looking ball. Tony Quattrochi likes it. Great ball. All right, joining me in the booth now, my father, Lou. Hello. Nice to be here. It's been a busy booth this weekend. It has been an active booth. So nice for those guys from Chicago, for Alex and Dave to come and, and uh, do part of the broadcast. Yeah, Alex and Dave uh, just left. They had to catch a flight home, so I'm not sure what's going to happen next time we have to play. Um, They're going to have to fly back, maybe? Yeah, we might have to get them an Uber. Hmm. Two balls down for ABC. It's at least a three-ball waster to start it off, start off the frame from Dino. 
Have you mentioned that ABC is uh, so far one and three in this tournament? I haven't. Why don't you uh, give us a little background? Well, they're one and three, and uh, the water. So this is the final game of group play for both teams. Wow! Look at that ball from Brad. The uh, Waterside Club is two and two. They started out zero oh and two, and they've won their last two games. One of which I refed, and uh, they played very, very smartly and very well. So it looks like. In that group, no team has gone undefeated. This is Group B, correct? This is Group B. Mount Vernon is three and one. Um, the SMS from Seneca Falls finished at three and two. Mount Vernon is playing against Holly on the other court. Yeah, and Holly is two and two. So that's a that's a critical game for. Who advances to the next round? And what about this one? What are these teams at? The American Bunch Club is one and three. So they're done. They're likely done. And Waterside is two and two. So this is a big game for Waterside. So the Galliano Club wound up two and three. The Galliano Club from Rome. The um, like I said, so the, S the SMS wound up three and two. Mount Vernon's in, SMS is in. They both have three wins. Oh, Frankie! Yeah. And then there's two, for two and two, there's Holly. There's Waterside. Holly and Waterside. Holly and Waterside are two and two. So, so if I do the math with the points here. Galliano wants Holly and Waterside to both lose. If that happens, then... All three teams would be two we'll and three. Be two and three. And they would go to point differential. They would go to point. And Galliano is right now, is at, they're at minus 14 points. Um, Holly is looking like. So if either the other teams are positive, then it's not possible for Galliano. Right. If, right. If either Holly or Waterside wins, then. Well, are the, are, uh, uh, yes. If either of them win, but if either of them are positive, are at zero, or better in points. And both teams point, uh, both games, teams have scored points. So it's not possible for anybody to lose by 14 at this point, so. Right now, going into this side, Waterside's minus three points. Okay, and they've scored five, so it's not possible. And Holly. So Galliano's out. Holly is. Plus four, plus four plus points. Four. So Galliano is dead in the water. Uh, they might not even be in the building anymore. Yeah, th I think they are. I think I saw. I thought I saw Nico. It's a beautiful day outside by the canal. You got some picnic tables out there. There's a lot of players out there. Now, now that I look around, I do not see any of the Galliano players. Yeah, they might have done the math themselves. So Galliano's out. It's going to come down to uh, Waterside and versus uh, Waterside and Holly. Waterside and Holly. Uh, so on the other court, if one team wins and the other loses, then whoever wins will advance. And if both teams win or both teams lose, then we'll come down to points where Holly leads right now, plus four, right? Waterside's minus three. Yes. And. Holly is playing against Mount Vernon, who's already in. They're three and one. So and the score is six to one. I don't know who's ahead. I can go find out if you want. I'll I can keep an eye on that game over there. Um, yeah, we can it might be interesting. Figure out if you watch the end of the frame. I'll just wait, wait for the end of a frame, see who scores, see who throws ball in. Okay. So well, it's Jack. seven to one. Jack's throwing. So Mount Vernon is winning. Mount Vernon is winning seven to one. And this game is now six to five. Waterside just took the lead. Well, at the beginning of the tournament, we had a lot of uh, games that were not that close. And, but now, boy, in the last few rounds, I'd say we've had a lot of close games. So from group A, three teams, our three teams are set. Tokelana, 
takes the one seed. I imagine they won their last game. So I think they were 5-0. and um, I can tell you. Yeah, they were 5-0. and They won their last game. Against Babylon. It's Ryan Barusa, Rosa Ball. 14-5. 14-5. So, so they're, they're up 47 points. So they were 5-0. and Those upstarts from the Troy ICC went 4-1. and one. And so they're the Troy the ICC is the two seed, and the three seed is uh, Short Street. Is going to be Short Street at yep. three and two. They're three and two. They're plus twenty-one points. Not that that matters. And we were plus twenty-nine points. Yeah, both teams were um, three and one going into the both Troy ICC, us and Short Street were uh, three and one entering what was b our both of both teams final game in group play and the Troy ICC uh, we won that game 14 to 10 so we'll take the two seed they'll take the three either way it doesn't really matter uh, we will be split up so we will be Troy ICC will be in one game there'll be four teams that play in the quarters in the quarterfinals that'll be the three through six seeds overall I imagine we'll be the three seed if, at four and one. Probably. Yeah, because. Yes, we have to be. So we'll, yep. we'll be the three seed. Short Street will probably, uh, we'll see. Either way, we won't play Short Street. So we'll play the lower seed of. We'll play whichever. We'll play the three seed from group B. Right. And it's either going to be Holly. Who will be either the fifth or sixth seed overall. Yes. That'll be Holly or Waterside. And then winner of those two games will go on to play the winners of the groups Tokelana and Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon. Yeah. Well. Is well, it possible for Mount Vernon not to win? If Mount Vernon loses this game it's possible it might I'd have to take we'd a minute to do yeah, the math, do but the points. it's possible that they could come in, not not come in first. Okay, so Group A is set. Group B is uh, up in the air a little bit. Peach shot a little wide, right? So last ball of the frame here for ABC. They've got one point sitting there. Let's see if they can take the lead or should be able to at least tie it. Pete's going to shoot this ball Okay, again. so Mount, Mount Vernon. Got a hit. Even though they're three and one, that's a big hit from Peter. They are down one point. And yeah, uh, overall, say it again. Even though they're three and one, Mount Vernon, they're negative one overall. They're negative one overall in points. Yeah, it's a big thing in these round robin tournaments. It often comes down to point differential. Every point counts. So I'm going to guess that if Mount Vernon loses to Holly that Mount Vernon is not going to come in first in their group. It's either going to be Holly or Waterside if Waterside it'll, wins. It'll be Holly. Waterside would have to win by eight. And and the other team has seven already, so. Right. Whoever wins that game between Mount Vernon and Holly will be the one seed. You're right. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, that's that. That is what makes these uh, these round robin games interesting. So I haven't been watching much of this game. I see Brad's up there now, and. Could be a measure, huh?
Hines says that water side ball needs one inch to be the point. Gabe's going to shoot. Nice shot. Two points there, sitting for Waterside. Oh, why? Oh, okay, I see what's going on. Frank Carino. All is going to be short. So last ball for ABC. Waterside will have double hammers. Ball looks pretty short. Oh, never mind. Hard to tell sometimes looking at the screen. That ball's long. So Waterside sitting two, double hammers. Dino Franceschi with the third ball for Waterside. That ball's got to stop. That's gone. Let's see if Gabe can make him pay. Ball ain't short either. That's going to be good, I think. Hopefully he doesn't. Oh. Might have moved Paulino too much towards the ABC ball. Might have sold that front point. Either way, they'll have at least two. And they'll re retake the lead. On that other court, seven to three now. Mount Vernon over Holly. Holly has come back from, uh, they had a tremendous comeback earlier today. I don't remember who it was against, but they were way down. They had a tremendous comeback. It was a good game. And they won the game. I wish I could remember who it was against. I was over there watching. Call is two points for Waterside. So, dragged Paulino a little bit too far, but they had two and they got two, so. No harm done. So Ryan Baruso leading off for Waterside. I'm sure that you've talked before in the broadcast about the Waterside being the home club and, and just how what great hosts they've been and what the mm -hmm. facilities have been like and the, the hospitality this weekend. Yeah, I can't say enough about uh, oh my goodness these guys as players, as hosts, as friends. Couldn't ask for a better uh, host. Nice ball from Jeff O'Hare. Uh, that waterside ball is a little over two feet behind Paulino. Keith and Ryan. Ryan's a much more experienced player. Ryan is rolling. Keith is shooting. I imagine they'll favor uh, Ryan to try and beat this point, especially since it's behind Paulino. Makes it possible to rest on their ball. Well, my experience watching that team is they like to leave Ryan if, if they can for the last ball. So okay. they, they might have Keith. Yeah, it looks like Keith's lining up to shoot. Keith hits it solid. Leaves their point. Perfect shot. In the meantime, in the other court, the score has gone to eight to three. Now that the room is emptying out, I think we're gonna have to have Dino mute the TVs again. So I can hear my echo. Good ball for ABC. Do you want me to ask him to? That's the point. Can you just go do it yourself? Sure. The remote's right there. Maybe I can reach it? No. No, it's 30 feet away. Oh, I thought you meant this one. 
That's a phone. It's the little little black remote over there. Great ball from Ryan. So it's three balls down for Waterside. This is the third ball from Peter Rabito of American Bocce Club. Um, Pete doesn't want Paulino here, even though he's lining up in a position that would favor Paulino. Yeah, good shot. Didn't want Paulino there because uh, they got a decent point. You want to leave your point. So it worked out well. That's what he wanted. Here's Keith Bisno with ball number four for Waterside. Body language, hard to read. Great ball. Wow. Drag a little Paulino to the other ball? No, not quite. Good ball behind Paulino. This ball number four for ABC is Pete, so he's going to shoot. Surprised he doesn't take a little more angle. Got himself a little bit further from hitting Paulino. Yep, so hit Paulino, and he gave the other team two points. That's why you want to avoid Paulino there. measure for the third point that's not even close that ABC balls in by about 10 inches hard to tell sometimes with the lines on the court sometimes it can be deceiving so yeah two points Maybe it wasn't 10 inches, but measuring is free. Doesn't hurt to measure. 10-7 Waterside. Dino Franceschi leading off, center of the court. About uh, 42 feet down, maybe. Probably a little more. 44. Dino's first ball. Great ball. It's, that's just about a perfect ball. Any closer to Paulino and it would be an easier shot. But because there's so much space between the ball and Paulino, it gives the shooter room to miss just like that. Right between them. Well, Holly has scored another point. It's eight to four on the other score on the other court. Brad Thayer's ball is going to be a couple inches long. Three ball waster so far to start off the frame for Dino. We've seen that before. Brad's second ball. No. I don't know if that's going to come in from the side. It is creeping left a little bit. It's going to be short, though. So, decent defense. Ball number four is going to be Frank's. He's looking at it. I don't hate a shot here. You got two decent points in there. But he's just going to roll. What do you think, Dad? What do you do here? I would have no. shot that. that. That's a decent blue ball back there. Yeah, you don't want to combo on your own, but also... No. That, that ball doesn't do him much good. You know? and, and the uh, Waterside Club has a clear shot at the Paulino. Yeah. So now they have to decide if they're going to put a ball down. No, they're, they're out of balls. Court. Oh, they are out of balls. I'm sorry. ABC is out of balls. Waterside's got triple hammers. Oh, yeah. Gabe's looking at Paulino. He's wiping his hands off. 
Gabe's good at those Paulino shots to, to come in for a lot of, like, to end games. I, I just remember him doing that a few different times. It's like he's talking about it. Yes. Gabe's saying, uh, if you're going to shoot, you got to shoot now. He is shooting. Call is to shoot either or. Uh, yeah, okay, makes sense. Missed to the left. Better than missing to the right, combo on his own ball, I suppose. Dino can shoot too. Oh yeah. But he's not gonna. Is that gonna come down? I don't think so, so. Wow, three balls back. Yeah, ABC might be dodging a bullet here. Perhaps a missed opportunity for Waterside. We'll see if he comes back to bite him. In the other court, eight to four now in favor of Mount Vernon. Gabe Quattrochi. It's gonna be wide left, I think. So three balls back and the point for Waterside. And they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, ABC is going to escape. They're, rather, they're going to leave. Waterside is going to leave several points on the board. Well, another frame just ended on the other court, and it's eight to six now. So Holly scored two, obviously. I wish I could see more of that game from here. I can't. Pretty deep Paulino from Ryan. Ball looks a little bit short. It's going to be about four feet short, a little to the right. Maybe not four, about three, three and a half feet. Jeff O'Hare. Telling his ball to slow down. Oh, look at this. Oh, uh, no, somebody else told his ball to slow down. He was. Uh, <laughs> There's three Long Island teams here, and, and or, or two Long Island teams, and a team from down near the city. And they bring a lot of uh, spirit to the game. They like to needle each other. It's a lot of fun. Big mess from Keith. This will be third ball for Waterside. You gotta shoot it again. You're up 11-7, shoot it again. Right? Maybe not. Uh, they don't have a very good point in there, you know. Yeah, actually. You're up 11-7, just Give him the point. I disagree with myself. That's a beautiful Great ball shot. from Ryan. Wow. Beautiful shot. That's a good defensive ball. Yeah, ABC still got the point. Waterside will have to use their fourth ball. But it's going to be real hard for ABC to get more than one point here. Gabe's. Uh, Surveying the situation. You know, sometimes in a situation like this, you almost kind of want the other team to bump their ball in for a good point. So that gives you a reason to shoot and open everything up. Especially if you've got a, a few balls back. You Which mean as, as ABC, you would want, even though you have the point, you wouldn't mind if Waterside was to bump their ball in, no. steal the point? Right. No, I wouldn't mind because you just crack them open. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got three balls back, right? So that would be uh, 
But then again, you don't mind if they don't beat the point. That's a real nice ball from Keith. Going to be That's beautiful about ball. a foot short of the Paulino. Oh. That complicates things a little bit. It does. I think the thing to do is come in off the left board. What do you, uh, what do you think of that? I, I, you know what, I, w I like shooting those. Oh, I like that too. But I have a feeling they're going to come off the left board. I mean, if you're going to roll, you'd come off the left board. Yeah, if you're going to roll, I like the left board. Personally, uh, three balls back. Um, Can't see it on the screen now. There, first shot take, first ball take. A, I think take a shot at the left side of that front ball. Yeah. Might. It could be a, a brilliant shot or it could be disastrous. Could be, but you got two balls to fix it. Well, nobody's leaving the court there, so it looks like they're going to roll. Yeah, they're saying open it up. Well, Pete's sitting down. Frank wants, Frank's calling for a shot. Pete doesn't want to shoot. But a shooter that doesn't want to shoot, shooter on one side wants him to shoot, shooter <laughs> on the side with the balls doesn't want to shoot. Yeah, he's rolling. Jeff's going to roll. That ball, I don't think it's going to end up anywhere near. You know, something like that, you could put a ball a little on the left and a little short. Something for you to, for your partner to play on. Not trying to beat the point outright at first with the first ball, just put something that you can play on by rolling on it and, and possibly bumping it in or having your ball go in. Good line, it's going to be uh, long though. One ball left for One ABC. They have to be very careful. Frank's calling for a shot now. That's, I, I don't think so. That ball's short. Yeah. So, oh, one point. Three balls back. They had a point. They got a point. I see that uh, Mount uh, Vernon scored again. It's nine to six over there. Mount Vernon against Holly. And the way the math works out, if my math is correct, as we've said a couple minutes ago, the winner of that game is going to win their group. And they'll get a bye in the knockoffs. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to guess that Brad, knowing Brad, I'm going to guess he's not thrilled about leading off. I know he likes to, he likes to shoot. In fact, his license plate on his vehicle is Volo, the Volo Mobile. got that dumping style, you know, which I've never found works for me very well. I think your knees are in better shape than Brad's. Well, that's true. He uses the... 20 uh, years of being a tennis pro. Yeah, he does use a chicken foot partly because of his knee. That's true. Looking ball from Dino. If it stops, that's close. Looks like Mount Vernon scored again. 
with the two-point frame, they're ahead 11 to six. So Mount Vernon is three points from closing out that bracket mm -hmm. and advancing straight to the semis. I don't know if Gabe's ball reached. in is the call ABC so water sides out of balls blue or ABC has a point and two balls back Frank Carino it looks like a good line dangerous ball makes two points makes two points for ABC chance to tie the game with this ball Going on the outside, maybe? Is that what it looks like? Yeah, Pete told him to stay on the outside well away from that red ball. Mm -hmm. So played it safe with that one. He's not going to get another point. But two points for ABC. Good roll from Frank. Well, I look behind us, and I see some of the uh, Quattrochi family. Very nice. of our teammates is uh, see if we can see him, <laughs> see him back there. <laughs> there he is. That's our cousin Fiore Sheldon in the background taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his chair. Yeah. One of the few players who would think to bring a, a sleeping chair. Not a custom chair, though. I have seen him at uh, tournaments when I was younger in custom chairs yeah he's had a few over the years custom uh, customized to the the name of uh, your team right i've had a few good names yeah he had a director's chair once that uh, I, I don't remember the name that was on it good ball from ryan one ball down for each team See if Jeff, Jeff barely kept his first ball on the court. That one ain't short either. That's going to be long. Well, I see a couple of messages here from uh, Alan Knox. That's yeah. from a little while ago. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're Alan still on, said, Alan. Alan says he's, got, he's watching the gopher tear up his backyard. but he doesn't feel motivated to deal with it. So, four ball waster. Another frame on the other court. From Ryan. And, I'm sorry. Looks like Mount Vernon scored again. It's 12 to six. Peter Rabito, final ball for the American Bocce Club out of Long Island, New York. That's gonna be close. Ref calls it in. Gabe wants to look. Pete's blocking the camera. <laughs> the call is that it's in. So Waterside, three balls back. Gabe says, come around and touch ours or shoot it. Those are the options. I think you shoot it. Yep, Keith's going to shoot. Yeah. Seen a handful of frames from both teams where one team has several balls back and just failing to capitalize so far on most of those. Yeah, the call is the hit again, so Keith will take another shot at it. Missed to the right that time. 
See if you can it, adjust. Didn't sound good. Might get lucky. Two blue sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan's going to have to take a shot. I don't know if Ryan has shot yet this game. He's a very good shooter, though. Gibbs pointing out several options. Shoot Pauline. Shoot their own ball in the corner, maybe get lucky. Shoot ball, Pauline. Maybe something good will happen. Either way, you're gonna need a fortunate break. What do you see, Dad? I think I would shoot ball or Paulino. You know, I don't even hate shooting this ball on the left, your own ball. But yeah, I, th I think I'd go ball, Paulino. Yeah, at least shooting Paulino, basically. There it is, swing and a miss. ABC escapes with two points from that frame somehow. Wow. Another wow. instance where a team, Waterside in this case, has three balls back and unable to capitalize. and gave the shoot. This is a big shot. Good hit. Needed to hit that one. Surprised he didn't yell at that ball. He likes to yell at his shots a lot. They're shaking hands on the other court. Looks like Mount Vernon oh, won. Wow. So Mount Vernon will be the one seed. Mount Vernon will be the one seed. Holly loses eight points. So 14 to six. So if so Waterside wins this, so right now Waterside is plus one over Holly. Because Holly was plus four, Waterside was minus three. Holly lost by eight. So Holly is minus five. Waterside is minus four. No, they were minus. No, minus th Holly is minus four, Waterside is minus three. Right. So if Waterside wins this game, wow. If Waterside wins this game, though, the two seed, if they lose this game by more than one point, they'll be the three seed. If they lose by one point, these teams will be tied. Not sure. I, I imagine the next tiebreaker would be head-to-head. -head. No, it's not. No, it's not. The next tiebreaker is uh, after point differential, it's points four. Points scored. Yeah. Points scored which would be the same. Maybe not. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Big shot for Frank Carino. <laughs> Narrowly avoids moving those other balls. Good ball from Dino. Beat that point. Tough to do. Forces. Waterside will have the hammer. Carino again. Wow. Once again, somehow gets it between Paulino and his ball without moving anything. That's game. And that's game. Yeah, that's game. Cleared him out. ABC set two points there. 14-11. My replay is interesting. Either way, 
So, ABC won that game. Are they out anyways? Or no, are they? They're now two and three. They're now two and three. Waterside is now two and three. Now Waterside is now two and three. So it's a tiebreaker between those two teams. And Holly. Holly is now two and three also, right? Is now two and three. And so there was Waterside. An, and Galliano was two and three, but they were. Four, they were out of it. They were 14, 14. points. Yeah. So Waterside just lost by. By three. Well, yeah, Waterside just lost by three. So they'll be minus six. No, minus seven. Minus six? They'll be minus six. Holly is minus four. So Holly will take the two seed. Waterside will take the three seed at minus six. Yeah, let me double check Holly's math here. So that means we play Waterside. We're the two seed. And We're the two seed. We're the three seed overall. They are the, I, I don't know what, either they're either the five or six seed overall, depending on what Short Street ended up at. But Short Street was in our group, so we won't play them first round of the knockoffs. So we'll be against, it'll be uh, Waterside versus Troy ICC and Short Street versus Holly Butch Club. And winner of those games will advance to play the one and two seeds overall, Tokelana and, um, and Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon. These lights are bright. Yes, they are. You can see it on the camera. They look like ghosts. So a short break in the action. I imagine it may take them uh, a little bit longer to. The good news. Well, Fior I see Fury's awake. On the phone. <laughs> can we see him, back, back, there? back there? Can you see him back there? Yeah, we can see him. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we're going to be up in a minute. Yeah, I'm not sure who's going to, how we're going to. Nobody here knows how to run the cameras. Hey, Chris. Thanks for tuning in. We're good. How you doing? Shout out to the Lexington Butch but Association, the Schmilewskis, and the Hilvers. Chris and Kathy, yeah, Mike and Holly, nice. Some of our top, I believe those are top 25 ranked, top 20 maybe, uh, UBA ranks. For those who are unfamiliar with the UBA, uh, it's an organization that Alex and I would have been nice to talk about this when Alex was here, but it's, it's an organization that Alex and I established to uh, unify some of these tournaments and uh, provide some structure for the sport. One, our first, our introduction to the community is through a ranking system, which is now live. It's very much unofficial as we just launched. Uh, we're in data, data collection mode. So until we have lots of results, it's hard, you know, there's no ranking system that's going to be uh, really representative of a true ranking, you know, truly the top players until you have a lot of data to, you know, filter out the out, outliers, um, the anomalies. But yeah, unifiedbocce.com. If you'd like to look at the uh, the rankings, the tournament schedule, if you'd like to register your own tournaments to be eligible for UBA rankings. It's very simple. We've made it as simple as possible. There's no money involved, nothing like that. Just go on the, on the website, unifiedbocce.com. And if at the bottom of the homepage, uh, there is a section you can fill out. It's all pretty simple. Probably takes about five minutes to fill out to register your tournament to be eligible for the rankings. The only requirements are it has to be open to the public and there has to be 12 or more teams. And then at the end of the tournament, we just need you to send us uh, an accurate roster of all the players and a picture of the final results of the final bracket so that we can figure out how to assign the points to everybody. Have you talked about the, the uh, podcast that you were interviewed? No, also, for? yeah, check out, uh, we, we went into a lot more detail about this on the uh, Beach City Bocce podcast. 
Al, I, I was uh, episode one was myself, Alex Guerra, and uh, Mark Beagle of the Hunt, Huntington Beach Bocce Club. Uh, that's also on YouTube at Beach City Bocce. And yeah, we uh, talked for about an hour about the about the broadcasting and about the Unified Butch Association, the UBA. So a lot more information on that. Uh, I'm sure that, that we're going to be up on that podcast. Yeah, we're going to have to play very shortly here. And they're doing the math over there, but I think uh, I think we've got it right. So who's not in? What's her name? Marianne DeSantis. Marianne DeSantis. Hey, Marianne. Hello. Thanks for lending us Guy for a couple days. You want to say something? Uh, here. Hey, honey, I hope you're on. Uh, I brought you a little message here to the desk, and uh, they're getting a kick out of it. I told them you never watch Bocce. Uh, you support me, but you don't really watch it. But uh, the, uh, the camera work was fantastic. It's coming from you. And love you. And thank you for watching. Thanks, Guy. Guy DeSantis. Yeah, the number two seed overall, I think, Mount Vernon. Chris, good to hear from you, too. Attorney, that you want to use EBA structures a little different, so you have to figure it out. Sure. Very simple. Um, if you want, you can send an email with some of this. Um, uh, some details to uh, unifiedbocce at gmail.com. And anybody else, if you want to reach out with any questions or anything about the ranking system unifiedbocce at gmail.com. Also, if you go on the Unified Butch website, um, at the bottom of the page, at the bottom of all the pages, there's a spot to put in your email, and you can put, it in, put in your email there, and we send out regular uh, rankings, rankings updates and tournament results. Um, and we try to include short summaries about the tournaments if, if we have them, if they're provided to us, if we were at the tournament, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Chris, send an email if you'd like, or um, I think my dad has your phone number or something. I could probably text you. Either way, we'll figure it out. Question is, who's on Tokelana today? Tokelana had a switch. Joe Bart was playing yesterday. Today, it's Paul Colicchio, Russell Johnson, Mason Hairston, and Paul Lewis III. And they are undefeated so far, 5-0, and plus 47-point differential. So they have a bye. Um, I have to go play. We have nobody here that can run the cameras. It is a little complicated. Um, maybe Mason. Mason has done this before. Maybe Mason would want to. Let me see.
switch on the screen. So if, if these two are in sync, cam one and cam one, if you use the tracer? Uh huh. If I need to? If it's cam two, cam two? I can. Exactly, yeah. This controls the cameras, right. so this changes which camera you're controlling, right. and this switches on the screen. And, and, and what is your. <laughs> There's no latency. So as soon as the, uh, you're watching the motor roll, it's hit? Yeah, you can switch. It's easiest to watch the timing on screen okay. rather than watch it placing. You just watch. Watch this, right? So if I was, uh, if I was here to switch, right? Have a small one on the game screen. I'll set up. Go ahead, hit some buttons if you want. Yeah. And then you, you know, you'd want to move it, move it into position. I'm just going to set up the scoreboard. So green is going to be who's that? Short Street. Or green is going to be. Oops, I did the wrong name. Red's going to be SMS. So they're red. Just started adjusting right now. So, uh, with Michael uh, 
Skeldone on court number two with SMS uh, playing Holly. I have uh, Brad Thayer here sitting on the, uh, the microphone, and I'm going to be the rookie running the, the cameras on the court, so I apologize for my, my delay in posting and moving the monitors back and forth. Got two rookies here. Two rookies. <laughs> so on, the, uh, on court number one, we have SMS, which finished uh, second in group B. And we have Tokolana Club. On court number two, we have uh, Troy playing Holly. So we'll try to keep track of the scores on both uh, courts. going to be, uh, we're just catching up here. The red balls are going to be the SMS team and the green balls are going to uh, be Short Street uh, Project Club. Mike Schaff uh, rolling a ball. It looks like it's going to sit in nicely. Nice ball, Mike. Barnett's going to roll in his final ball for SMS. That's short, too. Hard to get in there if you get too much wall. That's got some pace. <laughs> oh, that'll work. He's going to go down the side again. That's not going to get there. No. And I'm going to measure for three.
Okay, three green. Steve Peterson. Very nice sip. Also took out his own ball. Let's see who's going to sit right back in. John. Here goes Jill. <laughs> he shoots more Polinos out of the court than anybody <laughs> I've ever seen. He's got a rocket for an arm. He's gonna have Not to that again. time, though. <laughs> Take a peek to see what he was looking at. Uh, in a prior tournament, I ducked, shot went, Polino went right over my forehead. <laughs> That's Joe Peterson at his best. Let's go ahead and tie the score up to 3-3. Three, three. Morris Tuttle's first ball. That's the lead point. That's a very nice ball. He's going to be sitting, oh, I say about six to eight inches out front of that ball. Mike Schraff rolling in. It's gonna go just a little bit long. I say carry about a foot past it. Morris uh, is gonna go ahead and roll in.
That's got some speed. Pretty steady today. It's usually hitting. Lag that ball in. Hard to see sometimes if they're holding the balls rather than leaving them on the rack. That's going to go by. Oh. Yeah, he lucked out there. Yeah, nice little bump. That's a friendly kiss. No, that was nice. Yeah. Like I said earlier, uh, Bill had lagged a, a ball in. Uh, to hold the point, but he's, he's a solid hitter. He's been hitting yep, well. He has. This will be one point. So we have SMS sitting four with a short, I'm sorry, short treat sitting four and SMS uh, sitting three. Did I just switch these around? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I did, yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll fix that. Yeah. yeah. Whoop. Thank you. Caught me by surprise there. I thought it was different. There we go. We need to put a color down here. Yeah, that's a great idea. You had some very fine points in that last match. Oh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> Still a loss though, right? It was a tough game. It was fun to play in. Uh, I thought Frank, uh, your partner there, uh, hit well. Those last the, two yeah. shots, yeah. That, they went out clean, which yeah. had to make those. Oh, Joe. Unusual misses for him. This is actually Joe's father, Steve. Nice to see some father son combinations. Zoom on that. I'm going to try. Now we can see. It's a beautiful ball. Well, they have two balls left. All right. So, 
So just to uh, get you caught up here, we have uh, SMS uh, in Short Street here on court number one. SMS was uh, second place in Group B, and Short Street was uh, third third place in Group A. And on court number two, we have Troy and Holly. Troy was uh, second in Group A, and Holly was third in Group B. Once the the winner of the uh, group game advances to play the group winner, the highest seed will play the, the lowest remaining team. Playing short now. Very nice. That's a tweener. Not anymore. <laughs> When we use uh, score sheets in USBF tournaments, we have like a sheet and we'll mark red and green as we're scoring. Makes, makes it easy to keep track of who's who. Makes the point. They have a, quite a bit of room to get in there, though. slow it down. <laughs> Caught a smile on Billy and Cameron for that one. For those interested on uh, court two, it scores three to three between Troy and Holly. And Michael is shooting. I didn't hear the sound of a click. No. <laughs> we would need plexiglass walls to see what's going on over over there, unfortunately. <laughs> right. 
little heavy. It was a good ball, though. He had the right line. Just uh, weighted it just a little bit too much. Looks like he's going to do the same. Ooh, this is really fast. You better hit something. Well, <laughs> that worked. Three out of that. Well, you'd like to call those shots skill, but not really. Okay. <laughs> when you roll that hard and hit things move around, you don't know what's going to happen. Fleeting moment there. I, th I thought maybe he was actually intentionally doing that. For being the last ball in hand, that was uh, risky. Oh, he stuck it. Well, he changed the color. That made up for the first miss. That's looking pretty good. Oh, yeah, perfect line, perfect speed too. Oh, that's right there. Yeah, Joe's out of ammunition, so his father's gonna. Great shot. Yeah. That's uh, that's father. That's father showing son how to. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should switch positions, right, Joe? <laughs> Yeah, very nice. Nice ball, nice speed. Oh, 
Bobby from Marsh. He was saying he's been away from the game for quite a while now. He's finally has family That's out of the nest and time to play more bocce. Three feet short. I would be surprised. Yeah, that's not going to get there. Kind of surprised he went over that way. You start to see a little bit of the play uh, towards the end of the day. They've been playing uh, game after game after game, and you know, fatigue starts to set in, and everybody's having a good time. Uh, a little bit of that competitive spirit too. The ball drifts left, the ball drifts right. They got real, real dialed in here pretty soon. <laughs> We'll see here. Yeah. Let's see what Mike can do. Nice no, short. Right. Well, we had a nail biter game. Very close. It's enjoyable when you have close, close matches. That was a battle back and forth. Certain players who were dialed in, and then towards the end, uh, other players stepped up, right? So it was back and forth, uh, frame to frame. Close score, do you think? It ended up 14-12, uh, something like that? Or? Yes, yeah. and we had some real blowouts on the bad side for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Billy, had enough speed to it. Sure, if you had enough. A little bit of white. See if they can't pop up a green with it, Joe. No. Give the SMS a point. A little surprised he didn't play the wall on that. It's a safer shot. I think he was trying to bump the greens in, bump, bump a couple up. But I agree, I did. The wall side was wide open. So it's seven to six. shot you were talking about. Nice ball by Good line, just a little strong. Let's see what John can do here. He's a hitter. Mm. Yeah, he stuck a few. I was watching another match. He Made some nice sticks. We had a minute. So 
Brad, what are your uh, uh, tournament travel plans for this summer? You ever, everything I got a, a busy out? road trip yeah. planned. Montreal in a couple of weeks. Then uh, Club Molasani in Wycliffe in June. St. Louis the following week. Oh, and then Highwood the following weekend for the Nationals. For starters, anyway. Nice set by Joel. So up in Montreal, was that similar to the type of tournament that I believe you played in out, out in Toronto last year? It's a, it's a PRV it's Canada PR. USA tournament. Mm -hmm. Same players are going to be there? Yes, yeah. So Jose, Jose, Jose yeah. Pat Pezin, a lot of the national Canadian champs will be in that one from Toronto and Mo Montreal. That was the tournament uh, Jose won last year? Yes. If I remember correctly, you were, you were on the podium, so to speak, right? It, oh, I got a sixth. Sixth, well, that's close. Not bad. I was happy. Right. I was happy it, it is, right? in that crowd. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like to volo. That's, that's your uh, forte. Did it to me for a few few games. I uh, saved some games with volos. First time. That's going to be a. Who are you playing with? I'll be playing with uh, Gabe. And. And um, good question. I have to check the roster to make sure I remember. Are these Cleveland players? Oh, these are, are local players. I teamed up with uh, three from Michigan. Nice. If I'm not mistaken, Joe Peterson is playing with us on Club on Sunday. Oh, good. Yeah. We'll have more people in, in uh, Wycliffe uh, dodging Polinos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other with Wycliffe is the Cleveland Company, right? There's two two clubs in Wycliffe right. that are about a half a mile apart off the same street. The one is outside with nine courts. That's the uh, um, IAC club. And then Molasani has just had their uh, courts. They're resurfacing their courts now, so they'll have six really nice courts for the tournament. Nice, that. nice shot, Mike. Unlucky. The, uh, so both of those tournaments, the Molasani and the Wolf Club, I'm going to be going to. We're going to put together a team here in the club. Mm. And then uh, back out to ABC. And lots of You're going to be busy, too. Right. <laughs> Why not? If you have the time. Well, I, really, if you think about... Uh, you know, the, the level of the balls you play, you, you have to start somewhere, right? You also have to take your licks. So, uh, oh, that never happens, does it? Right, right. <laughs> so by getting down the road and uh, experiencing the, the pain, so to speak, right, you, you know, everybody goes through it. And in order to get better, you have to play the better teams. So, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't really mind... Uh, 
Plus, when you you follow the events, at the top rated events. Oh, they're great tournaments. We're we're very uh, happy with with uh, round robin tournaments. Love to go to those. And that's what's nice about this one. Played a lot of games. Yeah, it's kind of what we did. Just you know, it's uh, two groups of six, so you get five games in the group play, and we push forward to three teams in each group. Nice ball by Billy, Billy Barnett. And the, the winners of each each of the two groups, uh, they get that by the first round. And here they'll play the winners of respective uh, games here. Looks like well, it might be three. We don't know. I missed one. He likes playing the walls. Funny, there's a slight delay with the sound. We hear the sound before we see the hit. <laughs> players most most of these consistent players step up and hit they don't spend a lot of time thinking about it should be automatic It's 
good ball. Get up hit. That hit the uh, glass. So that ball goes out. Right, so here the uh, backwards, uh, we're playing backwards dead. And uh, everything above the backboard is out. And the fence is out. And the plexiglass is out. Kind of like if you had a outdoor court or court with no, no, no walls. If any, the ball would just come out of the court. Yeah. Yeah, yeah places with fences and things like that, you really should call those balls out. But some, some of the uh, tournaments, everything goes. Right, right. So here it's a little bit easy. Oh, Bill hit a nice one, stuck around too. So did too. And the other thing is the, uh, the sound is uh, pronounced. Mm -hmm. You know when it hits the plexiglass, you know when it hits the wood. We've got an echo chamber in here. I haven't seen him shoot much. He's usually pointing. Nice shot. Marsh. Pointers hit and hitters point. Got to have them both. Sitting here for the first time driving the machine, so to speak, we got Michael and Lou playing, so they're not able to do what we're doing, and Alex and Dave are uh, actually catching their flights back to ah. Chicago. That's what, so it was real fun to have uh, Alex and Dave around. They, they bring so much to the game. Absolutely. And for Dave to uh, bring the flying squirrel to put it up in the ceiling so we can get some visuals there. Yeah, I didn't get to see uh, see the visuals from that. But it's a nice idea. He, he was here writing a lot of notes. Make some adjustments to some coding. Uh, that's his his world. That's his world, and he said he'd love to get back there for a week or so just to observe league play and uh, just so he can take notes. I think with being in a facility rather than the living room of the house, right? He's in, mm -hmm. the facility, he's in the lab. In the lab, right, <laughs> right. So we, we kind of uh, opened our doors to the market bocce company to go ahead and use our course mm -hmm. as a lab. They were very pretty. Well, I'm that. glad you've added the video and makes, makes it more exciting for viewers. Trying to photo bomb. Nice. Doesn't always go the way you. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Gonna go. Yep. Put a little bit of pressure on Short Street here. 
They're sitting with uh, two balls back. So the question becomes, uh, are they going to hit this? Or do you sit on it? What's your play? I would shoot. Is that, they don't, do they have any more? They have two balls. No, the other team. No, I think they're about ball coming Okay. Out. That's the right play. Clear that ball. Definitely. Out. Just like that on the cue. They're rolling for the second point here and tie it right up. It's hard to see the distance of the second point, but I thought I heard someone at the other end of the court said they're sitting too. Yeah, it could be. If that's the case, they got three. They right. did, three points. And with all the spectators uh, Green alongside hand. the court here, it's hard to look down the court yeah. and, and see the distance. Our, our view is obscured a little bit here. Calling the game from uh, staring at a co computer monitor, laptop. Nice ball. Do it early in the beginning. There we go. Okay, that one's out. And the Polino is. What was that? Yeah, right where it oh, okay, it's still there. Okay. Their turn. <laughs> That hurt. Quick update, uh, <laughs> Troy 7, Holly 11. I would have gave you guys a few. Oh, great. Here comes Mike Schraff. Give me point eight. Size up the uh, super side. Yeah. Three point eight. Might steal it. He did. Great ball. Good ball by Mike. Just went around the pool, you know. That's the ball game. That ball doesn't go out. The ball doesn't go out. Back. You guys are in a position to get three points at it. And they move on. Oh my God, it turns the whole game. A short shot uh, defeats a SMS. Uh, I got a little bit of break here to, with the, the short street, uh, the club there. Now between Mike and Bill and John and JJ, the four of them, uh, they, they all have 35 plus years experience playing bocce. And they, they, they have a little program going on over there near Buffalo and, and Lockport. Short, short Street Bocce Club, but they're, they're, they're in Lockport. Uh, 
And that's a lot of experience. They, they travel. They're, mm -hmm. they're always on the road. And as far as uh, my recollection, they're playing there like six days a week. So they have That'll a, help. They, they do. They have, a, <laughs> they have an open four-person league. I remember a ladies. They, they have the women's playing there. A four-person mix uh, couples, a, a two-person couples in a singles league. And that's where exactly? That's in uh, Lockport. Which is? In, near Buffalo. Near, okay. To the I, west. I used to live in Tonawanda for a brief time back in the 70s. Yeah, they hold uh, yeah, seven, eight tournaments a year over there. They have a super doubles. They have a, the St. Pat Patrick's Day tournament. Uh, they run a memorial tournament there. Uh, I know they have a women's tournament. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, if I remember correctly, maybe back in 2020, 2021, that time frame, they, they, they actually won the Cleveland Challenge Cup. Um, so, you know, they uh, not surprising that they found a way to win this game with that, that, with that much experience. Mm -hmm. It's a good match. Good match, very close. So congrats to uh, the Lockport, Short Street uh, Bocce Club. So it's, uh, it can be confusing because there's a, the, it's Short Street Bocce Club that's in Lockport. That's because the, the courts are adjacent to the Short Street bar and, bat bar, <laughs> bar and patio, right? So the Short Street Bocce Club is right next door to the bar and patio, which is in Lockport, New York.
So I just put the. Just put the headphones back on here to get caught up to see what's uh, what's happening. Score is 13-9. Holly. Holly. And, mm -hmm. uh, Michael just shot, but I heard heard the backboard. Our view is obscured, so we really can't right. Let's see. Other than him making contact on that shot, we don't know where it went. Out of the core. Obviously, we're camera number two looking back. You might show the New York State Championship the banner. banner with the teams signing under their clubs. Something we started last year. It's a nice idea. Yeah. With the Ambassador's Cup, the teams that come in. Uh, that banner is uh, hanging in Club Molisani. We sent it back with Lou and Frank uh, Wayne in the game. Uh huh. Uh, so what we do is have each of the uh, clubs who are representing their region of the state. And when you're older, you can come back and point to it and say, I played here one time, right. or many times. <laughs> Little history. We love this club. It's, it's 300 plus miles for us to come up, but love playing here. Troy 10, Blackport 13. So, so, so Brad, tell me a little bit about the club. What, uh, yeah, what got you uh, interested in playing? The well, I was uh, I moved back to Long Island back in 1986 and um, was involved with tennis and other sports, but um, was looking for something that a new sport for an aging <laughs> right person. <laughs> and I noticed these courts in Huntington, only a mile and a half from my house. And at the time, my girlfriend was saying, we should play bocce. And so we're looking around. We saw these courts. And, and uh, I went to a pizza place in Huntington. And I asked, you know, well, when do they play? And so well, I think they play Wednesday night. So that following Wednesday night, I went down to the courts. And Pete Rubito was there and some of the other members. It had been the first year that they had opened those new courts. And I rolled a couple balls and was hooked. After that, it was yep. it. <laughs> I think what they say, sometimes you get to uh, visit a court once, uh, you're excited to visit the court the second time and you are you won't give up the sport, right? Well, I've always had that competitive edge and love different sports, so this is a good one as you get older, especially.
I've played with a number of players in their 80s and very good players. As long as you're vertical. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was part of our, uh, you know, our, our growth here locally. We started to reach out to the communities. You know, during the summer, we, we bring the, uh, the students, the youth leaderships of some of the school districts here to Waterside. And there's like a couple uh, community projects here in the village of Phoenix. So we, uh, uh, it's like a bocce camp. They come in, we teach them how to play bocce, and uh, you know, hopefully they continue to play the game. They're excited when they're here, and it's, the numbers are growing, so that's a good thing. That's what we need around the country is more youth involved. So many of the clubs, it's just the older older uh, players and they're dying out so more power to you for This is a serious discussion going on here at ball advantage right now. I guess uh, they scored one so far. on their way back. 13-11.
should do next uh, next year. Put four cameras up. That's what I was just thinking. Uh, right. You so need another one on that court. Yeah. <laughs> For the wireless, we're, wireless we're flying on. blind here. <laughs> For the wireless camera from the ceiling that's yep. catching up both sides. It, uh, battling out here. You know, they had the, uh, in Group A, you had Tokolano Club. They finished a group play 5-0. and all. And then you had uh, Mountain Vernon in Group B finished 4-1. and one. So those are the teams, two teams sitting Statically. They get the buys. Right, they got the buy uh, for winning the group. And then we're just waiting to uh, see how this game, re the results of this game, to determine who they the play. Crossover. Mm -hmm. Right. We already know that Short Street's going to be one of those teams. Right? Uh, they beat SMS. Now we're just waiting for the, the winner of the Holly uh, Troy game. Well, Holly has the point right now. We really can't see what how many balls are left. There we go. Wow. Thirteen, thirteen. Wow. 13 13, all tied up.
So we're back live now. Polino, Polino, uh, oh yeah, the final. There's like a 15 second delay. That should be live. So if you go. Let me know when you see it. Brad, do mind if Nico, uh, no, no, Nico no. wants to. Do you enjoy it? Perfect. Test, test. Um, what's going on, everyone watching? It's Nico Fox. Here to broadcast some bocce. So, so, so we're showing Peter uh, Rabito saying he hello to Joni back home. We're just getting ready to set up for uh, the semifinals. Uh, so I, sh I should tell everyone that uh, Troy came back and ended up defeating Holly. So Troy's going to advance. They came down to the last frame. I wish. Uh, last the ball, game too. Was, last ball as well. Would you watch it? Yeah. Nick? Really good game. Go ahead and uh, say a few things about the, the, the last frame of the comeback. It was, was uh, he shot, missed the first one, then he had to shoot again, hit it, caught a horrible break, and it went right to the other team. Is that right? Yeah. So we're getting ready to. Uh, Finals will be on core one. Finals will be live streamed, also. So now we have uh, Tokolana Club finished uh, first in their their group. Yes. They were group Tukulana. A. So they're going to uh, they're going to match up against the Short Street uh, Bocce Club coming out of Group B. Short be a very Street good was uh, seated third, and then uh, Mount Vernon, who finished first, four and one, in Group B, is going to play Troy. And, and Troy finished second place in, in Group A, so that we crossed them over. And in court, in court one here, we're going to have uh, Troy. Troy's going to play Mount Vernon, and then court two will be Tokolana versus Short Street. We will broadcast the finals uh, on court one here in just a minute. Uh, so once the uh, semifinal games are over with, uh, we'll go right to the finals and it'll be broadcast here on court one. So if you heard earlier, Nico Fox uh, is with me, Dino, uh, here in the uh, the studio, so to speak. Uh, apologize for my camera work and my broadcasting skills. This is the first time I'm doing this, Nico. I think you're doing good. Thank you. So, so Nico, tell me a little bit about uh, the club you're playing with and the club uh, in your tournament experience, I, I know you have uh, you're starting well, to... Uh, we kind of just put a team together for the Galliano Club because right? they couldn't come down. So we threw a little team together. I'm not sure who threw it together. Right. That's the president of the club, right? First time we ever played together. Not bad, you know. A right. couple and, wins. Uh, and a little bit about your play. Um, I struggled a little bit in the first couple games. Started coming around a little right. towards the end. We got hot at the end, one, two in a row. Good, good. And uh, personally, uh, your, your your experience. Uh, I love these courts. Yeah. They're they're so so easy to play on. Nice. You like the courts, the Coleone courts. Yeah, the yeah. roll is nice. It rolls. rolls up. They're true. Very true. Straight. Yeah. Little little hook on the wall, but not a big hook. Fast. Not not a super fast synthetic court, but uh, faster than the ones at home, obviously. These guys are throwing their warm up balls, I think. Go ahead and get the camera set up here. Get out, yeah, get out. See the camera moving? Oh, no. We're on now. (laughs) 
Is this thing hard to work with or no? I'm, I'm starting to get used to it. There's uh, a lot of buttons. Yeah, a lot of buttons. Uh, three different keyboards, uh, not to mention the keyboard on the laptop. Yeah. Uh, got a little uh, neck gear switch here. There is a camera that uh, fo face forwards you and I. Oh, really? So if I want to switch it over, right now we have two cameras. Camera one is to our right. Cameras two is to our left. Oh, I, I saw those ones. I, right. I didn't know this was a camera. And then we have uh, there's a couple of joysticks here to zoom in and zoom out. I'll leave all the other uh, buttons uh, to Michael. I wish uh, you know uh, Alex and Dave were here. They're they're comfortable with the replay button. Yeah, they were. Where is the replay button? That, that's the uh, the challenge that you and I have Oof. To, to go to replay. I think they're throwing their practice balls now. Right. Hello, Mr. Michael. Thank you very much. Yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, yell my name. Paul Kulik, yeah, he throws hard. Down on the other court, Tukulana versus Short Street. In the, in the uh, if I wanted to do a replay. Should be a good game down there. All right. So easy to stick on. You like them? Yeah. Yeah. Love sticking on these. Oh, those are volo. Misses. So what'd you think of the overhead camera? That was pretty neat, huh? That's I thought it was cool. World of Squirrel, right? Yeah, that That's was cool. You know, it has another uh, dimension to the game if we can actually see the distance. Uh, Did they try the distance thing or no? They, they've been working on it yet. The, uh, Dave uh, had, the, had the computer up and he was writing code at the same time. Hmm. So it was capturing the algorithms between the, uh, the ball and the Paulino. <laughs> And they, to judge the distance and the uh, that would change a lot of things. It'd speed the game up, I think. Definitely let you know real quick as to who's in. Who's in? So let's see. We have uh, Troy, right? So uh, Troy, we have uh, Luce Scaldone and Michael Scaldone Sharkey with Fiora, Fiora Scaldone Fiora. cousin and uh, Tony and. Uh, there with uh, going up against uh, Mountain Vernon. We have uh, Jack DeSantis, uh, Jack, Jack Blanca, Chris uh, Giordano, and Andrew uh, Cistanero, right? Yeah, we played them first. And how was that? Good? Close game. Yeah, we're close. Beat us by two, I think. And then in court two, we have uh, Tokolana. Tokolana playing, the number one seed, uh, up against uh, Holly. Short Street. Right. Short, Short street box. Yep. Hopefully two good games. So it looks 
like we're ready to walk these camera. Get into the game here. Looks like they're about to start. They are so going to start. So handshakes. So again, we have uh, Mount Vernon, uh, the red team, and Troy, the green team, on the scoreboard. But the balls that are playing, uh, Mount Vernon. Blue, looks like. Blue with uh, stripe. Heavy, a heavy stripe pattern, yeah. a, a cloud pattern, <laughs> where Troy has like a zebra pattern yeah. blue ball. It's going to be difficult for us to. Uh, Looks like a very good ball from Jack. Mm, kind of kept rolling a little bit. Maybe a foot long, can't tell, but looks like a pretty good ball. I'll do two, so I'll go ahead and zoom in when uh, Mike's Yeah, Michael's going to shoot this one, it's a good ball. Nice hit. Clipped it out clean. Looks like uh, Mount Vernon came in for the point after. So looking at the patterns on the balls, right? So Mount Vernon's going to be the darker blue ball, red, white, and green stripe. And Troy's going to be the zebra stripe the ball. ball. looks long. A little long. Who's that? Is that Tony? It says Tony. Uh, I didn't know. Uh, Comes we'll Jack. And see what Jack's doing here. Very nice. Ooh, looks okay. fast again. Look, this one looks a little fast. Yeah, I don't. Uh, can't tell. Yeah. No good. Wow. A lot of room there, too. This looks like a good ball. Good ball by Chris. Yeah, very nice ball. Comes Michael again. Oh, catches Paulino. Oh, Paulino. Went out of court. court. We'll go ahead and reset the frame here. First frame reset, there we go. Paulino flies out of these courts when you catch him clean. Real quick, it looks uh, looks like uh, Tokelon up to two nothing against uh, the Holly. Uh, Short Street. Short Street, Lockport team. Right? Yeah, Lockport, yeah. Yeah, Tokelon has been tough today. They've been playing very well. I think those two played earlier. Jack rolls it about in the same spot again. Oh, man, Paul Kalikia throws it hard. Ball's gone. A lot of room here for Tony. Good for you. Mm, great ball. Rode the rail. So Jackson roll on this. Ball. Got the confidence. Looks like a good ball. A little bit to the left. Oh, I think it creeps in. Like, nope, no good. Good speed though. Looks like Mount Vernon has uh, ball count in hand. Mm. 
Up to the right. Captain Brad. No good. Just come out of the the booth with me. Brad Thayer was in the booth here. Oh, the, really? The, for the last game. Hmm. There's a, another rookie in, behind the microphone. Yeah. How'd you guys end up playing out? I, I know you guys were close to making it, right? Right. It was, came right down to the last game. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, we had uh, back to back frames at the very end. Unlucky uh, situational points. And, yep. Uh, Unfortunate. Uh, okay, he's going up the ridge too, just like yeah. Tony did. Sorry about that. I'm going though. That's yeah, so the first frame. It was uh, unfortunate. Uh, Paul, uh, Paulino hit the bounce to the opposite way for two points. Yeah, and they were. Could be a big frame here for Troy. Short out of his hands. Ball's creeping though. No, nope, no good. Two, two, Holly or Short Street and uh, Tokalana. You keep on saying Holly, but it's Short Street. Yeah. Such a good game, you gotta say both. I know. Huh? Watch a hitter roll, right? Looks good. Great ball. Great ball by Mike. I'll tell you that uh, most people you know is the hitter, but uh, you point pretty good. Oh, I mean. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. running both sides of the game. I enjoy you pointing. A, you have a preference either way or? He's just like being on the courts. Yeah, I mean, if I have to point, I'll point. If I have to hit, I'll hit. I mean, oh, looks like sorry, mm, it's close. Maybe a quick shout out here to one of our sponsors. Uh, can't run events like this without our sponsors. And, uh, maybe a quick shout out to Benjamin Moore. Uh, you know, they, they say that they inspire and transform our homes, our communities, and our lives, one brush, brush stroke at a time. Uh, so their mission is to build financial security one generation at a time, and that's Ripley. Garlic and Associates, Ripley Garlic and Associates. Their mission is to build financial security one generation at a time. Quick shout out to Romano Auto Dealerships. Here locally in Syracuse, they specialize in Fords, Mercedes, Mazdas, Toyotas, Subarus, and Chrysler Jeeps. And Looks last like Troy got two on that one. Not two. And last uh, is our uh, Packer World. Uh, they bring the game, Packer World uh, International Company. They specialize in Quote portable ports. Yeah, I know. I, I saw, saw that when you guys were talking about it earlier. Two green. Two green. Good hit, but I'm not sure who who made that hit for Mount Vernon. Another good ball by Fiore. Oh, Paulino. 
Wow, right to their ball too. What a great hit. Good hit, good break. That's what you need. What a shot by Lou. Andy falls right back in. Great shot. This is the beauty of the game, back-to-back -back hits, right? Yeah. First one was uh, Andrew. First two, Andrew got two yeah. in a row. Back to back. Yep, and, and then, then Lou. Lou. Lou just had a nice, yeah. nice full court hit, clipped it out. Court's uh, 64, almost 65 feet long. 64. Oh really? Huh, interesting. 10 foot wide. I thought they were 60, but five feet longer, not bad. Yeah. Hey, take away the number of inches for the uh, backboard to the wall. Probably another six inches there, so maybe 64-11 minus a foot somewhere in there. Yeah. Trying to decide what they're going to do here. Mm. Mm -mm. Looks right. like we got three to two Tokolano over there. Great shot oh. by Guy. Just Guy. Has, yeah. Got a bad break though, I think. Yeah. Anybody want some pizza? <laughs> Giving out pizza over here. Did you have enough to eat this weekend? Oh yeah, and more at Dusky's over down the street. Right. The place is amazing. Great wings. Shout out to Dusky's and their wings. <laughs> yeah. Looks hot. Got to grab touch something. It. What a ball. That's a great ball. Great ball. Guy grabs the Pauline. Who's going to probably have to clip the right side of that ball if I had to guess? They're looking at it now, that's for sure. Mm, he doesn't like shooting it, I guess. Last ball. Hmm. Good try. One Mount Vernon. One Mount Vernon. Three three over on the Tokalana Short Street Court. Price too. The uh, as the temperature in the room increases throughout the day, the, the courts speed up just a little bit. Really, didn't know that. Interesting. Great ball by Tony. Wow. They're gonna point. I think Jack's gonna try to lean on it. Mm, just missed it. 
great speed too. What a ball by Oh, beautiful ball. What a ball. Michael's going to have to shoot. I think it might be touching. If it's not, I bet the Paulino's going down. It's hard to see. Can't see anything. Half an inch off, Paulino is. Comes to Michael. <laughs> Soft flopping on it. Oof, oh. popped over it, I think. Do a little soft flop at it. I think you might be shooting again. They're up. They're up two to one. Never mind, rolling. Let's roll back out just a bit. Nice to see three generations on, on the court uh, with Troy. Yeah. Okay. Tony Lou and Michael. Michael. Oh, it looks long. Right through everything. I think he was just trying to tap that in. It's going to be tough to get to here. Can't touch their ball or else he sells it. Three. I think he's going to try to lean on the striped right. zebra ball. Oh boy. Did he get there? He's going to end up short. Too short. He's going in the right direction to lean right on there. Tie game, 2-2. Two, two. Six-three with Tokolana leading. Short Street. Yep. Short ball. He hit early. Still went right between them for a good ball. Just missed that front ball. Thumbs guy. Uh, oh, 
for the ball by Guy. Yeah. Leaned right on him. Yeah. Great ball. Good ball. Good speed on that. And settle right in. What a ball yeah, by Fiori. Nice In. Just made it. Let me decide what they're going to do here. interesting as the day progresses uh, games slow down right and everyone's calculating every point and every ball yeah they don't want to um, don't want to lose a point here earlier in the in the tournament uh, we were ahead of schedule and the games were yeah they were going by pretty fast a lot of blowouts though I feel like yeah there was a few a difficult to, uh, different clubs uh, coming from Synthetic courts and it takes a little bit of time to adjust. Uh, yeah, it was a great shot by Andrew. Clipped it out clean. Pizza back there, don't you? Oh, I was trying to see how delayed it is, but. Got to get there. Got to get there. Short. Just short. 8 to 3 over on Tokalana for Short Street. Tokalana's up. Andrew, what, nice a ball. Ball by, what a ball by Andrew. Andrew does both. So throws a nice, uh, had a nice hit and pointed, right? Yep. There's a good Great. example of doing both sides of the game. Yep. Great frame right there. Shout out to Andrew. Solid hit and solid point. Solid point. And sandwich in between those two balls were uh, blue. Yeah. Four to two. Oh. Jack again. It's a little hot. He's got to catch something. Yeah, it does look fast. It might burn. Yeah, he's going to burn that ball. Oh, if he burned it, I think. Yeah, burned it. That's, that's something you do not want to do Internet on international backboard dead. Oh, he's got to throw again. Looks a little better. Yeah, pretty good ball by Jack. Tony's gonna try beating it. Just beat it. See so what Chris is going to do. He's going to roll in. Yeah, he's I think he's going to try to do the same thing. Follow the same line. Just Follow the channel down 
left hand side of the court. Let us just settle back in. It's a little heavy, but. Yep, a little heavy. Got to play that break with your speed, too. Learn that a little bit. Sometimes break. it didn't break if you're a little too fast. I just, you said it's going out of his hand. It yeah, looks right like. But it catch something. Could, have, could catch the Pauline. No, I think he just Excuse glazed me. it. Yeah. He just nicked a pill, but a lot of room for. A lot of room for Lou. Three for balls Mike back, and, uh, right? Mike and Tony, a lot of room here. Ball looks pretty good. Gets there. Got short. Didn't get there. Solid hit over there with somebody. 9-3, Tokolana. Yeah, looks like they're starting to rally a couple points together over there. Watching Michael, he actually ball slipped out of his hand. We've, all had, we've all had that happen. Oh yeah, definitely. You see how short it is. Gotta put it behind you. Come right back and try to mm, look short again. That's difficult. Those are the points you just can't give away if you want to advance in tournaments. Yeah, those are those are like the freebies. A lot the, of room. The low hanging fruit you gotta pick. Yeah, a lot of room. Just couldn't couldn't quite. He'll be the first one to tell you he's not happy. Oh, yeah, definitely. We've all been there before. Okay. Fierro. Sits about three quarters of the way down the court. Looks like a good ball. You notice when Fiore throws points, he points it backhanded. Just releases the ball. You don't see that out of many players. You see it on a couple, but not many. I think Andrew's going to hit this. Yeah, We're playing well today, Andrew. He's been hitting very good. Consistent. Yeah. He did very well against us last night. That was a great hit. Looks like he's going to fight up. I was afraid we were going to jinx him. Oh, yeah, I know. The commentator's curse. Yeah. Doesn't work for Bocce, I guess. the backhand toss to feel where you go. A little heavy. It's a little long. About, I'd say about two feet. Two feet. Two and a half feet maybe. That's got some speed too. Yeah. You might lay on it. Nope. On. Oh. Changes the frame now. Let's see Two balls back make, for Lou. Makes the adjustment here. I wouldn't be surprised if it. Looks like he does. Looks like a pretty good ball. Yeah, that's good focus. Lou's not surprising from a veteran, right? No. You make a mistake and come right back and uh, fix your right. mistake. Clear Lou. your mind. Lou makes two good hits here. Could be a different ball game. It's the first one. It sticks around. Wow, what a shot. 
I think it's two. It's going to be close. Andrew looks like a good ball here. Maybe a little heavy, but he might lean right on it. He what is a ball. on fire. He is killing it this he game. Is. Shout they out might. to Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, He is killing it right now. He's in his zone. He's in his zone. Andrew is hot. Hitting, rolling. He does it all. I, I wonder if Pete Rabito's his coach. Yeah. Pete Rabito might be his coach. Pete Rubito also beat us bad, too. <laughs> mm, Lou, looks like a pretty good ball. He drags. Wow. And another one for Mount Vernon. They are pointing very well right now. They switch, they switch the lineup up. Oof, he threw this one far. Damn. That's what we're looking at, gentlemen and ladies. And maybe a foot off the wall. And ladies and gentlemen. Very short, a lot of room in there for Tony to come in. Just gotta pass it, can't burn this ball. He looks short too. Mm, I don't think so. Maybe, I don't know. Short. Sometimes that ball in gets back to the backboard and uh, you have to block out of your mind. You don't want to burn it, so you just go out there and roll the point. Yeah. And the, the pointing line uh, and these courts are five feet from the backboard. Yeah. And the shooting line is 10 feet. Hmm. So we have a five foot point line, 10 foot short. Uh, the point line seems much, much uh, more room. Right. Mike's going to try to shoot the ball down. Wow, got a lucky break. Oh, I guess he called it. Not a lucky break. Skillful shot. Very nice, very nice. That was that soft lob shot, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's, he didn't want to shoot backhand because he might have stuck his ball. Right. Let's see what Chris could do here. It's got a little bit of speed. It might, it might roll in nice. A, looks like a nice a really ball. Good ball. Yeah, that looks like a nice ball. We got enough. Not well enough. Uh, uh, just no. short, I think. Wow, what a try, though. The jack. <laughs> got five to nine over on the Tokolana court. Tukolana for a short street. Chris, you want to sit? I'll come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks good from Jack. Uh, I don't know. Okay, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? I think it's just short. Time out here to decide what they want to do. Yeah. yeah. It was a tough shot here. Was that was that Jack's ball? Yeah, that yeah. was Jack's last yeah. ball.
at the, uh, you know, between Guy and Chris and Jack and Andrew, uh, they all have been playing about uh, 13, 15 years or so. Hmm, really? You know, the, uh, you know, the guy runs the uh, tournament out there in Las Vegas. Yeah, I heard that's a big tournament. Brother. Big tournament. Uh, you know, the, uh, his <laughs> I think Jack's been playing like 20 years. Uh, He's also, if I'm not mistaken, Jack's been playing for, uh, like I said, 20 years. But he also won the four-man national championship in Chicago about four years ago or 18 years ago. Wait, so how long ago? I think 18 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. And got one up, oh. moved the Paulino. A lot more room now for, I hope they end up with the point. Right now, um, striped. Get there. It's gonna get it there. It's gonna get there. Short. No. Oh wait. Looks good. Two points Two for points. Uh, Troy. It's gonna tie the score up. This game is back and forth. And for those of you interested in the Tokelana score, it is now 10-5. Guy will drop one right in. He's going bank. Yeah. He loves those walls. He played a lot of balls in this house too. Yeah. yeah. Another great ball, that guy. We'll step up and hit this. He's got two targets there, the, the Paulino or the ball. Yeah, Paulino probably yeah. favors him a little better. He might stick around, so who knows? Misses everything and hits his ball. Wow. That's not good. I yeah. think I got to cover up now. Or yeah, sure do. Risk one at the Paulino. <laughs> you were talking about. Comes Fiore's ball. Looks a little fast once he grabs something. Oh. Gotta keep one in front here. Got to keep one in right straight at it. Stayed away from the wall. Looks like a pretty good cover ball. I mean, a little short though, I don't think. Yeah, a lot of room. I think I guy's gonna, door, guy's gonna take that same line. Yeah, play the same ball he did before. Make it off the side. Yep, here it is again. Went off the wall a little bit long this time. Yeah, that's it, I think. It, what yeah. a good ball. And to Andrew, who's been hot lately, Let's see how he rolls. See if Andrew plays the same line as Guy. Um, yeah. Looks like he's going the same way. 
Maybe short? It's going to come down. It's going to nope. come right down. No, nope, that's a great. Mm. question is, does it beat the back ball? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. It looks like it's going to be a two-point frame. Mm. Maybe three. He's got to roll another yeah. one. Mm. Three would be nice here for them. Oh, he smoked that ball. He's got to oh, hit yeah. the wall. He's got to hit something. Maybe the back ball. Nope. Two. The broadcaster's curse, right? We said yeah. he's been playing well. He'd, uh, here everyone goes. Says. Bocce curse on the podcast. Are they going to try having this tournament every year? Yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to uh, uh, pull together next year. We tried to do an ambassador series of that. Uh, last year we did it uh, with clubs from across the country. Yeah. This year we kept New it in the, state, in the state. We definitely will do something. Uh, looking to pull together uh, perhaps a uh, an open an open tournament in the, in the fall at some point. The November one again or no? No, this will be a different, this is a brand new tournament. We'll do a, a doubles tournament, uh, maybe opening it up uh, across the country. And so, uh, we're still trying to plan it. Uh, it really comes down to whether you got the volunteers and uh, there's this. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. These yeah. courts are very nice. It's just there's only two of them, so. Right. That's the, that's that's the. If you the were to have that many teams, it'd probably have to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right, or do it over a course of t two weekends. Or oh yeah. yeah. Do like a groups of round robin. That's or right. That's right. We 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 like we like the round robin. Uh, we feel that. Uh, More games. When you, when you have teams traveling in, they, they incur the cost. And you you want to try to give them the. Uh, what a hit. hit! Look here, for t today's. Uh, Folks to travel, they travel lodging. Yep. Have five games and move on to the knockout that bracket. Uh, if you make it, yep. Yeah. But five games in generals. It doesn't take away from the other tournaments that are <laughs> in the nation. Uh, y you know that going in. Go oh, 13 to five over on Tupelanos side. Looks like they got three coming down. And some of the uh, challenges here. There's so many tournaments out there now. Where? I mean, throughout the country. Oh, I know, yeah. Right? So you're, you, you know, you're trying to pick a weekend that uh, doesn't fall with other tournaments. And I feel like if you guys, a lot of people would play here because they like synthetic and yeah. these type of courts. When would when would they, uh, like, what month were they thinking for it? We're looking uh, towards the winter, uh, fall, late fall, early winter months. Yeah, check the calendar and see where, where it falls in. And what happens is, uh, you know, the bocce enthusiasts, they come out of the season and, and throughout the country. They're the outdoor court. The, the tournament season is in full gear. And, and uh, you, you start to draw towards the fall. Yeah. You get into the winter. Those clubs that have the indoor facilities. Yep. Um, Jack again. Oh. Missed it, hit his back. Look, like anything, it is uh, one thing to uh, register to go play in a tournament, and it's another thing to uh, bring together a group of uh, uh, club members to help run a tournament. There's yeah. A lot of activity behind the scene. Yep. Here yep. You're, you're looking at sponsors, you're looking at you know, coordinated with the Special Olympics, uh, you're reaching out to the team captains. Uh, this was a club event, so we reached out to all the clubs. Yep, yep. We invited clubs to uh, come represent. Come represent. Uh, so you, you, know, you have clubs in each of the nine regions throughout the state. Yep. And uh, so it's, it's it's an undertaking, but uh, is that what you did for the one last year? Just like got one from a couple. Right. So w last year with the Ambassadors Cup, we reached out. Uh, to, to a whole, whole demographics, we we, we looked. Uh, that was more of a symposium, so there was a lot of conversation to go along with it. Uh, 
uh, guest speakers uh, talked on different topics of how to grow the sport. Yeah. So we, we looked at uh, large clubs, small clubs, clubs from the West Coast, clubs from the East Coast. I heard you had a team from Ca a club from California to come. A team from California, uh, Arizona participated, Kentucky. Wow. Ohio, oh. teams from uh, Connecticut. So we try to try to bring in uh, everyone. Everyone, and uh, you know, there's not a room for there's not enough room for that many hundreds of clubs. Uh, you know, it teams, is, right? So yeah. It's a nice facility, but it's not a big facility. You know, right. it's not enough room to have. Correct. That many. So the the Ambassador's Cup series was uh, really a, you, you wanted to give a, everyone who enjoys the sport a voice. So when you're having conversations about the growth of the sport, you're, you're looking at small clubs, small cities, you know, sur suburbs, uh, clubs that have outdoor, play on sto stone dust, uh, 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 hard true, right, synthetic courts. Yeah, yeah. How many days was that for? That was two days. That was two. Oh, wow, you guys got that done in two days. That was a lot of teams, wasn't there? There was, yeah, so 20 teams. Let me get the scoreboard here, 8-7. I picked up the three points. Mm, it's heavy. Oh, he might burn that one. What am I talking about? It was a bad wall, but not burned. Mm, good ball from guy. A little long, but got the job done. Troy is up. <laughs> That's interesting watching the different pointers and their techniques. Yeah, guy has yeah. like a flick to it. There's a, a sphere with the back drop. That one looks a lot better. A little long, but. Yeah, settled right in. The guy's going to point this. 13 know. 6. Tokelana. So you got enough speed here? Sure. Very short. And Tokalana win. Tukalana wins. Six fourteen to six. Six. They are in the finals now. New York State Ch Club Championships. Yeah, both of those clubs uh, took on a short street to uh, give them a little edge in uh, favorites coming in. They, they, have, well, they have a lot, yeah. of depth, lot of depth to those clubs. Yeah. Yeah, Short Street, they won the Wycliffe tournament one year. Right. Like two years ago, I think, with they had Paul Lewis Jr. from Rome. Right. I think stripe balls are in right now. Looks good, actually. Looks like a very good ball if it falls Enough down. Speed. Dropping in. Looks like a good ball. That was a good ball by Lou. Got a bundle of people uh, walking by now. <laughs> same ball, same line, just a little bit more speed. I run that left rail down, and the ball will drop right in. Got to get there. He can't be short there. Got to touch it. Just touch it. Oh. 
at the right line. Yep. yep. I think it was just one for Troy. Seven. A little short, you think? Enough speed? Good ball. It's a very good ball, actually. A little long, actually. It's deceiving when you're watching the game on the computer. So, yeah. Especially it's a little smaller too, you can't. Trying to judge the speed and you, you look up and look at the courts, uh, you get a true appreciation. The Chris is going right straight down the center of the court. Yeah, I think that's the line be a too. Good ball. Mm, like a settle, yep, yeah. got a great ball. Sets up, Mike's going to have to hit. Mike's, see how he hits this one. Might stick it here. Got a good feeling he's going to. They get balls. They get balls. Wow. <laughs> wow. You can say it. Wow. I'll be the first to tell everyone on the, on the broadcast. The uh, first place gets brand new set of bocce balls. Let's get a look at them. They look very nice. Ball for first place. For first place. <laughs> You're using these tomorrow. Yes. Here goes Michael's going to have to shoot. Yeah, you he stuck hit. that one. Take that right channel. Comes back in. A little Looks long. And Mount Vernon can get right back in the game right here. A lot of room. Two balls back. Yep. Could take the lead here. <laughs> Let's see what Jack does. <laughs> nice read. Settles in. Well, there's two. That ties that game up. 9-9, nine, nine, one ball in hand. Jack could take the Jack's lead Jack's got the same ball. He rolled the same channel right down the side. And that ball will just come back a little. Oh, my God. And they get a black. <laughs> that three. Three times for Mount Vernon. Three times for Mount Vernon. Great rolling from them.
guy is classic roll. Yep, here we go. Where's that Paulino at? Might be a little short, but great line. Yeah. Little short though. Probably two feet, three feet short. This game's getting real close. So we're talking about different. I'll show you Fierro's drop shot. Drops yeah. it overhand, like a, right? Like a Spock almost, but he's. Oh, he's taking the same line. Oh, it looks like he's going to bump him. Oh, oh, oh. Guy, guy ended up with the point there. Well, we'll, convert, we'll, we'll compare Fiore's uh, drop shot to Guy's roll. I think Fiore's going to be rolling again. Mm -hmm. Take well, a look at it. Overhand. Yeah, you just get a set. Oh, oh he's tucking it, it looks like. What a ball from Fiore. I think Guy's going to end up pointing on this. Here comes the comparison. See this flick Guy has. A little flick, and it looks like he, he turns his hand, spins the ball. Yeah, it's like a. Oh my God. See, like it's like. Getting a lot of you guys are getting a lot of stuff. What does second place get nothing? No, some of it was setting up for first and second place. Yeah. All right. Here comes the ball from Andrew. Another heavy ball. Mm. Man, oh, look at this. It's gonna. Tides changed. Oh, um, Troy could get a big frame here. Back and forth. Who wants to win? I'm not sure. Oh, this looks like a very good ball. If it, oh, just dies up there. It's a great spot, though. Great yeah, cover that's ball. Good. I think they're going to try to go in between. Yeah, so here what they would do is they would play the ball a little bit earlier on the wall. And try to backdoor it. You think? Yeah. Well, well they'll, they'll they'll play off early on the wall and come between those two. Yeah, between the two. That's what I thought. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. Let's see. I think. Yeah. Well, I think well, looks like he's, he's going, going kind of straight at it. Oh, he's going the opposite side. Yeah, he's going to go to the right side of the Polino. Safer line, yeah. and I think yeah. he got it. Right, because if you come off the wall, you could bump either one of those two and balls And they could in. bump their ball in. That's right. For yeah. four, that'd be a big frame. Well, yeah. I think he might be trying that now after they already got in two of them. They play safer shot is to their. Oh, boy, I can't. They're saying, oh, oh, oh. Looks like it's just one, I think. Ten to ten now. Ten to ten. Tony's got it. See how where Tony throws it. I'm gonna guess probably long again. Um, they might have left. No. Looks like a very good ball for uh, for Mount Vernon. 
Do you want me to do this or no? Do you want me to do this? I think so, yeah. Do you know how to work it? Which one do you press to switch cameras? Sound up for him. I have no idea. He's going to the bathroom. Are you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep. All right, perfect. Hey, Nico, how's it going? How are you? I'm doing well. Alrighty. We got an interesting match going on here. We do. It's very close. Thir to what? Who put 13? It's 10 10. Yeah, we're good. New cameraman now. That's right. Nico on camera. Yes. And uh, Lou had an opportunity to get four there, I believe. If they would have just pushed that blue in, then they wind up only getting one. I know. No good. Jack made that great first point. He did. That was... It's always good to get that first one, on, right, Nico? Yeah, it changes the frame, especially if you miss yes. miss a hit. Yep. What do you think? Shooters beat pointers, or pointers beat shooters? Um, <laughs> man. You like to shoot, right? I I like I like both, honestly. Right. Pointing is very important. More that I've learned. Exactly. Let the shooter make the shot. Yeah. Put the pointer point. You gotta have put, faith in your pointer. That's right. Put pressure on them. So what do we have now here? Looks like a very good ball Tony for Tony. In. Tony. Wow, what, what a, a ball. Player. What a player, Tony. Why is this going down? It's 10. Oof, this could be. Is this two balls? Wait. I can't see. Is it touching? Yeah, it is, I think. But it could be 13 if they roll this next one in. Yep. It's a big shot from Michael. Give Switch. a shout out to all the spectators that are still tuned in watching this great event seriously i mean we know we have new york uh the downstate people watching from mount Vernon and long island and we have the upstate contingency troy new york oh i think he hit a little early what but happened? it looks what like happened? it might creep in uh, uh, just enough uh, uh. Can't brad tell. brad there's my oh, Lou mm, looks, Lou two. makes two yeah. okay two it is who wants it more? Ah, man. Two more points for Troy or either. This, this could be the end of the game here. I mean, yep. Mount Vernon got four or Troy got two. That's right. Fury has that kind of unorthodox style of throwing. I know. It's a little it's flicky. Yeah, got. It's a funky throw, right? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it before. And no matter where the Polino is, he uses the wall. I Yeah. You notice that? Yeah. He did it against us. I was confused. Yep. And he has a weird throw, too. You see a backhand. Yeah. It goes across his body, and he, he just, like, plops it. Yeah. How does that one look? Looks good. You can see it on the TV screen here. Yep. What a ball. What a ball. Must be the hat. What do you think? Yeah, I like the wings on it. I <laughs> really do. I, I think this go out. Oh, I can't zoom out. Andrew Santasiaro, El Toro, as he's known as. He has been hitting very well yep. this whole weekend, honestly. Absolutely. He's played great. Of course, we just gave him the kiss of death. What do you think? Yeah, I know. We've been doing this the whole game. It doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. El doesn't Toro. Matter. El Toro. It does not matter for him. What a horrible break. Oh, man. Yes. 
That's the problem when you make these good hits and you wind up making the point. That's what it's looking like <laughs> down there. Horrible break. What do you do here? You're down two. You're up, think, a, you're up a ball. What would you do here? Oh, man. I think you have to try clipping the ball. I agree. I think you have to. I mean, it's a risky shot. But I play aggressive. I like to shoot. Yeah, I mean, that front ball isn't horrible. I mean, mm -hmm. full court, can't touch the backboard. And it's not like, you know, they've been playing multiple games over two days, so they yeah. should have the feel of the court by now. Al Toro is killing it. <laughs> yeah, I see that, yep. Santo Cro. Santo Graco, president of the Babylon Bocce Club. Hmm. Interesting. Who and Andrew is also a member of. Andrew lining up again. I don't know if we should Stomp keep. Stomp the foot. He's going to do the old foot drag. I love his stance. There it's very consistent. <laughs> yes. Switch. Try to get his whole stance this time so you guys can see it. El Toro. Lining up his shot. Oh, oh, just missed it. Polino move, but a bad break. Wow. Bad miss. Good try, I should say, but unfortunate. It's better. Hoping I can broadcast the championship, too. Especially because it's my home club. I don't see why not. Doing a great job. Mm, here Guy comes Guy using the wall. Off the wall. Looks good. Oh my Looks God! Good. Did he Looks see good. it? Looks good. Watch the backboard. What? Oh, it just touched. It just touched. Wow, that was almost an impressive that ball by been, guy. That would have been a game winner. That would have been. A, I think they would have capitalized on that. Here comes off the wall again. We all know it's coming. Yep. What do the flick he has? It's, I know we showed it earlier, but that one's got a little bit of gas too. I think. I think it has more than the other. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Late. He's uh, got a lay. Yeah, it opened up. It opened up. Yeah, it's cause he kept it live. I mean, just got to roll one. One does it here for them. Yep. You have a pretty size, a pretty nice size backboard if you really think about it between the point ball and guys closest ball. So just point right there. Yeah. I Can't mean, sell it. No, no, I think you, it's really not an easy point. You got to lay on it. I mean, you could lay on the balls. Exactly. Let me flip cameras. See Use it as a background. See what they're talking about uh, over there. Michael wants I, an off I the don't ball. like it off the wall. Cause you don't? You, no, because I think if you if you miss a little bit to the right, you could literally, oh, no, you can't, because I was going to say if you hit the Polino, it may drag over, but you have the ball there, so. Yeah, I mean, and I think they, these guys like to use the wall more than pointing straight. I mean, how many balls do they got? They, they got have three. They, got, I mean, they should win the game. This should be. Absolutely. Let's see somehow. if Fury has it in him. Fury's doing it. Let's that see. That ball looks pretty good. Yeah, a little short maybe. Oh, I think he's got you it. I think he's got it? I think he's got it. Nope. Tail, oh, wow. Tailed out. Tailed out. Now it's up to Lou. Lou, a very good player. Very good. Yeah. We just had a tournament down at the Galliano Club, the club I was representing today. Mm -hmm. Last week, him and his son Mike won that one. Mike, yeah. They played very well. Oh, he went hard. Oh he boy. said, I'm not going to be short. He's, He's going to try to push it up. What do you think? something. Oh, so far. Still alive. One ball left. God, they gotta win it here. I mean, one ball left. This is a this is a must win. Right Easy here. money reference for those watching. One pin, Rodney. One pin. Here we go. Switching the camera. This is it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No oh, we still alive, and they're still alive. That is unbelievable. Three attempts. You got to hope that doesn't come back to haunt them, right? Yeah, I mean, that could. could ABC, oh. always be closing. You have to close out the games. Now the pressure's on Tony and Mike. 
sitting on 13 to 10. All right, we're switched for now. This ball's he throw a roll pretty far, pulling shot. Maybe take out some of the shooting for Chris. You know, I don't know if Chris has been hitting the, sh the long ones or not. Oh, looks like a look? butte. I, high, I love that. I love that ball. A lot of space. Tough to hit. Is Jack pointing, or are they going to have Chris point? Looks like they're going to have Chris point. Oh, that's right. They did switch up. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Comes the ball. I kind of like Get it. Legs. Kinda like it. Get legs. I, I kinda like it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I thought I like think it's in. Waiting for the yeah, he's yep. got it, yep. What a great ball by Chris. Chris came up clutch Mike right is there. Gonna, yeah, he did, definitely. Gotta hope that Mike doesn't hit his own ball out. Combination shot. Yeah, I mean it's down there too. I mm -hmm. mean it's a tough hit. I think he's gonna go hard, or he has that that loft shot when he wants his ball. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna try sticking this one. Yeah. If he catches it clean, this could be a stick. This oh, is he's lot. off! Wow. wow. I don't think he was going for Polino. I, I don't think, think he so was either. just off. I think he. I don't. Yeah. Me too. Maybe he was, but aim small, miss small. You know. Correct. Exactly. He was. Lou's telling Tony what to do. I mean, you got to hope that if you don't make the point that you're sitting right on that ball. Oh, that's got some speed. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, is that going to be dead? Um, yep. Wow. Um, it's not good. Mike's got to be in front here. They could go out. This could be it. But we got 13, we got, 10. We got 13. I got to put that up. 13. There we go. Sorry, everyone. Did not mean to. Forget the score. That's got some gas too. That's got some gas too. Good ball. Yeah, it's a great cover. Good ball. Oh, did he move Polino? I don't know, but four four shots at four three shots here and this could be it. I can't see from here. Are those uh, lose balls, are they touching? Maybe gonna get rid of those. Oh, I think there's a little space. Okay, now he's Chris is gonna point. Oh, he does not like it. He put his hands on his head as soon as he shot it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't push it in. He made it tighter. Oof. It's going to be tough now. He made it tighter. Switch cams. Let's get a look over here. I think we're taking a little time out here. Yeah, I think they're gonna talk this one over. Yeah. How about the camera quality all weekend? It's I mean, it's been great. Fantastic, fantastic. So it's the best I've seen, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, me too. Of all the broadcasts, uh, you the know, live web streaming, exactly. I think this is the best. Camera quality, the mic, I mean, I am I could hear myself yeah. breathe this. Mm -hmm. We gotta hope the referee starts the timeout clock. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this game has been going on for quite a while. Take a look. Let's zoom in over yeah, here. Zoom in. Let's see what the Polino is. We got a little time. Four inches, maybe. How far do you think that ball is? The front one. I mean, I, I think that's like about eight inches. I don't know. I can't tell. Maybe something. I think it's a foot. Who knows? What would you do here? Do you have uh, two balls? I would shoot the first one. But I totally agree. I would shoot the first one, and if. You end up not getting the point. You could shoot this one, maybe stick around for a game. Mm -hmm. He definitely has to be careful if he's going heavy pointing, because all he has to do is touch his yeah. pin point, then it'll Balls. go. Yeah. Jack pointing. Jack's been hot today. Yep. Especially in this game, it looks sharp, but can't tell. It's getting down there. 
That's out. Oh, oh I took the took a heavy turn. No, no good. I would have shot. Wow. That front ball's and in the way. And now it's covered up. Front ball's in the way. I would have shot that the first time. Oh man. They gotta they gotta get two here. I think they they need to get at least two here. Yep. Oh, I can't touch that ball. Sit. Is he sitting? Oof. I think he's got it. One, I think they said. Oh, wow. Okay. So Troy dodged a bullet. 13-11. Yep. Okay, I want to make sure now. Zoom around. Let's see if the guy can put one on Polino here. Oh, he really already see. rolled I, it. Yeah, I can't even see Polino. There it is. Guy, he is very good pointer. Especially, yep. especially today at least, until yesterday. How many? 20 inches? 20 yeah, inches. About 20 inch point right there. We got some intel from an on uh, sideline. Sunlight spectator. <laughs> helping us out. We're looking at a little computer. Comes Ooh. Fiore. That looks to me that looks short, but oh, oh, oh. my god, that ball's flying on the Did screen. Did it? I thought it was short. Mm. Gone. I think. Okay, you're sitting 13. Mm. You're who struggling. Who doesn't right want now? to shoot? Fiori's got to beat this ball. I mean, they, I think they should have shot it the first time, but. I agree. You have two points up. Oh, it looks That's fast. That's heavy. That's heavy. Wow. God. Wow. This, are they going to lose this game? This is, you don't want to lose like this. No. Especially when they hit it. Especially when they had a chance to go out. What a great ball. That was a game saver right there. Really, honestly. It's two points right now, thank you. It's the best way you could say it. It was yep. a game changer. And now, what do they have? How many balls do they have? I think they have three back. Three, three back. So I think they got to go a shot at the Paulino. He's going to commence firing. They're going to shoot. You have to shoot. I here. think they got to shoot Paulino. Point game, right? Some, this. Something, something's better than nothing here. Yeah. Preferably Paulino, though. They can get the Paulino to that right corner. That'd be huge. Even if they just hit the ball, the point ball, and open it up. Yeah, no. Right? They still have two balls. One of those two. If you shoot the inside of the right ball, you might be able to combo both. Right. Let's see. El, El Toro Loco lining up. El Toro. The wind up. The pitch. Oh. Can't have nothing there. Pressure. Need. Pressure shot right Needed there. Needed something. Pressure shot. Mike from Troy just said that that was his first miss of the game. So it goes to show you how well he's playing, Andrew. The respect he's getting this Correct. game. Looks like he's going for it again. This is a big shot here. You make it to this round, you're doing well. And the clutch shots right here. Yep. This is what separates the players. The pitch. Oh. Got something. I mean, not the best, but. You know, guy's gonna have to throw a ball to save the game. Yep. He's been doing it all weekend. And guy has second point, definitely, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, they do. Mm. He's thinking he doesn't know what to do here. Think they wanna shoot it, think they wanna hit it. Guy want, uh, Jack wants to make sure that he's the second point. Two. What? Wow. Why are they using an inside? They should just be using a regular. 
I personally think the inside is more accurate. No, yeah, I mean, but... Especially with some of these old timers, my, myself included, when you when the, <laughs> to see the fractions on the rule or something. Yeah, I just... <laughs> normally they go right to the regular measure and then they go to yeah. the... I didn't... Got a picture taker over here, if you could see him. That's Jeff O'Hare. Jeff's taking some pictures of the, the team's talking. Wardrobe. Yep. Um, Man. Referees, yeah. stop the, the timeout clock, please. Yeah. I think they're exceeding the timeout level. Yeah, I mean, 30-second timeout, <laughs> I thought. Maybe they called for a minute Should timeout. Should we burn the ball? <sighs> Something. <laughs> to end the game, we'll burn the ball? Yeah, this is getting out of hand. Uh, this is a very important, yeah. important call for them. We'll, we'll give them some grace. Uh, where's the referee? Uh, he's over the line, and it's a delay of game. Burn the ball. What do you think, folks? Here it comes. This is a big decision. Decision here. has been made. Let's switch the camera to see what he's going to do. We'll know as soon as he gets in his stance. Hey, Mike, was it two? Is it sitting two? No, one. It's only one. Okay. What's the call from the booth? What are you doing here? I think we got a point. Hitting does no good. It's not two. It's, it's one. I'm, I'm a shooter. Either. I would say shoot, shoot it for the game. Shoot call. the point. Looks like that's what he's doing. Well, he's if you shooting. shoot the point, you lose because they're still in. No, they have second point. No, they said they don't. Mike just said it was only one. Well, let's see. Yeah, I thought they needed it to be two so they could stay in because it's game point for them. Oh, I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. See? Got to go for Polino. Oh, wow. Wow. Troy's That's what happens when you're not shooting as often, right? Yeah. Guy's been pointing the whole game. Troy ICC wins. That was a great game. Very good game. Hats off to everybody involved. Yep. Those who watched the semifinal game, thank you for watching. Yes. Stay tuned for the final game. And Nico, it was nice uh, you know, doing the booth with you. Good job. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. And now the picture taking time. Oh, and you know. Guy it. doesn't look happy. Obviously. No, no, I wouldn't be happy either. They played so well. Got a big game coming up. Want to tilt up a little bit? Get some uh, the putting on of the medals. <laughs> oh, you don't want to zoom in. I want to zoom out. Where is everyone? Where are you looking? Well, I guess. Going oh, he's there. going to the water side, so. So it's going to be the Tokelana Club and Troy in the final. Yep. I'd say they were probably two of the favorites mm -hmm. coming into it. Absolutely. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't Tokelana, they, they ripped through their uh, bracket. Yeah, five and all. Yeah. Not a lot of close games. They were playing very well. There's Paul Click, yeah. President of the Tukalana Club. Limping around. <laughs> On your feet all day. Paul Lewis the third. Where's Michael? I gotta change the scores names. Yep. <sighs> well, I'm gonna say it. I wanna thank Dino and uh, Gabe for such a great event, putting it on. It was fantastic. Absolutely. The, the whole weekend was great. Food, food was fantastic, food right? Food was great. Nonstop food and drink, so can't beat that. Yeah, and no. the facility is amazing. It's courts, too, courts are. We have any comments? Yeah, we got up? Pete Russo saying hi to us. Hey, What's going Pete on, Pete? Russo. Christopher Keller. I am not even going to try that. <laughs> Can we see how many viewers we have? I'm going to check my YouTube, see how many viewers we got. Eddie said hi earlier, a lot earlier. How many viewers? 
right now. Yeah. 48 watching, wow. That's awesome. 48. Let's 40, get it up to 50, guys. 48 diehard fans. Yes. All right. Hopefully you guys are all Tukalana fans. Cheering us on. I really got to find Mike. We got to get the score changed. They're going to throw some practice balls here. One Championship up. game. Right. One up, one down. Replaying every ball they throw right now. They're talking about it. <laughs> and what we could have done yeah. right. What they, what they wanted to do. Santos said great game. Yep, it was. It was a very good game. Could have went either way. Just gonna say that too. Hey, Mike. Mike. I'd like to say Russell sporting those salmon colored shorts. What do you think about those, those shorts? I like them. I like them. Yeah. I think they fit the black well. <laughs> Here you go. Bernie Colangelo saying, let's go, Tukey. I'll not, see you tomorrow, Bernie. Not many men could pull off the salmon color, but I think Russell can. I think Russell did it. Yeah. I really did. Definitely. He had a... I like it. Paula Sweeney. Hey, from Andy Sweeney, Lockport. What's going on, Andy? Leave a comment. Say what's up. Mike Lisi out there. I know he's been watching all day. Mike Lisi from Long Island. He's been texting me. Mike Lisi. He's been watching. Mike, get on there and. Maybe you should comment instead of text. Exactly. <laughs> get the views up. See what we're at now. Maybe we went up some. Or went down because. Yep. Lost yeah. a viewer. Man. Exactly. We need the game to be started. Exactly. We don't want to see an empty court right now. Yeah, no. Better off going see, see us go out there and start throwing some balls. What do you think? I mean, should we? Should we perform? Headsets on. <laughs> live commentator art one Absolutely. one on one. This is what you should be doing, folks. Yeah. I I think it'd be fun for someone to have like a mic on during a game. Lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Live. Just to hear how you call a game. Yeah. I agree hundred percent. Maybe we should do it for Mason. <laughs> Mason seems locked in right now. I'm not familiar with Mason. Is he a pointer, shooter? Does he do it? He does both. both. He's does very both. good. He does both. He's very good at both. He get first point on any team or first hit. Mike. 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 Could you just set up the scoreboard for us? I don't know. I don't know how to do the scoreboard. I know how to do this stuff now. I'm, no, I mean, he kind of told me just how to, the easy stuff, how to switch the camera. How do you do replay? So, just in case there was a hit and stick or something. Uh, Get home safe. Good, Good seeing you. Up to yep. you again. Okay. Yeah, nice meeting you. Thank you. You too. Good luck to you. Thank you. Like Tukalana's Tukalana's gonna be red. How do I get the score thing back up there? Like one. I can't see. Oh. What time is it? Yep. I'm blind. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I had to ask Ryan, folks, what time it is because I couldn't what? see his watch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, Nico, I'm actually going to have to sign off because we have a dinner reservation tonight, so oh. it was good seeing you. Maybe we can look good. It was a pleasure. Mike, you want to get somebody? Or? Hey, guy. Thanks, everybody, and uh, keep tuning in.
I'd like to stay and watch the final, but we'll have to head out. Five and a half hour drive after dinner, so be well. No problem. Yeah. Take it easy. Good luck, all right? See you soon. Well, just me now. How do I? Yeah, I'm good. Switch headsets. We're back though. Here we go. Gotta find another commentator. I know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Guy. Do you want to? I don't know how to run the board. I got. I know how to do the board. I don't know who's doing it. I can't do it. We gotta drive home. We got oh. a car. We we'll drive. So we gotta do it. I'll do it by myself. I don't care. I think Gabe's gonna do it. Me and you can do it. Yeah. All right. We'll do the finals. Alrighty. Is this the right way, Nate? Yeah. The no other. <laughs> You gonna ref this one? Me and Dino ref. Two tall both of us. You're doing this? Okay. Yeah. You can drive now. You and I ref. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, we're gonna run this? Yeah, we're running. I know how to do this. We're good. Are we live? We're live. We're live in action right now. Got the. Hello, everybody. This is Gabe coming in live here for the final. It's been a long two days. Been fantastic two days, and a uh, special thank you to all our sponsors. As you can see on the back wall, Nico, if you can focus in over there. Special thank you to Packle World. And uh, ah, it's gonna be tough. Wait, like these ones or yes. like the top ones? Yep, top. Other way. Yep. Down. And the event started with a presentation uh, by the Special Olympics. <laughs> and we had a unified sports match. It was fantastic. It was five frames. Five frames. Alex Guerra, Digital Dave, Caleb McKeon, Mark. And uh, Alex and Dave were here all weekend. Special thank you to them. They just had... Headed back to the airport a few hours ago. They're probably landed now. Probably. Yeah, they probably are landed, yeah. Hopefully they're tuned in. Fantastic having them here. They had the little squirrel, what was it called? The squirrel thingy? Okay. This is our Ambassador 2023. New York State. It's a New York State Bocce Club Championship. And for those just tuning in, it was a invitation of clubs in New York State. That promote have a host club, and there was 12 clubs that were here. At our capacity, it was a round robin, two groups of six. Have a good one. Thank you. We have four teams from downstate, two from Long Island, two from the Westchester area, one from Troy that's now in the finals. Two from Rome, the Toccolata, the Galliano, the Waterside, the Knights of Columbus, the Syracuse, SMS from Seneca Falls, and Holly and Lockport. We're now down to the finals with Troy and Toccolata. Yeah, Toccolata, red, Troy, green. Yeah, we got that. Toccolata won the flip. 
Oh, yeah. No, they elected to you were listening? receive yeah, 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 yeah. delay for the second half. Thank you. Hey, see you later. Special shout out to our refs, Ryan Baruso and Dino. And this weekend, this idea came forward about four months ago by Dino, and he has just put. Andy, thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. I mean, I've never seen anything pound for pound as such an event. I mean, from every every little detail here, if you guys have watched on film from the banners all the way around to the sponsors, um, really an unprecedented effort. Um, the teams really enjoyed the, the round robin, the five games. Um, the top three did go through. It came down right to the end in, in our group, right, Nico? I mean, yeah. we had four teams, two and three. Yeah. Everybody was beating on each other pretty good. I mean, it was a very competitive group. I feel like competition in our group was better yeah it was definitely the uh it was yeah it was pretty brutal <laughs> so mason throws probably a two-footer long are we live here we're live we're good here. rb are we live we're live okay here comes Looks like Mason ends up getting the point. Comes Tony again. And that one looks like a good one. Tony's one of the uh, legends of the game. Um, Tony was probably last year about eight years ago, and he came out for a triples event. And he ended up winning the the finals and our only triples event we have had over here. Uh, he did win two games in the here final. Comes, here comes Paul. Just misses to the right. Comes Mason. At this point, both teams, uh, the Tokelana team is on their seventh game, the Troy team on their eighth game, sixth of the day. Uh, the Tokelana team won their group. Great ball by Paul. Five and all, their first game was their tightest game, 14-10, and they've, they've really rolled today. Um, they came out of the other group, as Nico said, um, probably a little fresher. Detroit team also came out of that group, but they've had to play extra games today, an extra game. Oh, got a Paulino, that's a big hit. Should be three. Now, Nico, I'll comment on one of the complexities here is uh, Michael did a fantastic job all weekend with the Bocce Broadcast Network. One of the toughest things you'll see, and a lot of tournament organizers will see this, and anything that go on with these tournaments is actually trying to run these things uh, and, and do what Michael's had to do all weekend. It's very difficult to compartmentalize that and to go back and forth. Like from this to playing? From this to playing. Yeah. I mean, his focus, he's been over here two, three times just to make adjustments on this. I mean, and it's one thing that, that there were a lot of ambassadors here this weekend and they have a great appreciation for it and they mentioned it. it, it they appreciate coming here over the fact of just being able to put their feet up and relax and enjoy the tournament, just focus on playing. It's one of the tougher things to do to have it, to run a tournament. And uh, depending on the complexity of it, I mean, this this one this one had a lot of moving parts to it. Um, I've kind of gotten the basics <coughs> down with this, just to flip the camera, zoom it in, zoom it out. Hey, Take great care. tournament. Enjoy great seeing you. Thanks. Thanks for doing A lot of room for Russell Johnson here. Pretty sure 
He's been rolling well all weekend. Looks like a pretty good ball. Yep. Oof, kept rolling on him. We got about a 20, 22 inch ball there. Fiori comes up, backhand rolls. Just talked about earlier. It's long again. Yep. This looks like a good ball. Gotta stop though. He's long too. Wow. <laughs> Mike says Paulino's over there. It's not all the bad balls they just do. Who's going? Thank you for everything. Awesome time as always. Thank you. Green. Big opportunity here. Yep, Green got three on the first frame. Yep, there comes the first one. Looks like a good one from Russ. Big opportunity here. Not this up. We're going to go to 14. We went to 14 all weekend. These games have moved along uh, fairly quickly. What do you think, Nico? No, oh, yeah. I mean, it got off to a good start. Good they were start. they were a couple quick games early, which was good. Well, looks like Paul rolled in a little short there. I think it's only three. Paul's been hitting a lot of balls very well this weekend, and he's he, stick. He, he's 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 hitting them on a on a bounce on the last rotation of his hit and he's popping a lot of balls back and, and I think you'll, you'll probably see that in this game a few times. Oh it's four. Wow. It's a big frame right there. Four three. They're speeding us up here. Yeah. Nico. The last game took a pretty long time. Now Nico one of the things we discussed this weekend when we had the Special Olympics here and as we go forward and I'm sure you've spoken to Dino about this was the club based programs with the schools and uh, I think you could uh, you could speak to this a little bit. Um, you know the, the the thought process being running this here as a school it would start as a club program and running it in our instance here running it with four schools, what schools? And, uh, local here um, that that we will be in the planning stages of coming very soon and uh, during a couple of days a week, I think that'd be something that would pique some interest. I think so too. Yeah. Some people that don't play school sports maybe think this is a way to start start playing. Yeah, and I think um, the, co the the court composition, the colors, the balls. Yeah, might interest people. It might interest people. So I mean, one of the things that came out of this weekend was a big discussion about the. It's a great ball. Here comes Paul. Paul throws. The rise and the movement with, within the game uh, and the excitement here. And we, we've really seen it last year between the Ambassador Cup and also this Ambassador Series New York State Club Championship. is just the excitement and the overall vibe within the facility of people. A lot of the things that we've seen in the past year that, that have went through. Um, what a hit by Paul. I mean, one of the things we do here, for example, is, you know, the format. And a lot of people get excited to travel for that. That that's a big deal. Play five games, you know. Five games. That was pretty big, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of these teams that came here might only play two games normally, you know. Yeah. Because. So what do you guys do with the school thing? Like, do, you, do the kids like sign up for it on something or something? They'd sign up, and uh, it'd be a club advisor or a club coach. 
And this is all preliminary, and what would happen is they'd, they'd come in via bus. And basically be a, it started as a club sport, but it's also here, there's discussion in terms of turning it into a, an actual like varsity sport. Uh, state of Pennsylvania has over 200 high schools participating, doing something like this. They play in the gyms. Really? And they roll out the, the pack of world courts, or the temporary courts out there, and they play in the gym. And they actually have a sectionals and a... How long are those courts usually, do you know? There's 60 footers and 30 footers. Well, how do you play on 30 footers? You, you can't hit or something? I think that's what they do. I mean, Alex could have uh, spoke to that a lot more. I know they do that a lot in Chicago. And I saw that last year at the ABC Open, which we had a fantastic, fantastic, one of my favorite tournaments. Uh, it was the first time last year playing at the Palazzo. I heard it's like the Grand Hall of Bocce. It is. It is. It's like bocce heaven when you walk in there. Yeah. Um, like a mall, right? The ceilings are huge. Uh, just the craftsmanship is unbelievable. And uh, it's fantastic. Same thing. We played. Six, got to play six games. Got to play against teams from all over the country. Just the extra touches that went on in that tournament were fantastic. Paul Kalikia for... It looks hot. Right through. So the winning teams will be walking out with a banner to take back to the club. Uh, a signed banner with all the club logos on the far court. You can't see that. They're also going to walk out with a set of balls that are engraved with Ambassador 23. Uh, and they'll walk with the medals, a plaque. And there'll be a photo moment with the uh, one of our sponsors, the Rocky from Rocky Cigars, with the uh, the debut of the Rocky. Jim James Olmo in the chat. Let's talk to him, Sweeney. Could you just put the up air on the home team, please? Very take over. Sorry. A little long. Let me zoom in over there. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Had a great time. Bernie was listening on our talk. He said he agrees. Which part, Bernie? Hmm? What do you agree with? In all of it. Yeah. Oh, let me switch. What a shot by Paul. I think it's a dad. Did it hit? We're going to the replay screen here. Good thing I flipped it at the right time. Let's take a look here. I think it hit the side. No, that no, it hit the foam. Hit the foam and then the side. Foam side. Foam side. We could review it though. Foam side. I mean, do you want an instant replay on this or no? How do you, how do you? How do we not have a rough here? We do. I thought you were rough. We do. I think it hit 
do you want to do you want to go instant back. replay on this? I mean, could we could we go back on that on the TV? Yeah. Check my phone. Got a big call here, guys. I'll do it on my phone. I mean, you gotta skip through. I don't know where it is. I'm like 22 minutes behind it. Oh, there we go. Pause it. Correct. Yeah, loft it up, loft it up and skimmed and went the other way. Official decision, dead frame. Zoom back out here. Oh. Little long for Russell. Looks like a very good ball for him. Um, Lou has been in about three of the past four finals down here. Oh, that looks long. He's got to hit something. I know Lou won last week at uh, Galliano. Yeah, they played really well. Undefeated uh, the whole tournament. I think uh, Tukulon is in there. Here. Won it uh, a couple of years ago with Armando here in the uh, the Black Friday. He was in the finals in the Ambassadors Cup last year. He's he's won quite a bet, and it's you know fantastic two-way player. Yeah, very. Here comes sign the of a great player. He he wins. I mean, he wins. Um, just let me know when you're going to do them. So. Great to see Fiore back. Fiore hasn't been down to the club in probably about five years. Oof. He's playing good today. Really enjoyed it. It's fantastic seeing him here. Paul, who, who, Paul has uh, joined our club as an out-of-town member, and we did a member-member open draw seated tournament uh, last couple months ago. Paul came in, and they, they took the tournament. They took yeah. the Calcutta. He said he, he won it, and he bet himself, too. He, he did bet himself. Fascinating. A lot of fun, that tournament. A lot of fun. We got we had about 14 doubles teams. Really? Do you yeah. guys do a member guest one or no? We are going to do one, actually, this fall. That That is our plan, to do a member guest. That looks like a very good ball for Lou.
Great ball. Big frame. Three. So while we're in between frames here, a special, special thank you to our silver sponsors, Benjamin Moore, Ripley Garlic and Associates, Romano Auto Dealerships. Special thank you to our bronze level, M&T Bank, Wegmans, Prime Lending, Bill and Terry Risley, Onondaga County, Sheriffs, Police Association, the Elks Club from Liverpool, and special thank you to our members as well who made this happen. Andy Ecker and Mike Stisser were here all weekend. Um, without that type of support, these types of events don't happen. Uh, and that type of forward thinking, uh, whole team approach. Um, Palmas is big there. Hmm. It doesn't go down any farther. I don't know why. Yeah, we have to like wait for another chat to come in. It's weird. Looking at Bernie's comment on the back to that topic on multitasking. It was. Uh, I see. I see it at the the World Series every year. You, the guys running that just look spent by Saturday afternoon. I oh, mean, yeah. spent. I mean, just spent. Drained. Cleaning up everything. Cleaning up everything. Organizing. Answering questions. Running the board. I mean, we did 12 teams here, but. There was a lot of moving parts with no, this thing. For yeah. 12 teams, it felt like we had 64 teams. Yeah. And yeah. The food. So as an organizer, it's, uh, I mean, Wayne Farinacci came in last year, and, and him and Frank, they won the Ambassadors. <coughs> and uh, he really just, his favorite part, I think, was just enjoying. Yeah. As a great organizer of the game, just coming in and enjoying not the organizers. You don't see these events. Are you going to Club Molisani tournament? We are. Who are you bringing? Myself, Dino. We're playing with Joe Peterson from SMS Club and Rocco Delis Delisio from Youngstown. Are you going up? Yeah. Yeah. We played with Rocco last year in uh, Wycliffe. We had, a, we had a fantastic time with Rocco and... Jack Durkin and Raymond Carlson, such a good time ahead. Great guys. That's one of the one of the one of the great things of this this game is the camaraderie that you develop. Let's see if Paul will dial this one in. Drew, this on the other one. I think he will. Napoleon. Oh my god, it flew all the way back. He topped it. He got high on the board. That will stay live. Um, must stay in front of the opening. Not on the line, but in front. Come down here a little bit. Two to give up how many? One? Two to give up one? Not a bad. Maybe you even get three. What a shot. Oh, one. Oh, and Mason still got a ball. Who's in? Um, Lewis. Troy. Hmm. Looks like we got a tie. Let me just make sure. Hmm. Two. Oh, never mind. That's why I was asking you, Nico, who was in. Yeah, I guess. You, ca you can't really see. If you can't really tell. Wow. I'm here looking through the, the screen. Joe Malachi. What do you need to become a member? Hmm. Pete's just wondering what to do. At the water side, Pete? Question mark. Oof. 
hopefully I'll switch this camera a little bit so we can see the guys over there. There we go. Great ball by Fiore. You're talking about becoming a member. We have uh, four out of town members at the moment. They're uh, Paul. Lou Sheldon is an out of town member here. Randy Bauer out of Lockport. Ryan Baruso. Russell. He's also in the finals here. Another out of town member. Basically, just to become a member, just get a sponsored application and get it in. Comes a little. I think he's going to try shooting this ball. Oh. Just got it. Looks like two. Wow. Two time, two Push time. Down. I don't know. I don't know if that's the call there to go after that ball. I think you got a point here, but. Couple different options here. They're looking at hit, hitting a couple of their own balls to drive something down. Um, they could also come at that point ball there, hit the inside of that. Or they could point in. I mean, there's there's at least three options there. They could also lag in and off the right right side. Well, he does it off the wall. Will he drop in? I still see one blue from Josh. there. Okay. Let's zoom in over there. Let's take a look at this. Oof, we're so zoomed in on Paul right now. The rest is blurry. There we go. Mason wants to play his location on the court as a camera here. He's looking to bump the balls out wide. Try to keep this late as possible and switch. Ooh, 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 what a shot. It might be looking at a couple right now. Maybe three even. How many do they have back? One? A lot of people on the court right now can't see the balls. They do have two balls in hand, so a couple different options here really. They could play their own. The one out wide, do the same thing on the right side that's on either side there. You could strike one of their own. They could also come on the left and try to get inside of that and take one away. Just a big shot right here. If they can get it here, they're in good shape. Hmm. One thing I love about here is the backboards are very, I mean, the sideboards, you could use them here. You can use them, yeah. Let's see, Fiori's going off that, that wall over there, I think. He hit real high up. That's what he's trying to do. Looks like he's lagging in. I don't think he's going to have the juice on this. Not a bad spot for it, though. Oh, he's got a lot of, a lot of options to lay on there. Michael's asking for a Paulino hat to drive that Pauline back out. It could be a big frame for Blue. Blue, definitely. 
really fast. I think he's trying to bump something. Looks like he's got Paulino. Paulino, he got something. He had three three options there. We got seven seven game here. Seventy seven. First one up to seven here. Winner will walk with the banner. And the botch balls. The balls, the plaque, the medals. I think that's what the guys are playing for today is the balls now. I know a couple of people for Tukulana saw the balls and got excited. Especially Paul Lewis III. Got a singles tournament tomorrow where you get to use your own. Is that right? Where's the, where's the tournament, Nico? Tukulana. How many are signed up? Well, it's like a FedEx Cup thing. Do you know that in golf? You play in tournaments and you get points mm. for each tournament you play in, for playing and if you qualify or whatever. So now we're on the last one, the top 12. And uh, women have top eight, so it's be a... We were recently at the Tokelano probably a couple months ago and uh, a lot of uh, fantastic improvements and a lot of pro progressive movement there. And uh, these guys do a great job over there. Well, Mason picked the ball up right away. He did not like that ball. Looks good though, Missouri. No, they did not like that ball at all. Mm, look at the pose. That's it. Oh, Does it have the legs? Does it have the legs? I'm really surprised they didn't shoot that ball. Paul says he's got it. This is probably one of their closest games they've had. Including, like... They didn't shoot that the first time, aren't you? And pretty good point there. I think they were trying to establish something closer. They didn't feel confident with that first ball that was established. Looks like a pretty good ball. If he lays right on theirs. What a ball. I think Mike's going to have to shoot this one in the air if it's in. He's got a lane. Right to left. And three to three balls in hand here. Hits and sticks it a little bit. He took out the front ball now. Oh, he's, got a, he's got an opening for the second one. Not sure who's in. What do you like here, Nico? I like shooting this ball. Yeah, who's in though? I don't know who's in. White ball is in. Oh, white's in. So yeah, you, I think you gotta shoot. You gotta shoot this. You gotta double. Preferably, you want a solid ball here. It's gonna go left to right. Oh, takes both out. Oh jeez. Oh, they could shoot for a big frame here. They could be stationed here for four, at least three, and a hit and stick. Could. I'm not sure if they're in. They might be in already for one. If that, that'd, that'd make my decision even better. I'm definitely shooting that if, they, if we have one already. How many viewers do we got in here? Check my phone. Troy is in for two. We got 59 watching. Let's go. Troy is in for two. Troy's Nico. got two. You're <laughs> sitting two here. This is uh. This is point for three. I mean. Point for three. We're looking at 10-7. Oh, it's 
fast. It is fast. Sometimes, you know. Wow. All that room. So you're going to walk with two. There we go. Got nine, seven, Troy. This might be the first time tokelana has been in the hole facing some adversity in the finals. It's fantastic seeing some of the new clubs come out. The club out in Babylon was here. And we miss Santo Croco down there. He's doing a lot of fantas fantastic things. And I know the American and Mount Vernon, big supporters there as well. Uh, Babylon was up. Um, White Plains was up. We had a Knights of Columbus club right here locally that came. So we had about uh, three clubs that were in the, their bracket. It was fantastic to see him. Oh, he burned it. So let this, he will have to establish the point here. He has a lot of, Mike has a lot of confidence that they're going to burn one. This one might be fast as well. No, it's, it's going to calm down. It's like a very good ball. It's my first time here on the with, with the headset here. I I, I got to give a lot of kudos to Michael for doing this. This is not uh, 60 viewers. Mm. It's a good, it Russell. gives you it gives you a great it gives you a greater wow. appreciation for the, the dedication and the devotion here with, with this live cast that they do. And I uh, just doing this today. I don't know how Michael goes from this to playing. Like this would be that'd be tough to do this and then play this then play. He said he had a lot of people help him out today though. That Alex helped him out a lot. Good ball by Ross. Did you get a chance at all to see some of the technology from with Digital Dave with the overhead camera earlier? I on did see that was it. Some the of the squirrel metrics. thing. What is that called? Yeah. I saw I saw it on the TV a little bit when they were doing it, but I didn't see it on his laptop at all. Kind of wish I did. Should we zoom in there a little more? I think. Kind of like it. This could be a good ball if it stays live. Just, just burned it. Lose ball. Looks like a pretty good one. Looks a little heavy though. It's gonna have to bend here. What a ball! Fantastic use of the rondina for those who ask what the rondina is. Basically, on the outside of the court, it is lifted a little bit for about six inches or so, and it does drop back in. Um, we had the pleasure of having Daniele Colioni here. About three, four years ago, uh, fantastic. I mean, fantastic craftsman. Fantastic. Uh, Is great. this the best shape the courts have been in? Uh, they were in great shape <laughs> right after he was done. What a shot! I picked it clean. They really, they really haven't changed much. They've sped up a little bit. They used to be slower. Well, they speed, they speed up. It's basically like a, like a tired tread. The more use you put on them, the more hours you put on, the more they will speed up. The tread wears. Oh, okay. A little early. Rondina carried them out. Rondina will typically speed the ball up. Go somewhere. Why can't the message slow down? I don't like that. Still can't go down. Nine eight. Uh, nine eight game here. Oh, let me zoom this up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Lead off ball here. Michael's gonna be put to work. Yes, he is. Oh. 
How long are these courts? 64 by 10. Hmm. Does here. Big hit, big oh. hit. That's one of the great features of these Colioni courts. It's the ability to stick the ball. How many balls did you see all weekend? Just change colors, replace. Oof, at least seven. Or how eight. many did you? How many did you do this weekend, Nico? Mm, including did, practice or just? No, in just in the games. What did what you do? I think four. I had four? I had three in the first game. Fantastic. Really enjoyable. Mm, bad ball from Mason there. He needed a tough comes ball. That ball's gonna pull a little bit left. He's got good speed though. I don't think so. Did it tail? Did it tail? Russell's calling for a ball out in front of that point ball. It's a big opening here. I'll get four here. Nine eight. This is uh, pi this is pivotal here. Tokolana's facing. Blue. Troy's uh, Troy's gonna have face the challenge here, just maintaining focus here. How many times have we seen this uh, throughout the weekend? Just a little light sl light slip of the wrist here, and you're sailing mm -hmm. past, or you're short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a tenth of a second <coughs> of concentration. I think Tukulana's first game that they've had. They're gonna be down in. I mean. They were down earlier, but they could be down a bunch here. I think Michael's going to shoot here. That's a good call, I think. They're going to shoot that ball. They'll give him another one, and then they'll probably point in for three. He might stick here. This would be a huge, huge... Shot to stick. I don't know if that's gonna. It's got zero room for her. It's actually got to stick right in front of her. He's really got to replace it. Ooh, he almost took some of the other ones out on the way through. That's a great shot. Two time now. Should roll in for three here. Looking at two. Probably stay out wide to the right here. It's Tony. Leave that Paulino alone. And we're looking three time. Three. Wow. Got 12 to 8. Troy. Mm. Lou and Michael spent a lot of time in the past couple of years, really, with the resurrection down there in Troy and uh, trying to build that bocce culture up, uh, build it back up. Went up there for a tournament uh, in January. Yeah, how was that? I was going to go, but there was one that took a lot of that week. Anyways. It's excellent. It's good to be back. I haven't been there probably in a decade. Interesting. Yeah, they said that's going to be an annual tournament. Probably go back, maybe. It's got the four indoor courts over there. What do you think about this one? I kind of like it. It's going to be a little short, but it's going to be in the lane. It's going to be in the line. We're going to take that wide line away. So uh, no, this will be a, this, will, this is going to be a, an out, out and in, and that's how he played it. He's going to have a point there. Beautifully. Another question here is, do you hit that ball? I think you can lay on. Oh, you probably lay on it. You're going to have to bump your own a couple yeah. feet, or just play for your own point. A lot of room there. A lot of room. Uh, Hmm. That little touch there at the end slowed it right down. Comes Paul Lewis to third. Probably one of the best hitters around. Paul did Paul did win the 
Wycliffe tournament Wycliffe, last year. Yeah. 104 teams. Have you been out there? No, I'm going this year. First time going to Cleveland, Malsani, and uh, uh, this is this is looking like uh, I don't want to say it, but Mason Mason was victorious in our Black Friday this year. Yes, he was. Here, Mason and Joe Peterson. He's no stranger to the final. Here. Well, Big ball. Russell is just one of the best players. He said he loves these courts. These are favorite courts. Courts to point on. We played in the Black Friday one too, and he carried me. You did pretty good yourself, Nico. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. All right. Yeah, that, that. Times, stuff like that can change the tra trajectory of the game. It's a big ball here. Keep this ball out in front. They're not looking to steal it. Just keep it out in front. Just got to be in the line. Take one away, too. Just got to take one away. Take one away. Be in the line. Minimize. Looks pretty good. A little heavy. Danger here is now they've, they've left that totally wide open. They might, be sitting, they might be sitting two. Two and pause. So they got a shot at three here. New game after this ball. It here. is a new game. I've seen a lot of tight games here. Uh, as of the last round of the round, the round robin, and then uh, yeah, that, that short street yeah, or short street Holly. That 14, 13, no, um, two. 14, 13 quarter final game. Yeah, it was Holly and uh, short street, I think. Holly and Troy. Oh, Holly and Troy. Right. And Holly was up 10 to two. Yeah. That. 10 to two. Resilient comeback. 12 ton here. We're going to 14. Oh. Big ball here. I think Just I said it last game. Last game on this court was just like this. This game could be over this frame. Four frame or two frame. It's a great ball by Mason. He, like you said, he's been in the finals on this court a couple months ago, actually. Paint, he pointed fantastically on that Black Friday. He did. And Joe was just in an, on a whole nother level. I think he probably shot about 95% uh, yeah, that least, weekend. At least, maybe more. Pick, picking off Paulino, shooting him off the court at will, sticking balls. He yeah. just got in his zone. Yeah, no, it was. There's forces under the court, maybe. Someone's got powers here or something. Is Paul moving the ball over there? Paul's using his feet powers over there. Mike's got to settle in and make this hit here. Good shot. Fantastic. Let's make contact there. Win the race. Mason. Me and Mason came in second in a tournament in the Galliano. He pointed very well there too. Calls a very great game. Mason gets low, front foot out. He didn't post that time. That one kicked out on him. He needed to be a little. Here with Dino showing me the pictures of the hall here, of the finals, and uh, fantastic. Again, special thank you to Dino. He, he, this thing was over the top. I mean, pound for pound, I've never seen no, anything like it. And the, the ambassador last year was a whole nother level in this one. Again, fantastic, fantastic. Big ball. What there. a ball by Paul. Great ball, Paul. Absolute. Big hit here. If they make this hit, this is gonna this is gonna turn very interesting. They make this hit here. They're set up for the game. This is a game changing hit. Two to one. He makes this hit. Could go. Uh, not game, but uh, I could see game going. I could, I could see it. Paul would have to roll. Paul would have to roll to beat it. Just beat tough. It. He's gonna have to beat it again with that front ball out in front. 
not easy to do. They just need to rally a couple points here. Oh, he, he went, went through. Wow. He went in between those two balls. I'm just going to zoom in actually on that, how he went in between those. And Joe, I, I did not hear your broadcast, but I am interesting to hear it. You guys did play excellent today. Today we did. <laughs> did. Not yesterday. <laughs> you guys were uh, a little slow out of the gate this morning with us. Yeah, no, it was bad. It was bad game. I owed you that one, though, Nico. After the last one. <laughs> right, Paul. Rolling here, Paul. Same ball. Russell wants to cut it inside there off the board. Paul wants to come out to the left. Both shots are available. Both are available, just don't. You can't bump that front one. You cannot bump the front, and you cannot bump your own or the Pauline there. <laughs> Here we go. We got a 12-11. 12-11 game. This is a battle. 12-11. We're coming down to the end. And that uh, most exciting moment in the, in the tournament as far as the play goes was that Troy was down and out with Holly. Yeah. I mean. Lou missed this hit, and... Fiore had to beat a, what was it, about an eight inch point at about 50, about that distance we got right there. He beat it. He beat it. He was able to come around the front ball, sit on it, and sit behind the Pauline. And, and then. Uh, See Russell. Russell's. Russell, this looks really good. This looks beautiful. That's a good ball. That's a beauty. Let's see what Lou will be able to hit this ball out. Let's get a good angle on Lou here. Switch it back. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Made the hit. Bad break. Nice a lot of room for Fiori, though. It was a big hit there, Nico. Yeah, that was. Ooh. Looking at the Paulino. Hopefully I switched it. Just kidding, guys. I switched it. Nope, not even close. <laughs> Again, late in the games, we often see those hits. Um, through the years, you probably can attest to this. You've been playing a lot the past few years. Late in the game, you see guys uh, tighten up a lot on those hits there, Nico. Miss them. Miss them, yeah. They'll go 80% all game, 90% all game, and then all of a sudden the late game 7%. starts and they start questioning those. Should I? They'll demand their point guy to shoot them, or you know, it's often seen. What do you think of this ball? I kind of think it's short. It's a little early, but it, it might come on the out here. He might be in. It might be in. It's going to be a good measure. Gonna need an official on uh, Ryan Baruso. Uh, Ryan Baruso, special uh, official. one of the charter members and uh, special advisor to the president here for the last five years here at the Waterside. Peter Ambito in the chat. My other co host. All right. Oh, he's, got two. <laughs> he's demanding a hit and stick. Is he demanding a hit and stick, he huh? He's demanding a hit and stick. He said hit that ball and stick Paul's it. Paul's been hitting these earlier in the term. He's been hitting them flush, and they pop back about a foot. Let's see what happens here. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. It's out, it's out. We're good. Now, what do we got here on the ball count? 
Um, I think it's one to one or two to one. I we think got, it's what do we got on the ball count? One one. Two to one, I think. Two to one, Troy, on the ball count. That was a big hit there. Big hit. This is a big ball right here. Fiori's got to throw a beaut here. He's got to throw a good ball. He has been pretty throwing pretty good. It looks short. No, I think that's coming in. Like I said earlier, Fiori loves these pressure situations. You saw them with their back against the wall in that game with Holly. Just one pressure situation after another. Mm, here we go. Big shot here. Clutch it for Paulino. Oh, they're going to shoot this. Let's see what happens if the Paulino gets active. Ooh, big He's time just, peel. He is just a player. Big time peel. If he, he hits that flush, Nico, there, that Paulino could go. and You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know where it's going. They can't win the game, which is a good thing for Topolano. It's got a chance. Got to slow down. It's got to slow down. It's gonna go bye bye. Uh, it might be a measure. Oh, they're calling it in. Alrighty, we got thirteen. 13-11. The first ever club championship here. Coming down to the end. Fantastic weekend. Fantastic atmosphere, camaraderie. Fantastic sportsmanship by all the teams. I don't think we've, have we heard? I mean, the camaraderie here has been fantastic. Not one, everything's been very diplomatic, ambassadorial. I haven't heard anything. No, it's been fantastic. Mm, that's a very good ball. Everybody's been in uniform and uh, representing their clubs. Four balls you like on the court. Do that, right? Absolutely, it looks like a sport. Yep. Each team has four balls on the court. We're not guessing which team has which balls. Uh, I don't know. It's our first uh, four four. Four-person tournament here, and we went with the two-on-two. Two, um, two on each end. I haven't done that a lot. What do you think? Was that your first time? Oh, uh, I've done it before. I mean, I don't mind it. Big shot! Big shot! Oh, he oh stuck boy, it. he got and the side he wall. Stuck and he's it. in. What a ball! <laughs> two to one in the ball count, Michael. Oh, wow. Michael's gonna go after it. And he's stuck. Michael's gonna go after this ball here. I forgot who did that. Someone is about eight, ten inches here. It's a big shot from Michael here. It comes right back into play, though. All right, there's room now. There is room. That's about our third variation of backboard here. Two shots in this game. Who knows? Let's see what this looks like here. Tony loves that sidewall. He loves that, he loves that run, Dina. Wow, what a huge, huge shot. Huge shot. And it's right on. Nico, this is going to get interesting here. He hits this right side of this ball. This Paulino could pop back. It's like the best thing for Tukulana is if it goes off the court. Personally, I mean, I don't know. Oh, jeez. It's ball game right now. It's game time here. He's got to make this hit, and he's got to get the break. Got to make the hit, and he probably has to drive. I would think he's got to drive this and get this back somehow around the shooting line. If they want to stay alive here. Yeah, this game's... Two misses for a game. Troy ICC wins it all. Troy ICC, the inaugural New York State Bocce Club champions. First annual. Fantastic. Wow. Wow. What a tournament. Hmm. Just a. All around great tournament. Run blue. 
Lou at his home away from home. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Thank you. This has been great. Tony Maiello. I saw Tony a few months ago, and he was uh, he was excited to come down to the water side. And uh, want me to do it? Fantastic moment. I'll take care. We'll get it. I'm signing off here. You're doing the post game. I am doing the post game. Yeah, we're gonna get on. Uh, Tony, turn the camera that way. Yeah, put camera one. We'll get over here. So. Right. Here, we're going from the side. Yeah, that's what I thought. The final score. 14 11. Thank you, Nico. No problem. Yeah, take it off. Michael, are you going live here? Or what are we, Michael, are we going live? Huh? Yes. Are, are you set up? Thanks for a wonderful time. Okay. Return to the puzzle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Return. Yeah, Both teams, come on in. On behalf of our sponsors, our membership, the Waterside Club, thank you to, to you guys for coming out and participating in the event. It was a fantastic two days. Um, great sportsmanship, great play both days. I know it was a little long at the end. You guys persevered, both teams fantastic, and uh, it was a great run. Um, like I said, some great games at the end. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. It was a great time. Yeah. A little token for the run. Thank you. I'll raise you guys. You got Russ's? Nope. Can you give it to him? <laughs> Paul, just a few, uh, few words there. You, you persevered through that, that, that injury there. and uh. <laughs> No, it was a great tournament. We love the hospitality. Definitely love coming out here to the Waterside Club. They, they sh they, they sh they, it's always great. It's a great tournament. This was a great cause. Helping the, the Special Olympics and the United um, and the Unified Sports, which I think is a great thing, especially in the schools. So, great tournament, and uh, thank you for putting it on. Excellent, pleasure as always. Yes. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
Russell on the run. Guys, you want to get this real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What you guys, these guys, about the, the return to tournament. Oh, it was disgusting. Russell 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 Russell
you guys hold this one? It's a token of our appreciation. Thank you very much. Thank you. A nice set of bocce balls. It's our custom to All right. give the winning club each player three, four, a set of uh, engraved balls that say the Ambassador's Cup. This is Ambassador's Cup 23 for your this championship. Is fantastic. Beautiful. So we just want to say thank Show you very much. Show your balls, everybody. <laughs> Ready? I shouldn't have taken off my hat. <laughs> okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to have uh, Detroit here in the house. You guys do a hell of a job. This will keep your cigars fresh. I want to talk to Tony. Come here. Tony Maiello. So how many games did we play? Eight games. Eight games. We lost one of them, seven and one. How old are you? 88. When's the last time you played in the tournament, Tony? I don't remember now. <laughs> I think it was about seven, eight years ago, Cleveland. Wycliffe? Yeah, Wycliffe, yeah. How does it feel to return to action? It feels good when you do something. <laughs> yeah. Well. Not all, not all the time, but uh, I had some good moments. Uh, well, we're all very impressed and uh, honored to be Thank you. your teammate. Thank you. Well, I played with a bunch of guys, uh, good guys. <laughs> they don't get mad. <laughs> I hope so. You're not, he's an honorary Sheldon. Three Sheldons and a Maiello. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. You got anything else to say? Yeah. I know we've said it a few times, but I just want to underscore, these guys do a, a fantastic job on this tournament. From soup to nuts, every detail, Dino, Gabe, you know, I uh, can't say enough. can't say enough about how they run their tournaments and all the events they have here. I just wanted to repeat that again. First class. First class, absolutely. First class. So that, that's all I have to say. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. For tuning in, Fiori, any words? Any? Uh, how does the champion feel? I want to promise these guys that I will make the best pasta fagioli, probably in colder weather with another little happening like this. As a token of appreciation, can't thank him enough. Uh, how does it feel to be the king of New York? King of New York. That's right. <laughs> wow. That sounds big. I don't think I can fill those shoes. You've been wearing that crown for the last week. I've been wearing these wings for the last week, just practicing at my house, laying on the chair, putting my feet up with his hat on. So, a, lot of, a lot of people know, want to know where you got that hat from. I've gotten that question a few times. Somebody asked me that today, and I got it in Vermont back in the 70s. <laughs> that hat's got a lot of miles on it. A lot of bocce tournaments. It's broken, it's broken and it's in. broken in, yes. How many bocce tournaments this had? Ooh, mucho. Mucho. That was fantastic. Good job, Michael. I didn't do anything. Yeah, baloney. All right, thank you, everybody. I'm going to uh, go over here and wrap up the stream. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you f to uh, Nico, Dino, everybody that gave. Everybody that uh, kept the stream running while we were playing. Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, turn this uh, headset back on one second. So thank you to our so thank you to our sponsors, our gold sponsor, sponsors, our gold sponsor Pack World, Benjamin Moore, Ripley Garlock, Benjamin Moore, Ripley Garlock and Associates, M &T Romano, M&T Bank, Wegmans, Prime Lending, Bill and Terry Risley, Onondaga County Deputy Sheriffs, Police Association Incorporated, Liverpool Elks, 2348, Ladies Auxiliary. And that's the only piece of paper I got left. I know we got more sponsors. Thank you to everybody. And. Uh, the Troy Italian Community Center. Who would have thunk it? Going home with the gold and the cigars. Oh, let me turn off the wireless mic. So, yeah, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Please uh, 
please subscribe to the broadcast. We have, we'll be broadcasting the uh, USBF Nationals in June. We'll be broadcasting the World Series in July, ABC Open in September, and many, many other tournaments in between. Um, not much else to say. For the Troy ICC and the rest of the folks here at the Waterside Club, I am Michael Chaldon. This has been a production of the Bocce Broadcast Network. Uh, thank everybody for tuning in, and enjoy your Saturday night.